Okay. 8.30. Well, you're not only in life, but for the National Okay. Hockey. Players in the bubble, no fans. But the one thing that we all saw was how great the hockey still was. David cutting wide on Holy Fire, walks in and shoots, he scores! They score! Bring point in overtime number five. Somehow Winner makes the spectacular glove save. And how hard each and every player played to get their name on the Stanley Cup. Oh, hey. Hey, Cookie Plays. Welcome. We're just getting started here. Uh, they're just going through the preliminary introduction, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for joining me today. One thing never changes. When one year ends, another year starts. Just trying to get organized. All right. Quinn Hughes, Matthew Barzal. Now, okay, most times, in big stadiums, Lots of fans, lots of family, friends. Unfortunately, that yeah. won't happen this year. But it's still an opportunity for each and every young man Welcome, everybody. to play in the NHL. So when you hear your name called, be proud. All right, let's most figure this out. Make sure you're ready to play in the National Hockey League. Welcome to the 2020 NHL Draft. Here we are. It's better. It's a light issue. Start spreading the news. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Alexi Lafreniere is ready to star on Broadway. Quentin Byfield has a bow tie ready to go. It was an outstanding uh, just checking on the all and The Ottawa Standers getting Stutzla and lots more in the first period. Three picks, as a matter of fact, as day one got off to a roaring start. Today, there's a collection of some of the young men who cannot wait with bated breath for their big moment in the sun, one step closer to playing in the National Hockey League. And there is that massive collection of general managers and front office folks, scouts, assistants, et cetera, who are going to determine the fates of their teams moving forward here as we continue with our NHL Draft 2020 coverage presented by EA Sports NHL 21. We have an amazing collection of talent coming up. NHL insiders like Ellie Friedman, EJ Raddick. we got Sam Cosentino, our draft guru, my co-host Jamie Hirsch, my name is Adnan Burke, and it's a thrill to be with all okay, of you. That was the network here in the United States, but also Sportsnet back in Canada. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Watching in Maple, Ontario. Hello, and hello. also, I'll be listening on SiriusXM. I am joined on the main set. How many Number trades today? Back in 1983, Brian Lott. Yeah, that'll be also interesting. Also, former agent and GM of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And Dave Reed played 961 games after being drafted. Hopefully a lot more than world, yesterday. We only had two, and, two and it was just about positional. Fellas, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, today. Moving Rounds up and down. Mostly seven. guy goes to Calgary. It's an event unlike any we've ever seen before. Lots. What are you most excited about today? Well, it's going to be a little bit of what we saw last night, and that is when you look at the draft. This is the NHL panel, the panel not the um, We're sitting with four picks normal, in the first uh, 40. We're going to make today. Think about that. Seven teams control two-thirds of the second round. That's obviously the currency that people are moving around the National Hockey League. A lot of teams with three picks in the second round. A lot of teams with two picks in the second round. 13 teams with no pick in the second round. Oh, it really is amazing how many players got traded as the season goes along. And now we're seeing it in the second round picks. A lot of players have moved, like you said, lots. I'm anxious to see what the Red Wings do with their picks, what the Kings do with their picks. And we're still anxious to see the Ottawa Senators, three picks in the first. New Jersey, three picks in the first. But Ottawa is really dominating the top part of this draft with seven picks in the top 90 players. This is going to be very interesting to see how their franchise looks in years to come. But... Right today, it's about the youngsters, it's not about the years in the future. It's about all about today and these young men being drafted. Yeah, there's no question about it. Pierre Dory and the Senators know they've got a lot of work to do, but they've got lots of picks. What do I think of the Domi trade? Our draft team here did a phenomenal um, job. My initial response was that. Did a that great job of looking at the picks. Columbus. They could go. In fact, they nailed the first 12. Now, as far as the best well available players for round um, two, well, Noel Boone. Domi we had it should. What, where is he going to go? He's going to do really well. Or JJ really badly, the German, or is he going to be a really bad mix of Tortorella? But I think that this style of play will go well with that team. 
Those are some of the um, best Anderson, available players when it comes Montreal, to round two. I he could be really Sam helpful since hell they're no all so small. When it comes to but, analyzing um, the draft, he's nobody watches more forward, when it comes to prospects. How he rebounds from injury. On the great stage. So, Cos, how about it? Day two. Good to see you, my friend. Who are you fired up to see today? Good to see you, too. There'll be people gunning for those early picks, no question about it. I know the action started as early as last night. But who I'm looking forward to seeing today is not on that best available list, but maybe he creeps into there. Igor Sokolov, who just played the last couple of years with the Cape Breton Eagles, is a guy that I'm focused on because he's had 76 goals in each of the last two seasons. He had 46 of them last year. He's gone to two camps with Columbus. The most recent one, there was a glitch. I thought they were going to sign him. It didn't quite work out, so he went back and had an outstanding year. He's actually staying in the Maritimes right now. He continues to work out. He's waiting to see what happens today before deciding on what he's going to do with his future. But this guy is a beast. He's down to 217 pounds. He continues to work on the skating, which is the only thing that kept him. So I see how I, I keep up years. with um, there is one thing this, certain about this guy. It, round he two to seven can be pretty hard to Add an alarming pace, the really picks. good for the Russian um, junior team. Got a lot of markers ready. Really, really good. And we'll see how I do. Cape Breton. So this guy's worked on his game. He's worked on his skating. He's a big dude, good puck protector, and shoots at a ton. Yeah, I do have to think I have to oh, get yeah, I mean, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking at Damon Hunt as kind of my wild card. And the reason I say the Damon Hunt from the Rooster yeah. Warriors, a Brandon Manitoba native, is my wild card because he missed 32 games with an arm injury. He was sliced by a skate, a terrible injury. He's a good, smooth skating defenseman. He's a left shot defenseman. And I'm looking to see how some team looks and says, okay, we saw limited viewings this past year of Damon. I want to see how quickly he goes. I think he's going to go somewhere in the second round, if not in the top of the third Montreal round. He's a wild also card because you never know where the game players end up with in injuries. That, the season was short. He came back just, um, uh, uh, in that just before I thought uh, would be, the, the break. Be more appropriate and for he one played for, for Canada at the Adenalinka. He played for Canada um, at or the U18s. He's got international experience. And I'm really anxious to see. How soon Damon Hunt goes? You know what, Reader? Uh, my wild card for right. you guys. Uh, you think, I'm, yeah, smoking, Montreal I'm gotten focusing also in on a guy back. like Tall, Ty, excuse me, Ty yeah. Smolanik. Why him? Well, first of all, I was kind of hopeful that he might I guess be they have the so highest, many picks. Kind of like, rated they get player, so drafted entered. player ever to go to Queen. Um, the yeah. They were just giving him out. End, like, uh, that didn't happen. But I think a guy, like because Carlos of how his season unfolded last year, he had the three injuries last year. He had a bout of mononucleosis. And he so far, um, we started and talking that's about. Gonna knock him they're down talking about a lot of uh, players who are still available in the draft. Center, we haven't actually begun way. yet. Scouts didn't get the viewings um, they were up to this guy. Oh, this, this is a guy who I'm very interested to see how he does. I know, you can't see well, I look forward to Hunts, Malenic, and others and see what happens when it comes to where these guys are going to be selected. All the action is on Let's tap. As you can see, once time. again, these players waiting for their moment, waiting to see which team is where they're going to end up. Plus, a trade just happened. Lots of trades are going to happen today. Oh, well, yeah. There was a signing right. earlier today, too. DeMello was signed by the Winnipeg Jets. I don't know if you the heard about that. NHL uh, for four years, for $3 million per year. NHL That's a pretty this good signing for the Jets. I mean, new I would have thought that um, DeMello, groundbreaking innovators. DeMello would have gotten like a little bit more on the open market, maybe around you know 35-ish in that neighborhood. So for, good for the Jets for locking him up because I know there's a lot of teams interested in DeMello, you know, being a right shot defenseman and all. Murray just got create, traded. Hooah! Team Rogers Community Draft. For a Gotta keep to my to pro athlete mentors and one hundred and fifty dollars towards league fees. Apply now at rogers.com slash get drafted. Of course, we're talking about Matt Murray, I assume. What's wrong? I don't like Mary. Well, why do you drink it then? Because Big Terry drinks it. Never said I liked it. If only there was some kind of alternative. Gonna be a bride. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about uh, a Murray trade yet. To Ottawa, really. Matt Murray, yeah. I was saying about, you know, the, there's the, the Ryan Murray in Columbus. But Matt Murray is the one who's uh, been on the hot seat, so to speak. Um... You don't just build an award-winning vehicle. And some more news. Dermot and Mikia Mik from We're the Leafs have received qualifying offers. Um, you build a truck. It's more than and what else do we have here? Domi came out saying that he didn't really know where he stood with Julian. Awarded luxury car of the year. With the coach. Matt Murray trade, huh? To Ottawa. Your first three payments are on us. When they've gotten a favorite, you take the slap shot on the underdog. When social media says, no chance. Um, I mean, 
That's a good addition. I thought they were going to give some of the younger goalies more of a chance. I guess it's, if, it, if Murray is going to Ottawa, um, it'll be him and, oh, my God, I can't think of uh, the Swedish goalie right now, the former Canuck. For the two of them, why can't I? It's too early for me. The matcha hasn't kicked in yet. Sure. Right. We'll see if it's true or not. I haven't seen anything in my in my um, trade trade detector here. It's my trade detector. It's a little device. They also used it in the used it in the first Ghostbusters. I don't know if you know about this. Jameson created products for immune support made with pure ingredients. We'd say. Um, it's a winning lineup. So we haven't started yet. We're still going through some commercials, by the way. Our NHL draft coverage 2020 continues, presented by EA Sports NHL 21. We'll begin the second round momentarily. Yeah, so you're right about the Murray trade. Domi, the Blue Jackets. Um, and a 2020 third round pick. Yeah. Once again, rounds two through seven. Matt Murray yeah. goes to Ottawa for Josh Anderson, a second round pick and, and, and prospect Jonathan Gruden. Share the same agent Interesting. Well. I wish I had the same agent as Elliot Friedman of Hockey Night Canada. He's done very well for himself since we worked. Um, I don't know much about Jonathan Gruden. Have to do some more research on that later. Great to have our NHL Network inside with us, and Elliot, we already have some movement today. What can you tell us? Oh. Here we go. Well, Matt Murray, the goaltender that Pittsburgh wanted to move, he's now an Ottawa senator. He was traded this morning for the 52nd overall pick and a prospect named Jonathan Gruden. At this point in time, there's no extension between the senators and the goaltender, but if they don't get there in the short term, they can always go to arbitration and, and figure it out before they get to that process. But Matt Murray is now an Ottawa senator. All right, good Murray, stuff there, friends. Yeah, we'll check Minnesota. back later on. Matt Murray on the move as Ottawa does well, indeed more get that goaltender that they needed. Yeah. We'll check back that once was, again with later sure. on. But listen, the moment of truth is that. almost here. Round two is about to begin. There's the war rooms for all these teams, the front offices, the scouts, the GMs. Yeah, hey, i got to figure out my war room. Room. The picks are coming much. next. Thanks. Whoa, okay. Starting to pick up some numbers here. Thanks for joining Hey folks, uh, glad yeah, to see everybody today. It takes five to ten minutes. Oh, there we go. I'll do some notes. Um, we just have to want to do it. You got five, ten minutes. It's going to be hard to keep up. I'm going to try. I really am. Maybe on the diet. It just says, you can see the floor as well. You can't do this. You can't do that. And that's it. You can be seeing that it's about what's happening in my head. I'd use a couple of apps before, but then never really worked. They put you in a good place to make the right decisions. And that's the tool you need. You change up here, everything will fall into place. Yes. Damned lights are betraying me. The world has changed a lot since you last bought a car. With the Ford Traded Upgrade event, this is my softbox as I hold vehicle to use towards a new 2020 what if I turn this one off. It also turn this to get driver assist features like Ford Copilot 360, all wheel drive, and the latest tech. Mm, the Ford see how that works. Event, get a great financing rate, plus eligible it's customers a bit get a darker. on most new 2020 escape models. Hey, Franco, how are you doing, man? My brother just joined us, um, who is now, who were you? You're in Vietnam still, right? Obviously. I've been meaning to give you a, a call. It's just been busy lately. Oh, hey, could you please? Oh, you're back. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Well, there's probably leftovers in your new fridge. We got a commercial going on. We actually haven't started anything yet. Great delivery. Uh, we should try and talk on the on the uh, weekend, Frank. No matter how far back you go, we've never oh, seen Cookie Plays was saying hi to my brother. Okay. Who is Cookie Plays? Exactly. Do I know you? Who will be remembered? I wonder. <laughs> Never seen oh, Frank before. is in Europe. You're in Once Europe now. Oh, well, I hope everything is okay. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cookie place. I, I hear you. Well, thanks. <laughs> right on. Um, oh, maybe, Frank, maybe you're in Europe to see uh, Arthur's new baby? Anyways, a shout on the weekend. <laughs> One Good to see you, though. Thousands of bottles. Soda Stream. Make All right. Sparkling water at home. 
make a difference. Getting some numbers here. Dot com. Rounds two uh, I'm going to do some more of the lights. The NHL Network on here. Sportsnet. And you're listening to the Series 6M. Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly with the first pick of round two. Good morning, and welcome to day two of the 2020 NHL draft, which will comprise rounds two through seven. Bit better. We again are coming to you from the studio. It's a little dark, NHL but it's in order not to get a reflection on the board. And through virtual connections from the draft command centers of each of our 31 clubs. Over the past two decades, day two of the draft was conducted by Jim Gregory, whose contributions to our league and the draft in particular were immeasurable. It isn't overstating the case to say that Jim Gregory was one of the most respected and beloved men. There we in the go. That's a little bit better, too. The 2020 NHL draft is the first to have been conducted since last October when we lost the man the hockey family adoringly called Mr. Gregory. Get my fan on here. He's too. been missed every day since. His absence is particularly felt on this day. As Mr. Gregory always did at this point, let me say good luck to our clubs and to the young men around the world waiting to hear their Oh, you call. like my shirt, huh? And with that, yeah, let's I figured begin. you would. <laughs> the first pick in the second round of the 2020 NHL Here draft. Here we go. Get started. Detroit Red Wings. Detroit, you're on the clock. Detroit is up. Here we oh, go. The Detroit Red Wings right now on the clock. They've got a few minutes to make their selections. Pick 32. I'm just going to turn it up here. Chris Draper, uh, part of the brass will be making the pick. And listen, when it came to yesterday and the selections that were made, the Red Wings had the fourth overall pick. They drafted Lucas Raymond, which lost as a bit of a surprise to us. So curious where they go now to start the second round. Yeah, they've got three picks in this round. This is going to be a big, big opportunity for you the Detroit Red here. Wings. I love what they've done. Um, this year, obviously, the lottery um, didn't work out three. for them in terms of getting the first overall pick. That all changed when we changed those rules back in 15 and phased them in through 15 three and 16. But the next best strategy is to go with quantity, Reader, and they've got plenty of that for the rest of this draft. And Steve Eisenman has a history of taking cerebral players. When you look at scouting reports and you talk to scouts, it's players with hockey IQs that the uh, Detroit Red Wings, I suspect, will be looking for. Lucas Raymond. Their number one pick in yesterday, number fourth overall, uh, is exactly that. A very smart player, sees the ice extremely well. I think it will be looked to, to add that, especially with the three picks the Red Wings have. It's going to be very interesting uh, how they move forward and the positional players that they're going to be looking. Will they, when will they be looking at taking a goaltender, even if they decide that the goaltender is a player that they may be looking to in this draft? Yeah. A lot of players available still out there. A lot of Europeans, a couple of Swedes, certainly of interest, a couple of Russian players as well. We'll see what direction Steve Eiserman takes this team in, but uh, he's got a really rich history. Obviously, when you look at Kucherov and uh, Nemesnikov, he was a later pick, first round horse. That shows you that he's not afraid to take players from anywhere in the world. He just wants the best guys. Yeah, certainly has that pedigree, what he was able to accomplish on the Tampa Bay Lightning. You know, it's interesting. You look at notable players who've been drafted in the second round. You know, among active okay. players, lots just mentioned, Nikita Lights Kucherov. We've little, also got Roman Yossi, Sebastian uh, Ajo, Patrice Bergeron, Shea Weber, and Ryan O'Reilly. So oftentimes, what? Reader, that first round gets a lot of focus, but a second round player can really impact a draft. Well, let's see. We've got an Art Ross trophy. We've got a Norris trophy <laughs> winner. We've got a Con Smythe trophy winner. And we've got a uh, multiple Celtic trophy yeah. winner. Am I, am I miss, missing anything else <laughs> in, in here, Lon? Stop that. I, mean, I don't it, think it's, so. It, it, this is uh, it's incredible. Yes, uh, it's it's not necessarily not where you're drafted. It's what you do after you're drafted, and that's what you try to tell young players coming what into the it? game. Getting drafted is just your first step. It's what you do after that. Exactly. It's an opportunity to go to an organization, and start showing what you can do. And this draft, as we've heard, is a very deep draft. We're going down into the 40s and 50s. So these second round picks are going to be just as important. There's no reason why some of these players drafted today couldn't have easily been drafted in yesterday's first round. And that's the big thing. I know there's a lot of dis disappointment in being that number. You know, this is the, the 32 pick in the second round. It doesn't matter. It's all in the eyes of the beholder, but you have to uh, change Daniel those reflection. eyes. And that's what these guys are going to do. But that, that group of second rounders there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, that, that's yeah, it's, everybody. Yeah, that's right pretty now good. Right. Reader that up some Detroit here. first team up. They've had all night to think about oh, it. Nice. No pick in yet. Maybe something's going on. Something's going on with Detroit. We'll see. And then, what's going on over there? I was about to say, we're driving the bus. <laughs> we're about to find out here. <laughs> this is going to be a different field today as now so we'll be going back and forth between our comments and actually what the picks are going to be. But the Red Wings, as we said, the pick is Yay. in. Let's go back to the Deputy Commissioner Bill All right. And the pick is in. Go ahead, Detroit. Pick is in. The Detroit Red Wings are proud to select 
from Moto, defenseman William Wallander. Oh, William Wallander. He was ranked 14th by the Hockey News. All right, this is a guy we talked about last night. 36th by could, international we thought scouting. He would potentially go end of first round. 20 isn't that far off. Yeah, 23rd, we had him as far as our rank is concerned. William Wallander out of Moto, the defenseman. Now, one of the NHL comps is Travis Sandheim, some were saying. Defenseman. Good skater, wins battles, uh, played soccer till the age of 13, got into hockey thanks to his oldest brother, Christian. Wallander slipped a little bit, Raider, but this he is a good thing. You know, he did slip a little. We all expect him to go in the first round. Six foot four. Uh, Morris Sider and William Wallander on the back end. And is it a surprise that the Red Wings are going to Sweden? Lucas yeah, Raymond was just from Sweden. Yeah. Wallander's from Sweden. Remember Steve Eisner a few years back, lots of from Tampa Bay, took the majority of Russian players and drafted. Uh, it's no surprise that the Detroit Red Wings are dipping into their scouting staff mm -hmm. in Sweden. It's been very successful <laughs> over the years. So why not? Why not keep going? New regime, and it's similar scouts, the same yeah. guys, the same eyes watching these players. But well, there's a big mobile defenseman, and this is something that, that every team wants. It's the mobility on the back end, that puck-moving defenseman, the defensive defenseman. And it's not about physical defensemen. It's about skating defensemen who can use their stick position, keep players to the outside, and eliminate yeah. the play to the middle of the ice. And when you can skate and close gaps and force the play to the outside, you're oh, extremely successful Damn and you will be extremely successful moving forward. And that's what Wallander's got. He's got that size, that reach, and that skating ability. Yeah, you mentioned that size. That's six they four, compare him to uh, defensive Victor Edmund. Let's go back to San Cosentino. Cars, what can you tell us about William Wallander? Six foot four, 192 well, pounds. I think one of the transfers over from the Ken Holland era to the Steve Weiserman era was, was Hawken Anderson. And obviously, he's had a lot of success there when you go and look at the Red Wings' history in Sweden. So, no doubt they've leaned on him here very early when it comes to Raymond and it comes to Volinder. Volinder, right now, my reports are on this player is that he's more of a transporter of the puck, but there's a lot of upside there. There's some immaturity to his game, both on and off the ice, things that I think Steve Weiserman and his. Uh, his player development staff will be able to address whether it's Dan Cleary, Sean Horkoff. There's such a good group. They're a group that has won Stanley Cups in the past, so they know exactly what it takes and how to mentor their players to get to that end. So better, right? I like this pick. I also had him in my mock draft going to going That's number 27. So they're feeling for sure like okay. they got a guy that they had in their list in the first round. All right, so good stuff there from Sam Contino explaining what the Red Wings are doing with William Ballinder. And obviously the Red Wings Ballinder, clearly doing a good job in terms of beefing up when it comes uh, to their Ballinder, European scout. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. As we look ahead we to what's going to be happening here momentarily, the Ottawa Senators the will have the next selection. They obviously were very busy when it came to their picks on day one, especially when you have three picks lots in the first round and two in the first five. A real collection of talent there getting Stutzel and Sanderson. Yeah, great first first day for them, obviously. I think they have an opportunity to have it be just as still, equally fruitful on this day with the well. number of picks that they have. Here. I think we're going to see a continuation of European players come down the pike early here. Let's go back to Bill Daly. Or is that, whoa, that's what in. Go ahead, Ottawa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. With, with pick 33, the Ottawa Senators are proud to select Still from blue. Elvis Finland, Roby Yarbentia. Roby. That's hard to pronounce. Roby. Ottawa with the second pick in the second round. Pick Roby Yarbenti from Kuvi in Finland. Roby Yarbenti. We have a trade to announce. Oh, the a trade. Nashville Predators have traded Nick Benino and draft picks number 37 and number 70 in the 2020 draft to the Minnesota Wild in exchange for Luke Kunin and pick number 101 in the 2020 draft. San Jose, you're on the clock. Oh, well. All right, let's talk first about Roby Arventi there. Thanks to Deputy Christian for that. So this is a guy, listen, when you're looking at uh, what he can bring to the table, Arventi, the 33rd pick now at the Ottawa Center, is an effective power forward, uses his size well. Lots, what do you have on him? Roby Arventi is how you said it. It's Robbie, not Roby. At least that's what we're told from our incredible research staff here. Is an interesting guy. He's another one of these guys that started playing already. And so far, last year he played in the junior league. This year he's played for Tempera. Already two games. He's got two points. He's off to a terrific start. He's a big guy. Think of him as that kind of prototypical, and you're going to see this more Left on day here. two, a guy that you're probably projecting to be on your third line, not necessarily as rugged as maybe a Barclay Goodrow, but cut in that same mold with a little higher offensive potential. The, in the, that's the red what was acquired when you pick up a guy like Robbie Yarvin. Uh, All right, so that's the news the there as far as the here. selection, but also that trade just got announced. So we're reacting to that, that as well, just like all of you. So if you take a look here, Luke Cunning and the 101st pick, the Predators acquiring, and the Wild acquiring Nick Benito, the 37th pick Raider 
and the 70th pick as wow. well. And your thoughts as we see that Benito. right now? Uh, it, interesting uh, switch of players and picks. Pick uh, Benito Lincoln. obviously going to uh, yeah, Minnesota. The Pittsburgh Penguin history right there with uh, general manager Bill Guerin. Uh, this will, it'll be interesting to see the picks who, that are going to be taken ahead. But uh, moving forward, you're, you're trading a younger player with lots of potential and still untapped potential in Conan for Benino, who is an experienced veteran guy, brings some leadership to your group. Uh, this is an, an interesting move. But again, I think this is all about the selections and the draft picks for Minnesota. Nick Benino played so great for the Pittsburgh Penguins the year they won the cup and beat the Nashville Predators in the finals. It didn't really work out. The other way in terms of he got the big contract, he was able to benefit from that, but didn't necessarily get the bang for the buck there. That, that's, I think, what's going on here with the Nashville Predators team, who's trying to find ways to reduce, create more cap space, have more flexibility with their budget. This is an interesting move. Luke Cunnan, tremendous leadership skills, but Bill Guerin has been very steadfast that they're going to make changes, and we are seeing them unfold right in front of our face. They have been active. Yeah, certainly he's looking to make moves. Like I said, sometimes it's about picks, sometimes it's about cap rooms. There's lots of different machinations here at work. San Jose Sharks are coming up next. Sharks I love their next. pick yesterday of uh, Wise brought in. Listen, this kid's backstory is amazing. The fact that, you know, both his parents are deaf. They divorced him when he was young. Single mom grew him up. He's got five siblings. I think they did a great job as far as Couture, Brent Burns, everybody being there collectively. But San Jose, when you're looking at them right now, Reader, their team needs where they're going. What do you think about with San Jose? Well, uh, you got to remember the way, then what they're going to do today in, is not going to affect what they're going to do when the season starts. Yeah. Because right now we're stepping in. And even with Wisebot at the 31st pick, I mean, he's still a ways away. Unless you're in the top four or five, you can't expect any of these. So San Jose is about to pick. I just want to say thanks, everyone, for joining me today. San Jose, um, goaltender. If you haven't subscribed so already, please consider is, doing so. Working from goaltender and hit that like button. The defense is pretty solid. I'd They're appreciate it. For a little bit of speed Let's on the get wings. back to. And if they can find that in this draft, again, we're a couple of years away. We're still uh, talking. But at the time of the draft, you project where your players are going to be, your age of your players, where they're going to so, be. So, uh, I don't know if anyone read up on the uh, that transition pick I was of young on, players and the uh, new players. Last night. And, it, and it's it's just a continuing. <laughs> this is a really great you know very well. This is the general Amiro. manager's responsibility um, to look winger. down the road, look for years uh, in advance. Think of, That's what we're looking for in the draft. Like you were the best player available. Don't take the best player available when you start looking at the need. Well, we need a left winger. We will pass up a centerman because this left winger is what we need. That's not the way to go about the draft. You will take the best players available. Obviously, Ozzy Weisblatt was the best player that San Jose like felt available with the last pick of the first round. One and yesterday, at, at the Joe. end of the round, we'll see how they do uh, uh, moving forward now. For yeah, pretty future, good pivot anyway. by Doug Wilson. Last year didn't go the way they wanted. He was somehow able to accumulate another second round pick and a first round late Ooh. in the first round. And Tim Burke has done if an I excellent am, job throughout his career okay. scouting for the San Jose Sharks. He's the man in charge. You can it's rest hard to assured. find the right balance. He was excited when here. I talked to him just about the prospects of having a few kicks at the can in the top 60. That's what he was most excited about. We're going to see what that ends up the, being. But, uh, Tim is a guy that you cannot tie to any region. He will take the best player no matter where he is. He's been really agnostic that I'm, way. I'm happy a lot of guys have favorite regions or certain types of players right they like. Not Timmy Burke. He'll go anywhere, wherever the best player is. The board, yeah, and you see that listing there, the top prospects for the Same. Sharks, the way they're trying to build something here. It's interesting just collectively as a team, because like you said, Reader, patience is a virtue when it comes to this draft. And too often times you'll I see just GMs maybe making a knee jerk reaction to help the team immediately. But oftentimes now. these now. picks can, we saw yesterday the Royal One, now. the late birthdays, the fact that this guy's need time to now. develop. The season's not going to start until January anyway. So a lot of these picks in the second round, we're not going to see them in this upcoming NHL season. They still need okay. some more seasoning, wherever that may be in the minors, juniors, Etc. Part of that seasoning okay, is the so interview process the, and the general the manager is getting to know the players. And that's something that the general managers weren't able to do other than through Zoom calls, those in person meetings, which can go okay, a long way to determine whether a player uh, is in the good books or, hey, you know what, we didn't like the interview. Now? We weren't sure if he's mature enough. Uh, that Great. wasn't a chance for the teams to do this year. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for helping me out with all that. Zoom calls. <laughs> exactly. Zoom, Zoom. Let's go back to that. That was fun. Okay. So let me and know if you can't hear the feed properly. If you want me to turn the it San up. The uh, San Jose Sharks trade pick number 34 in the 2020 draft oh, wow. to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for picks number 38 and number 100 in the 2020 draft. Buffalo, you're on the San clock. Jose just traded that pick. All right, thanks to the Deputy Commissioner for it's that. now Buffalo. Here we go. 
the 38th pick, as you heard, the 100th pick. So the Sabres now get that 30th pick. We're so getting really trades, up people. Four spots. Clearly, that they see that their guy is available. They so want to start that, the so salivate. Let me know. If you have 100 uh, picks, you move up four more spots. Maybe I should have a towel here. About who they're going to select now. Yeah, I think it's more of that quantity that you see teams are going to go for today. We saw it with Calgary yesterday. They did an excellent job Buffalo. in the first round, moving down twice. Yes, you acquire a couple of third rounders. That strategy appears to be it here at play for Doug Wilson right, and the San Jose Sharks. Here. Kevin Adams, on the other hand, he's identified somebody that he's a lot of viewers. Please, able to get. Mm-hmm. Don't, he's decided to, to move you, up. Is it a high uh, price? Please don't be shy to get the player you want. Subscribing, and he turns out to be, I don't know, think a guy's drafted in the Ryan O'Reilly. As I'll be here for the next three, four days. That would be well worth it. Now doing trade videos as well. That kind of stuff. Buffalo Sabres. Stay tuned. I call them eights or wild with this team. They always have the eighth pick overall. Thanks. Crazy eights. Crazy favorite card. Top prospects And now here you see last year Dylan Cousins. A lot of excitement about him in Buffalo. He should there are a lot of rumors to, about least, Eichel, uh, an Eichel at least, Black Pierre trade. What do you think? Left front right Pierre trade. Well, he's, he's certainly going to push for some. That would be because interesting. Of the break, well, obviously, going there have been more coming yeah, really, you're, from he's New York in order for that to happen. Away from but, uh, being in the National Hockey League anyhow. So I think those guys are going to push like this team. I sure. agree. Wow. Buffalo Sabres making that move up. Let's see who they're going to select. Back to Bill Daly. Here we go. Buffalo. To announce the 34th selection in the 2020 NHL Draft. I'll turn it over to Jeremiah Crow, the director of scouting for the Buffalo Sabres. There's a joke Some Red there. Bull of the DEL, Jeremiah Crow. JJ Paterka. I'll repeat that. I know I JJ Paterka gets selected. JJ so we were Paterka. looking at perhaps getting him drafted in the first round. He was looked at number 26 Paterka. according to our Right department. winger. So there had never been multiple Germans selected in the first round. There was, although Paterka wasn't one of them. The comp here is Matt Duchesne, the right winger played for Munchen at the DEL. So Paterka ends up being the guy the Buffalo Sabres coveted, and they're willing to make that move up by four slots to get him. You see the numbers overall, seven goals, four assists, and 42 games with Munich from 2019 to 2020. Last season, a minus six rating overall. You see the numbers he compiled. Also, the World Juniors for Germany in seven games with four goals and a couple assists. Back to our draft viewer, Sam Cosentino. Cos, what do you have on Paterka? Well, I know there are a couple of scouts communicating to me this morning and just kind of a friendly wager and who might be one of those early guys to go on. Paterka came back in about three or four of those text messages. So no surprise here that Kevin Adams felt that he needed to be aggressive and move up those four spots. So an interesting scenario presented. Do you to guys America. appreciate you the San board? Jose, Is that even you look helpful? At Buffalo in terms of their picks, San Jose acquiring be. an extra one there. They're 34, 56. Meanwhile, Buffalo here Anyone? identifying exactly what that needs to so we'll jump up there and get this guy who's an energy guy. He's a pest. His engine never stops. So one of those type of guys cool. who not only can burn you with his ability to score Thank goals, you, but also a guy who can play that and style of game that's going to get underneath the opponent's take. skins and I'm really make you draw attention Cody, away from okay, what's cool. happening and put your attention on him. What I find interesting also about this pick Thanks, is, guys. guys, a lot like where the, the research department had him on my sports net list, I had him up at 23 as well. So, again, you're looking at a guy that no doubt, and so we're going to see this here for a little while, the we'll teams would have find had them in their first round, and you're going to see these aggressive little bumps up similar to, to what Kevin Adams did, did here to try and get into this probably 43 and earlier range in order to get the player that they want and had on their first round list. So nice move there. A little bit of aggressive here for Kevin Adams, but a nice way to make your mark as the new general manager. Paterka, the hockey just compares him to to Travis. Second among uh, under 18 scores in the DEL league from a season ago. Watch your thoughts on what he fits in with Buffalo. Oh, I think he'll fit in well. I mean, we were all talking yesterday about the potential for the German hat trick yeah, exactly. in the first round. It didn't quite work out that way, but I know for a fact, in speaking with the Chicago Blackhawks, they were extremely pleased to get He shoots Michael. left, but it's a right winger. He's 5'11". Obviously, Tim Stutzla. From Germany, this guy catch also, that when you have kids that grow up together in a, in a country like Germany where maybe they haven't had as many top-end kids, they each push each other along. That's what I saw with this guy. He's got a high hockey IQ. He can play along with elite players. I think he's going to fit in nicely. Not next year, but potentially the year after. And that's Elgate pretty Grand quick still for a guy picked. picked in this range. But I say that based off of his Rich experience defense, already playing against Six men. Bigger, stronger, a lot of former NHL players. This guy's going to transition a lot more quickly than anybody would realize. 
definitely big news in the Deutschland, and I can speak a little German. Ich kann spielen means I can play. That's about all I can give you. But there's never been even multiple German players selected in the first round. So am I, I prepared listen, for the next? Yeah, huge next news for I was going to say you, you you cover hockey as much as I can. Anybody. Be. <laughs> I mean, you see that in Germany? Three guys selected in the top thirty-four. That's massive. It, it, it's incredible. The first time we were uh, you really, in the first round. Really, a massive yeah, thing. I really want Lisa to trade up to the grab. Uh, uh, they were excellent. All oh, are you talking about players, uh, players uh, the defenseman I just mentioned, Helge Grass? players and the key is if you yeah, look back he's a right the shooting D. They compare him to Germany, Dougie Hamilton. Uh, was hosting with France and this was a situation six where Germany yeah. was pretty much relegated yeah. they couldn't relegate them because that they would be a were good idea following I'd like to see more <laughs> so that's just shows where German there. hockey was and the prospect it has gone, especially right it has shooters gone leaps and bounds through the minor system, these young players and come guys up and are setting a new standard along with Leon Dreisaitl. That's a heck of a way to avoid relegation. Yes. If you don't pick it up, you're up. Host. Actually, you're hosting. You know what? You're in next year. That we'll find out. The pick is in for the LA Kings. LA is next. With the 35th selection in the 2020 NHL draft, go ahead, Los Angeles. The LA Kings are proud to select from Malmo of the Swedish Hockey League, Helga Granz. Oh, they just <laughs> – speaking of which, Ellie just This is the all-name team, okay? Helga Grant. Helga Grant. We were just talking beauty. about this Sounds like a hockey player, doesn't he? Dad and brothers are all sub six feet tall, but Helga's 6'3". Reader, what do you have? A right shot defenseman going with the size Los Angeles Kings. That's too bad. Uh, oh, well. Too bad, Matt. Four. Grant's a very Rick highly Wesley. mobile, offensive-minded defenseman, but he's very – Raw, a very raw young defenseman. There's all sorts of room to grow. Excellent passing ability. The skating ability, they call it the four way skating ability. When you're a defenseman, you've got lateral movement. You can move forward, you can move backwards. Your turning ability is sensational. That's what we see with Helga Granz. But uh, there is room to grow. With every offensive and great skating defenseman, it's usually how do you do in your own zone. Granz is a big kid. And usually the taller the kids and the taller the guys at the younger age, the little more awkwardness you have. So this is a project. I like what they've done. They like the size, the skill. You cannot have enough right shot defensemen. This is an excellent pick for Rob Reich and the Los Angeles Kings. Yeah, certainly. You've seen this right away here lots as far as overseas scouting, right? It's so critical when it comes to looking at these players and identifying not only your needs, but what these skills and how they're going to translate over to North American games. Yeah, there are hey. some advantages. Let's call it what it is when you're playing against men, when you're playing in some oh, yeah. higher leagues. And clearly scouts are taking that Durable, into account. We said Durable before we opened show, get to ready about for a lot of European them. players. Uh, I think we're going to continue well, to see that theme heavily throughout the second round. In terms of the LA Kings and Rob Blake, Oh, he's from the same uh, city. It's been living, obviously huh? a, a That's tough while for this organization. Cool. A, a rich history, proud sure organization. Know, two Stanley Cups, the rest of us 12 then. and 14. But now they're in that phase where they're going to climb back up the mountain. And they Possibly. have a foundation. So, like, everyone knows really each other, really right? In Sweden. You're from Sweden. Do you know Just look at all pal? the players they yeah. had in the World Juniors <laughs> last year. I want to say they I had live their in Canada. top I get that six picks. Oh, you must know John. You must know last, John, all right? play in the World Juniors. West. almost unheard of. <laughs> this organization is absolutely loaded for bear in the future. And good times are not that far away for the LA Kings. That's for sure. Well, certainly that's interesting the way that this is going Still down as far as the reactions here some of these players. Yeah. The pick is coming up here momentarily when it comes to the Anaheim Ducks. And Tony Bernardo, by the way, is going to be a part of also our uh, selections here as he has been breaking down some of these players. Of course, Tony, University of Wisconsin. Oh, Bernardo is coming on. Fame inductee. His in. thoughts on Sam Colangelo. With the 36th selection in the 2020 NHL draft, I'm going to throw it to Anaheim and Martin Madden, the assistant general manager for the Ducks. Ducks up next. selects from the Chicago Steel of the USHL, Sam Colangelo. Ooh, the Ducks like those Chicago Steel players. Sam Colangelo. All right, so uh, clearly exciting news there, players. I jumped the gun there a little bit. So clearly good news there as Sam Colangelo gets selected. The right winger of Chicago, he finished first in the USHL in points per game. In 2019, 2020, 1.32 was the PPA, yeah, and a minimum of games played. Great to play for Northeastern University this year. But I mentioned Tony Granato, again, a guy who is such an expert when it comes to breaking on these players. His thoughts on Sam Colangelo. <laughs> Sam Colangelo, another fine hockey player coming out of the Chicago Steel organization. This will be probably one of the four kids drafted from that organization. Big, skilled forward. He's one of those guys that uh, every time you see him, you see him do something special. 
He's one of those guys as a skater. Oh, they compare him to Jeff Carter, to to six foot two, uh, but he always two hundred five pounds, right big body, right shot, right winger. Big shot. He's his teammates well, and one thing that I think potentially he can be is is a meaner player from right uh, Stoneham, Massachusetts, play. not far from where I went to high school. Remember that, Frank? Year. Uh, You're that's still here one with of us? the parts of his game that I think as he gets older and gets into college, you'll see him be a more physical, gritty player because I think he's got that nastiness to his game as well. So a real good pick. All right, thanks to Tony Granado there. And certainly the reaction here is Sam Colangelo getting drafted. Oh, yes. Colangelo. Sounds there. maybe Italian. It's I mean, that's, that's great to see. It's always tough. You know, the way the draft is... Culturally played speaking. out now the first night is uh, tough if you don't get picked especially when you go so early oh yeah the next day i've seen it many many times but at the end still it seeing the board out. here uh it's deleted time to bring in our friend ej raddick for the first time today yeah. easier what can you tell us about sam colangelo yeah he's a massachusetts kid and you can see very excited there played his youth hockey he's with a mass uh, junior bruins organization there they i'm a mass good players over the years as you said big kid <laughs> played for that chicago steel team in the ushl that's uh, a team that's been put together by the GM. The lock chain said, great Knox job. just going to sit the strap. Tony said, yeah. he's a big guy. They call him Golangelo around, uh, Golangelo. around Chicago because he's someone That's that can catchy. make it look easy. I'm Talking sure to scouts, be, they say, hey, we um, love his size. We think if, if, if the team the that grabs a lot him, of just patient with him, gives him the time to develop, this is a player that could really come in and be a factor. He's a big-bodied kid, as Tony talked about, 6'2", over 200 pounds. So really, really uh, helpful player for the Anaheim Ducks moving forward, big player. All right, appreciate the incident. We'll check back to you later as we go through more of these prospects and the guys that you're honing in on. Let's hone in now on the Deputy Commissioner, Bill Daly. We're the 37th selection in the 2020 NHL draft. I'll throw to Minnesota Wild, Director of Amateur Scouting, Judd Brackett. Minnesota selects from St. Petersburg, Murat Kuznodinov. Murat Kuznodinov. That's right, Marat Kuzadinov. Listen, the Russia gold medal, the 19 Halinka Gretzky Cup, three assists, five games played, played at SK St. Petersburg lots. Another center right here, and this is a guy also that's begun his season over in the center. KHL. This is a theme. You're going to continue to hear this. Playing for St. Petersburg, one of the richest organizations, oh, that's a long name. The most storied organizations in the KHL. Kuzadinov is a guy, in my opinion, that has great skill. Great playmaking ability. He's a pass-first guy. You're going to see that eventually yes. when he gets yes. here. I think this is an excellent pick for the Minnesota Wild. They are addressing a need, a weakness that they have right now. And some of those guys, maybe like a Marco Rossi, are going to be here sooner than you think. But this will fit down you know. the road. Don't forget, Kirill Kaprasov also going to make his debut for the Minnesota Wild this season. I love this pick for the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, excellent skater at top speed. You can see that he's a finesse type two-way player. Sure. And it's interesting, just again, reader, when you look at big picture, what these teams do is, is okay, sometimes do you draft the best player available or do you go by need? In this case, clearly, they're stockpiling centers and saying, all right, Minnesota Wild, we've got to get better down the middle, and we're going to do so here. Yeah, the draft. And this draft is still uh, very much favored as for forwards, but this not necessarily high centers. There's a lot more wingers. In this draft, it's a very unusual draft in that regard. A lot of times you'll see, oh, there's a lot of defense can go in the first round. A lot of centers. You see a lot of younger players come in. and they seem to be I think they pick a lot of centers, centers too, because year. you might centers as well pick wingers, a center, unless he's an amazing winger. Up a center, because you can always don't think you can have pull a center over to wing, right? Uh, and wingers are the easiest the things to, and uh, also to trade for, to pick up as USA. They don't cost as much. This yeah. player just happens to be a center. We uh, see again, so many players come in as centers in their minor teams or they're playing youth hockey. They get into college or junior. Or and even the pro teams, like when they're listed as a center, they're pushed over to the, to the wing in the national center, center. Yeah, yeah, and that's why so often time, you see, right? Lots maybe say, okay, centers and defensemen. That's why they're always so comfortable when it comes to the draft. You can move a guy to the wing. It's hard to go from the wing to center position. No, absolutely. I love what Billy Garrett is saying the same thing right now. Minnesota Wild. That's an organization we've talked about forever. It's always good enough to be in the playoffs but didn't seem to have the right mix to get it, make it to the Stanley Cup finals. They're kind of starting over in some ways without completely starting over. It's a little bit more of a retool. Pick is in. With the 38th selection in the 2020 NHL draft, I'm going to throw it to San Jose Sharks director of scouting, Doug Wilson Jr. Doug. San Jose. With the 38th pick, San Jose is proud to select from the U.S. national team, Thomas Bordalo. Thomas Bordalo. 
there for Thomas Bortolo. Led the NTDP team in assists and points and shots on goal. His dad, Sebastian, played two or 51 games in the National Hockey League. EJ, great moment for the Bortolo family. Yeah, no question about it. It's an odd circumstance. I mean, born in Houston with his dad playing in the NHL. Born in Houston, grew up in Montreal, ends up with the NTDP team in the U.S. So he's kind of had some travels there, but uh, really skilled player. Talking to different scouts huh. again. Ranked 35th like overall by the Hockey level. News. Really good on faceoffs. He's kind they of compare him to Jonathan Marcheseau. But he'll turn over the stick and in take the best a, case scenario, a five foot nine, a little small in certain situations. Center. So that tells me it's a kid that's thinking all the time. One scout said he has a chance to develop into a Michael Pekka type player. So that tells you that he is a competitive guy that will get into the battle. So a lot to like, really, about Thomas Bordalo. And you know, the other thing too, as we mentioned, his dad was an NHLer. He's got other connections to the NHL. His great uncles, JP and Christian Bordalo, played in the NHL. His grandpa, Paul and Bordalo, like played a good in the NHL. I mean, this guy, smaller. This is some really deep still blood grow, too. And you can see Honestly. there the notes from the NDP program uh, at the all-around game. So there's a lot to like about Thomas Bordalo. Some people aren't crazy about his size, but just look around the league, guys. You know how that works. He's 5'10". He's certainly going to be big enough. He's smart. He's competitive. This is going to be a nice player for the San Jose Sharks down the road as they give him a little bit of time to develop. Expected to go to the University of Michigan. All right, EJ, good stuff there when it comes to Thomas Portolo. Lots of your thoughts just again about San Jose and what they're building. Well, just to comment on the size, it, it, it's true in the past people are really shied away for players that particularly were 5'10 and under, but I don't know. There was this guy by the name of Braden Point running a <laughs> rough shot in the finals. And okay. Nobody really minded his size so much, Reader. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be as big an issue in the way the game's played. It's yeah. about speed. Uh, if you uh, can't uh, skate, and, you don't, and you're not up to speed. You can't think the game. These are things that everybody's talking about now. Uh, the smaller player is as coveted. The skilled smaller player is as coveted as the taller, taller skilled that. player. The there was a day when it was. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Big, yeah, big cement and no skill or a small guy with skill. Yeah. I take Sloppy the skill. board, yes, Remember, thank you. <laughs> honestly, the challenge for a lot of managers is just that the players look so young. They're not the fellow. Oh, my board is pro. They are young. They're young guys. Oh, either They're way. They're getting older, lost. They're getting younger. <laughs> well, thanks for saying Youth so. is a virtue. Uh, here, total. Okay? AJ, total total number. Let's go back to Bill Daly. Matt Santini. With the 39th selection in the 2020 NHL draft, I'm going to throw it back to Judd Brackett with the Minnesota Oh, Wild. Santini just got bought out by Nashville. From the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Should Ryan least take a chance. <sighs> So Ryan O'Rourke, who was named the captain of Sault Ste. Marie, November 4th, the age of 17, only other 17-year-old the captain the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, Craig Hartsburg, going way back to 1976, 1977, sixth in the OHL in penalty minutes per game among defenders. So he's feisty. You're going to like that, Sam Cosentino. Well, you see his brother there. There's hockey in the family. His brother's a scout for the Oshawa Generals. But when it comes to O'Rourke, the number one thing that sticks out isn't what you're seeing there. It's O'Rourke. the character. This guy's a future captain in the National Hockey League. He is as serious as you can get. And the other thing I really like about Ryan him is O'Rourke, a defenseman, left shot playing with the Sioux for, to Minnesota. Greenhouse, he recognizes that he's better than most of the other defensemen in the league. So he's a guy who supports, initiates the rush, and can put up points. I think he knows down the road that his first responsibility with the Minnesota Wild is to be that stay-at-home, tough-to-play-against defenseman. You talk to his coach, John Dean, and they say, oh, this guy is nasty. And I can remember earlier in the year, I went into a game in Niagara. He had missed eight straight games coming into that one, and there was just this buzz about the team in the room. I went into the coach's room, and they were all excited to get a work back in the lineup. As you talked about, with him being named captain at 17 years old, that doesn't happen very often. The last guy to do it was pretty good at Craig Hartsburg. So it speaks all to the character that this young man has to be a leader of such a storied franchise at such a young age, being able to put up points here, but recognizing, I know what I have to do to get there. He was ranked 26 by the Hockey News. Uh, He's He's from from Ontario. He plans to be a commercial airline pilot. And they compare so him to Jeff the Petrie here, in the, the Minnesota Hockey Wild. It's interesting. Six foot two, hundred eighty one pounds. Ryan this was a guy, listen, we had him at 29th on our board, so it goes down 10 slots. Good pickup for Minnesota. Excellent pickup. And again, we're in a situation now where there are 40 players could have gone in the top 31. Unfortunately, he's only got 31 slots. O'Rourke was one of those players that could have easily been gone in the first round. Uh, love the fact that he plays with a bit of an edge. Love the leadership capabilities. And again, Minnesota, you change up the gun center. The board here. You got a defenseman here in the second round. These are two good 
young picks at the top of the second Maybe round. And this is it. Everybody's side. saying it's a deep draft. So remember these names. I'm sure we'll see them sooner than later. Sort of Give them a couple more years of uh, uh, of growth to get into their 20s, early 20s, where we'll see them in the National Hockey League. Yeah, they got a great D now, but you know, it's it's a little bit crowded back there. So when for the um, so, so those latecomers, uh, the red here is the first round. Ryan Suter, who's done an amazing uh, the green job forever. Is the the second round. Signed Jared Spurgeon. Of course, they signed Jonas Brodeen as well, but this is a guy that's going to come underneath that at some point. Dad Michael played one year in OHL welcome with Lord. Cornwall. And as welcome, Boston, O'Connor. His brother also a scout. Back to Bill Daly. Who's on the Before clock? The, uh, the Jets. The, the Winnipeg Jets are on the NHL clock. And entry draft. I'm going to throw it to Kevin Shevel Dayoff, the general manager of the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets are proud to select from Frölunda, Sweden, Daniel Torgerson. Daniel Torgerson from Sweden. So Daniel Torgerson, that's right. The left winger from Frölunda. Left off winger. To a good start in the National in 2020-21. Seven points in his first six games. And reader, this is a guy who, again, had a good season Torgerson. last year and building off of this year. He had a great season. He played in the Super Elite, which is the uh, U-20 league in Sweden. They're going to call it's him It's a Torgy. step below. And this is where <laughs> players will, will go from the U-20s. They step right up into the SHL. And he plays in Frölunda. And Frölunda is a storied franchise. There are plenty of players who have come out of Frölunda. They are one of the top teams in the senior now, level in Sweden. This young player is six foot three. One of the things mentioned about him is he competes. When you're six foot three and you compete mm -hmm. and you've got skill and you put up 44 points in 39 games, 26 of these being goals, then guess what? The Winnipeg Jets have just got some size. They've got a goal scorer. Uh, I like Ferguson. This is a, a, a good pick. He's a big player who's mobile, who can skate, and you can't have enough goal scoring on your team. The Winnipeg Jets, I mean, that's all we talk about with Winnipeg. They've got plenty of offense up front. A lot of people really thought this was a draft that Winnipeg was going to really focus on defense. They've right. taken the best player available. They've got a player who can compete, can score goals, uh, and who already. is playing at a very high level yeah. right now. And he will play with for London in the SHL this year. Obviously, no D available that they felt comfortable with at the number 10 pick. They go with Cole Perfetti. Oh, that sure, is an forgot, example uh, of just take the best player. Yeah. They were probably shocked to see him there. But there's another big European winger I'd rather talk about with the Winnipeg yes. Jets because that's what everybody wants to focus on right now. And he oh. may be a Finn versus or a Line State, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Patrick Lining, what is going to happen with him? Could we hear his name by the end of the day going somewhere else? Well, unless it's multiple second round picks. I mean, you've got to get a first round pick for Patrick Line. <laughs> you're year. trading a yeah. young 20, 40 goal scorer. Like, this is. Yeah. But to wow. trade, last a lot of that going on. Well. There's been speculation about Line. There, yes. The name definitely is Sorry if I don't get to everyone's uh, questions and for his club, stuff. So I'm just trying to keep up here. Definitely investigating. Well, I'll do as best as I can. Offensive players are drafting us. I think they're still going to be looking to win game 6 5. Well, yeah, it's, well, listen, so their defense a season ago, we all know the fact that, you know, why they revamped. You know, they were missing five blue runners from a season ago a lot. So it's interesting. They had such turnover defense. Obviously, they have a sensational yeah, force it, though, and it's not there. Yeah, that's exactly. We'll talk about the Jets the best player right now. Take the Top best player and your GM will tell you time and time again. That's a line in we'll figure out what to do with them yeah. at the appropriate time. Just give us the best player you can find. It does help him to have a standing goaltender like Connor Hellebuck as well to shore up the back end. All right. So those are the top 40 picks in so far. Back to Bill Daly. I can't find Torgan. The 41st selection in the 2020 NHL draft will be announced by Darren York, the director of player personnel for the Carolina Hurricanes. Darren? Carolina is proud to select from Louis Sweden, Noel Gundler. So Noel Gundler is a guy that at least Noel on our Gunner. draft, we had him going at number Gunner. 20, the right Gunner. winger from Lolia. NHL comparison to Jake Gensley led all under-19 skaters in scoring in the 2019-20 okay. Champions Hockey League. And, in fact, he turns 19 right today. That's right. He was hoping to be selected on birthday pounds. yesterday. But on his 19th birthday, he gets drafted by the Carolina Hurricanes. For more on him, Sam Cosentino. Cos. You know, what's interesting to note here, guys, as a side note to everything that's going on today, are just how many new scouting directors, general managers, and personnel people there are right across the league Frank, you still around? this is all happening midstream so things might have looked different had we gone back to the june draft when everyone was still employed by their respective teams but with all the shuffling of personnel we're seeing changes we've already seen nashville's on the clock and jeff brackett taking control there bill garen acquiring an extra pick so that he can get his new scouting director 
more opportunities. Yeah, oh, cool. And the same thing has gone on in Carolina, where Mike Dawson cool, 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 and Robert Cron cool. were formerly cool, cool, there, cool, cool, working cool. and looking after the draft the last couple of years. That's no longer that. the case there in New York, Sandberg as you saw. Making this awful. case, they look to be an organization that's leaning towards the analytics. So let's get to Gundler now and talk about this player. There is no question that the size, the skill, and the goal scoring ability are all present in this young man's game. What there is some concern, however, is the fact that when you look at a guy who's this good, who's this big, who's this talented, has been on the outskirts of the national team, it, it raises some questions. You wonder why that is the case. In the scouting that I've done of this player, there's some inconsistencies in his game. Yet, when he puts the whole thing together, and let's not forget, we're still talking about kids here. They can him to Phil Kessel. And to grow. If this guy puts it all together, he's going to be a guy who's very effective on the wing, scoring goals down the road in the National Hockey League. Interesting. We'll see if he can score those goals. As you said, led the Super League goals per game a .87 during the 2018 2019 season. So Topi this Nimmer. happens sometimes. Lots. You have a guy that you think is going to go in the top 20, and instead he goes 40th. Perhaps he uses his motivation. As you guys said earlier, it doesn't matter where you get drafted. Right exactly. Yeah. You're going to go to the Carolina <laughs> Hurricanes, and you're playing for Rod Brindamore. That's good news. Uh, yeah, that's yeah Nashville's on the club. And they've got a great organization. And the fact of the matter is that they are looking, they have a tremendous day. They're looking to strengthen offensively. That's all. And you got a great coach. I got to switch boards here. Nothing soon. else to worry about. Continue yeah. to apply your trade until you're ready to go and then show up and you'll get a great opportunity with that organization. That's for sure. Yeah. It's interesting as we take a look at the big picture. All the guys that we have potentially going in the first round. Guler was well, the I got last a bunch more boards. Could have gone so, in the first round has now been selected. So this is where it gets interesting now when it comes to projections so and to such. We look at who we think are going yeah, in the I got like three Everybody who more we boards. thought was going to go in the I'm first ready. round. All those sure. guys are at least now gone. We take a look further at the second round and go further. We'll Back to Deputy part. Commissioner sure. Bill Daly is at the podium, the latest pick. I got that. Yeah. Okay. So make the 42nd selection in the 2020 NHL draft. Uh, I throw it to Jeff Kielty, the assistant general manager for the Nashville Predators. From the London Knights, Luke Evangelista. Luke Evangelista. What a Luke name. Evangelista, the second cousin of Hockey Hall of Famer and Leafs president Brendan Shanahan. Oh, I know all those watching in sports are like, really? Name. That's right. Both played for London. Luke no, no, in fact, he also has right two winger. metal plates in his left arm. And it even shrank Sam Cosentino. He was an absolute beast for the London Knights. Man, I love this pick. This is a guy that actually I had I projected to go at the very end of the first round. You go back to last year, and this guy was slight of frame. Man, he was so skinny, his eyes were single file. But you know what? <laughs> He's been working out. He's been using this time here to make himself bigger, faster, and stronger. The key part about this player is the fact that in, in his 62 games, he had 61 points. 59 of those came at even strength. So what are you getting? A guy who knows how to play the game when it's even, five-on-five five situation. So let's take you back to last year. He's challenging Antonio Strangis, as a guy's name you'll hear later on from the London Knights, for those minutes, trying to get into Dale Hunter's good books. And it didn't quite work out for him to get those top-notch minutes. So he said, you know what? I'm going to work on the rest of my game. Play away from the puck, penalty kill. Get me out there in those situations against the top guys. I want to be a PK guy. He earned the trust of Dale Hunter, and he's really the first 17-year-old in the London Knights franchise since Bull Horvat to get regular time on the penalty kill. You look at the numbers, sure, they don't dazzle you. 61 points, He's ranked 59th games, overall by the Hockey News, this year, uh, 54th by times, International Scouting Services, and they compare him, best case to scenario, to Riley Smith in the Vegas Golden Knights. the last thing i man, in the last couple of years, of all the people I've interviewed, this guy'd be top five on my list in terms of character. That's, uh, That's Luca Evangelista. Stuff. We were talking right to Mike Fuda yesterday. We said, is there a guy you'd be really excited to see? And he goes, you know what? Watch out for Evangelista. Mike did a great job with the Kings for many years, so he'll like that pick. Back to Bill Daly. Hot and heavy here. To announce the 43rd selection in the 2020 NHL draft, here is Billy Ryan, an amateur scout for the Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers are proud to select from Lexand of the Swedish Hockey League, Emil Heinemann. Emil Heinemann, uh, the left winger, as you heard, they're from Sweden, tied for first in the Super Elite in goals per game in the 2019 20 season at 0 0.90. He was able to score and average very well per game lots. Yeah, he really was. And he's another one of these guys. And we talked about this last night and a little bit in the, earlier in the show today. Okay. It's a late Florida. one birthday. So what does that mean? A little bit older, but it's afforded a kid like this, a guy that I compare to, think of a slightly smaller version of Chris Kreider, a little bit of a man child. Plays an up and down uh, physical game, but he's obviously on the clock. Offense, by the way, skates really well. This is a good pick. 
this is this is what scouts do right here. You take a kid that you see attributes that you like, you get them in your organization, you develop them, and hopefully one day they'll end up on your roster. Hopefully one day. Hopefully and that's the thing. Day. And, and that, with, that with, with the good. growth of these players, and it, it, this time in our lives is going to be tricky for these young players because a lot of these young men haven't started playing. A lot of these young men, uh, season ended quickly, and now they're put into the leagues and they're still teenagers playing against men. So this is going to be a very interesting transition in the next six months as we move forward with these guys and their, and their development. And I'm sure uh, the National Hockey League teams draft them are going to be keeping a very close eye on them and are going to have a lot more say in the development than they might have had in the past just because of the break we've had. For all the scouts I talked to, this is a guy's name that came up time and time again but everybody just had one little twist that they just weren't completely sold on him. And that's how you end up being selected here. You start really getting nitpicked to death by mm -hmm. scouts. That's what they do so well. But in my opinion, this is a really strong pick. All right, so Heinemann is the selection there. By the way, he's got three older brothers, Carl, Andreas, and Lars. They're all playing in Sweden. Well, that's fair. Yes, thank you. Lars. Uh, the best available players, by the way, when it comes to those still available. So he mentioned all the guys that could have gone in the first round, they're gone by now, theoretically. But here's some big names still, actually, as I say that. Listen, Jan Meshack, we had a 24th. Uh, Jeremy Poirier. Honestly, he wants to see them take well, Toby. 28th. You look at Martin Kromiak, uh, Lucas Cormier. Ponomarev, uh, Tyler Clevin, Ty Smolanek, who you talked about off the top lot. So I can understand Ty Smolanek being oh, there. No. Just because of the injuries. Sure. So you have a basic is that's a surprise for me. That, that, yeah, I'd Meshach like and him, Boria, yeah. Just, just for check hockey, I'd like to see him get bit pretty soon here. Yeah, those are a couple names there. You would think at this point are going to be coming off the board relatively soon. But Meshach and Boria is still available there. Who knows? Maybe sometimes we know there's conversations. Guys just like a player more than others. And. Someone can argue a little bit more, but we'll see. We'll get to that in a second. As I said, those are the best players available right now in round two. We continue here on NHL Network, on Sportsnet in Canada, and also for all those of you listening on Sirius XM. The draft continues. We're just getting warmed up. Round two through seven. We'll continue after this. Oh, we're going to commercial. Thank God that was getting a little the fast. The 2020 NHL Draft is brought to you by I'm Trying to Gatorade. find these players Tested in my in the uh, literature on the ice. Literature. Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel of the NHL. <laughs> Namila, Namila. I've been trying to find him here, but I gotta find Heinemann first. Heinemann! A grilled cheese with a curly uh, We're on commercial break, everybody. Welcome, everyone. For those of you who are new to the channel, I just want to say thanks so much for joining our little community here. Please, consider subscribing. And hit that like button uh, as well as the notification bell. I would appreciate it. Thanks. Unless, of course, you think I suck. And don't. That's, a, that's okay, too. Uh, the comment section is uh, going at full speed now. With the Canadian Armed Forces. You taught me a different way to think about healthy living with psychology. I cannot find you feel great, and I've lost 28 pounds. Noom, change your habits, change for good. Visit Noom.com to start your journey. <laughs> Heidemann is apparently not in the top 100 ranked by the hockey teams. So Imagine the places we'll go. That's uh, together. I'm not going to spend any more time looking for him. Can't find him, unfortunately. Let's look at this and see if I can find this Nemo one again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh my! Free delivery is uh, free delivery. I mean, free delivery. You got this. Free delivery is back at Little Caesars. 
This is so exciting. Order with us online and get yours today. Oh, here he is. Okay. Kobe Minila. Min oh, uh, some of our viewers are hoping the lace will pick next. Uh, he's a right shot defenseman. They uh, make some comparisons between him and Emil Pjoik. Uh, he's six foot, 163 pounds. Different. You feel me? Same game. Whole new attitude. Yeah, this would be. This looks like it'd be a good fit. They, um, a nice wing to it. This is the remix. I'm not gonna miss. He's a small, slight defenseman. Coverage of the 2020 NHL Draft is brought to you by Honda. Honda, official vehicle of the NHL. Rounds two through seven continue, not only here on the NHL Network in America, but also Sportsnet back in Canada. And for all those listening on Sirius XM, Dave Reed and Brian Lawton, I'm Adnan Burke. More of our thoughts in a second. First, back to Bill Daly. And, and was, we have a trade to announce. What? Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs have traded pick number 44 in the 2020 draft to the Ottawa Senators in exchange for picks number 59 and number 64 in the 2020 draft. Okay, the Leafs just picked up. Means um, the Ottawa Senators are now on the clock. Picked up an extra pick here. Okay, so here's the details of the latest deal. The Ottawa Senators were uh, not select, but they acquired, excuse me, they acquired the 44th pick. So now they're going to be selecting for Maple Leafs as the Leafs acquire the 59th pick. And the Leafs 64th pick up 59th and 64th pick. Down, pick, pick. pick. Ottawa moves up. Clearly, that they like a guy somewhere here, Brian Lawton. So there goes what? the team, maybe man. Be well, maybe, maybe it's Meshack. Maybe well, the it's Corey. He'll still be around. The need to, to make them. Yeah, move. absolutely. They've got somebody they've targeted. Yeah, and, the, the, uh, they're just going to go for the it. The Sens could be a really picks, amazing so team. Like, like, you know, yeah, anywhere well between two and four years really from now. That's going to make your day, and this is the time to do it. And that's what Ottawa's just done, Reader. Yeah, great trades by Ottawa. They acquired Matt Murray for technically what a second round pick. That's a fantastic pickup. Your goaltending void is now filled. Those of you don't know about that, yeah. Also, picking up Matt so Murray from Pittsburgh earlier that. today. They've got, they got four picks already, plus they've acquired a goaltender. Yeah, Stanley Cup winning goaltender. There's a lot of things happening right now. Uh, rumors leaking out about Kyle Tur Turris potentially. We're doing the draft here, and then we're listening to all the other news that's happening because of the situation the pandemic has put us in this year. It's going to be wild, you guys. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. The fact that you've got Schusla, you've got Sanderson, you got oh, Greg. Those are your really first two really picks. And you had your Venti. And as you said, you have a goalie as well for Ottawa. When you have nine picks, you're and you got a two-time Stanley Cup champion yeah. goalie. How do you feel? That's going to take you to arbitration, I might add. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, hopefully, it'll work. Maybe out they can save to trade some picks for that arb. <laughs> How much do I think Matt Murray's <laughs> going to make? That's a really good question. I don't, I don't think they're going to contract an arb if they can trade. Okay, Frank. See you later. So we can confirm with those. Talk, talk to you soon. I hope. Rack was making that point to us before the show. Like nine picks in your first seventy-one. I don't. I don't have ever seen that before. No. No, I, I can never recall that. Six Matt picks Murray. in the top 40 they had before this trade. <sighs> right. Amazing. So probably the top 40 picks made Anywhere today. between. Right. 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 So, I don't know. He hasn't been that good for the past couple seasons. I told you there but... wouldn't be any math. I was told there'd be now no math. math. I'm going to have to get my abacus out Anywhere there. Anywhere okay. between six four and, four and seven, six. Seven, okay, it makes sense. Bottom line is this. It's interesting guessing... looking at the reader. The pace of the draft because you know the first year obviously it takes time guys make moves here but here it's very deliberate everyone's going to make their moves first. And we'll get more of your opinions in a second first we go back to that trade here we go ottawa the 44th selection in the 2020 nhl draft will be announced by trent mann chief amateur scout for the ottawa senator jonathan gruden what are my thoughts on jonathan gruden with pick 44 the Ottawa Centers are proud to select from the United States Nas National De Development Team Program and University of North Dakota, Tyler Clevin. Tyler Clevin. Tyler Clevin, defenseman, NTDP, the USHL. He's from Fargo. Oh, yeah, you betcha, yeah. From North Dakota, expect <laughs> to play. I'm oh, sorry. for sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. 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 jokes, yeah. Sorry. Expected to play Don't for the know. University of North Dakota this year. It's hockey here. There's well, a million reaction. Trust you, me, he's you, fired up right yeah. now. The three Fargo times going to continue. Matt Collins actually is hero. Seems and like his dad, Chris, played hockey ago, yeah. at Northern Michigan U during the 80s. He was a key figure in Tyler's development, coaching him from fifth to eighth grade. Love those bloodlines. Six foot Dodgers. four, 200 pound defenseman. Great pick. Ottawa. Yeah, no yeah. question about it. That always seems to play, doesn't it? Here's a guy who grew up going to Fargo Force games in the USHL to watch because obviously he had an interest from his dad. But there's a real trend here going on when you look at what the Ottawa Senators are doing. They are clearly going about this the right way. Huge left the shot defenseman. Position to Murray. If you look at Jake Sanderson yesterday from the program, obviously a lot of eyes on him. So surely they would have seen a lot of Tyler Clevin. 
So the point totals aren't going to dabble here, but this is a big, mean, nasty, physical, stay-at-home defenseman. Josh Brown, the guy they just uh, acquired in a trade and signed from Florida, he's very much like that. He played for DJ Smith on a Memorial Cup winning team. Thomas Shabbat, big guy. Six foot Sanderson, four, wow, big, big guy. boy. Clevin, big guy. So what are they doing? Go get the big goaltender in Murray, get a whole bunch of trees to put in front of him, find some skill up front, and then let DJ Smith work his magic. So I love what Pierre Dorian is doing here. When it comes to Clevin, though, I had a chance to talk to him at the BioSteel All-American game, and this guy was super serious. And again, really good in terms of self-identifying exactly what he is, what he wants to be, and what he's going to be at at the next level. It's <laughs> using that size and being mean and nasty and difficult to play against. Uh, well, well, I can use comparison to Brendan Dillon. That'll play well when it comes to hockey, doesn't it? It, it feels like Ottawa is building out their team like it was an expansion draft or something. <laughs> have a complete team by the time today is over. It's incredible. And we're not even talking about yeah, the guys. They are that are building their team like they are an expansion Brady, draft. You name it. Now they got a Matt Murray. Could Ottawa challenge next no, year? You know, we talked about it yesterday. I said two years. I think it's two years. I think two years. I think they'll be yeah. challenged. That's how quickly you can turn organizations around. Pierre Dorian's doing a fantastic job in really? Ottawa. Uh, making the change on the fly and everybody gave him a lot of uh, a lot of grief i suppose you'd say up in ontario and about what are you doing here you know you're what are you doing here well guess what the plan is in place he kept telling everybody there's a plan everybody's like no the we plan. don't want the plan has been too long let's get this plan going well you can see the plan coming to fruition you will see a lot of a couple of these players could be in the lineup as soon as we start playing once again and in a couple of years you're definitely going to see these players coming in. Plus, they've got Do plenty I think the of players. Would be a still deadlier in the system. Team this I haven't year? seen Rams from touch, touch the. Well, I've seen touch yes, but we haven't seen uh, touch the ceiling the, yet. Mm -hmm. Ottawa. I guess it's hard Sanders, to say. Right? Vegas trade was. It, well, it's well it's just Tristan Jerry about continue about to be Rubens. good. How about that? I mean, you look for connection um, with these guys. Oh, yeah. Captain, Dakota, can you can you turn up your internet a little bit? Don't turn up the speed. Cross your mouth and whoever they play with. A little bit of delay. A little bit of delay, and before the celebration, we saw yesterday with the Sanderson sitting there waiting. No, it was. So yeah, it's the exact, exact, same, same, exact same building. Yeah, they're getting up there. Interesting. Though, right? the you know, exact 30, same 30, building. 30, was like they're that. still it's good. The same reactions. Just a slight <laughs> delay. Yeah, I know. You can never them, write them off. All these kids showing up. Oh, well, is this the year they? That's take, not an you know, dive off that cliff. I don't know. It's a gorgeous building. It just looks like an NHL building. Talk about recruitment. Wow, North Dakota, you just have to show pictures of your, the, the facility. It's like, okay, this is an absolutely gorgeous facility. Yeah. Players, of course, doing their interviews when they get selected from the suite section. Um, is it Ralph Engelstad? Um, Ralph Engelstad, who's passed away. Oh, okay, Jan Missick. Uh, big, big hockey donor and uh, left winger, former fan. Who they compare to John Adam Tariq. John, yes, lots of uh, rich, rich history there. You can go back to Dave Tippett. Go right. way, yes. back. way back. There we go. Oh, there International we go. scouting has him at 25. The Hockey yeah. News has him at 27. There. Exactly. But, uh, and uh, the Ottawa Senators, you've got a couple. On Who's the on deck end. here? Uh, Detroit. Sure. But let's let, let, let them finish their uh, some sort of career in North Dakota. We don't want to be pulling them out there too That's soon, bring them into yeah. National yeah. Hockey League. That's a good plan. It's still uh, percolating. By the way, speaking of simmering, right now, it could be some moves here as we're waiting. The Detroit Red Wings, uh, theoretically, are up next with the pick. But it's interesting. You know, some of the trades we've seen so far today, lots. It's been mainly, you know, kind of organizing picks here and there. But you know, the wings are technically still on the clock here. But I'm curious to see what might happen here. Yeah, th there's no doubt. I mean, uh, Reader was just pointing it out at the break there. This second round is going incredibly slow right no now. No question. Why? Because people are looking at all their options more than ever. We, yeah. We've never, we haven't seen this much action in the second round. This many teams willing to move in a very, Stand very long for time. And and two first it's very in unique second. that way. Just to add it to another long laundry list yeah, of I don't know. Stamkos is just a lot of money. Because this has changed everything. He's a really great player, but you know, his now, injury issues are becoming way too doing frequent. Really well so far. Oh, it's yeah, uh, incredible. I don't know about that. To be able to pull this together, get players on. It's, it's amazing. It's yeah. the depth of the draft. That's why we're taking our time here. This will pick up. Trust me. Will it? We've done it. We, yes. <laughs> Adnan, you're a rookie in this situation. <laughs> and you know what? The draft I mean, all the defensemen. After, after our second and hour, the rookies you. take over. Me and Locks, we're out of here. See you later. I, I didn't this, really mean you'd be this out of here. Pick up. <laughs> <laughs> this guy hey, said to me, let hey, so pick up. They're going to be barely but on the camera. The depth of the <laughs> draft, the depth <laughs> of these players, and the talent level of these young players. And at 1130, you'll be out the door at 230. Uh, maybe 2.30 on Thursday morning. We got more coming up after this. Okay. <laughs>
the 2020 yeah NHL riley chapman leafs need defensemen bad Sports yes they do now and in the future year, you'll be able to pull um, new deeks and they, they keep on drafting a lot of good puck movements but i just like to see them draft some recognize great guys who are good in their own zone NHL 21 you know, a little bit tougher. Those captioning brought to you in part by Midas. Who can, right um, now at Midas, buy three select you know, hitters and get the fourth guys one free. The front of the Find your tires I know you can Midas. pick those guys up later on the round, so hopefully that will happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed here. I did some little research on Amirov last night. Um, he looks like he can be really promising. Like, they compare the kids to, to kitchen stuff. So I'm going to do my online auctions. You know, best case scenario. Um, did I just buy something? Yep. You know, I know. I think a lot of people, including myself, were upset that they didn't pick a defense. Great delivery. But, um, Do you wake up with aches and pains? I mean, you are, are your muscles you know, sore and, and stiff? Uh, up, is pain affecting so you your work and daily uh, life? Then Schneider. your life is about to change I forever. I was Introducing Dr. Ho's but, uh, Pain Therapy System, your solution oh, to well, living with less not, pain. It's a commercial, by, by the way. If you pain noticed, specialist sorry. Dr. Michael Ho, the secret to the extraordinary results is the auto-modulated pain-relieving waves, clinically proven to relax uh, muscles and improve uh, circulation to relieve pain. Gushier Recommended by doctors and users everywhere. A 20-minute treatment helps relieve the pain of stress, fibromyalgia, tension headaches, migraines, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, shoulder Riley, tension, and yeah, joint pain yes, in knees and hands. Good. Pain related to sports injuries, accidents, and repetitive work. It's portable, safe, and effective. It's easy to uh, use. Andrew, and feels yeah, so I don't see good. how at least like flesh out the team while paying for guys half Get their relief when Yeah, you it's the same old story, right? Your time and money. You could spend thousands on other it's treatments possible, and though. costly pain pills and still uh, suffer with pain. Until now, if they're paying the bottom six offer, next to nothing, you pain know, therapy system for just four easy payments of sixty-four ninety-nine. You'll get Doctor Ho's pain therapy That's four the thing, pain system know, like, with four massage pads, the pad placement chart, and instructional DVD. But get this, Toby, call now uh, and we'll drop a payment. You pay only three easy payments Toby of Yoder $64.99. Says I have That's a 25% saving. Uh, Order today uh, and get the Gimlet soothing foot relief pads. Perfect for massaging your tired and sore feet. Great for boosting circulation. A $50 game. value, yours free. Wait, we'll also add the protective yeah, case kind of and lightweight therapy travel bag. Surprised by Hawkins, Hawkins Lever, too. You seem to be a little hard to walk through a strappy guy in front of that. We all know. Bonus, extra large flex stone pads and four so bonus massage pads. Him, though. He's a really a Joe Buddy old type of player. That's for sure. Now. This special promotion won't last forever and is Chromium. backed by Dr. Ho's 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, it's the perfect gift for yourself uh, and loved ones. Look, Don't wait. Call now. Did someone say free pizza? Okay, uh, Chromia. Right now, he's a left winger. Are you talking about him already? No. Uh, he's six foot, hundred eighty-one pounds. Still a commercial, by the way. Um, illegal sports teams are like vacuums. They suck. Oh, he's playing in Kingston. He's uh the from Slovakia. NHL draft they compare him to Tanner Pearson. Sports NHL twenty one. This year, you'll be able to pull off new digs and moves inspired by the league's most well right, innovators. He's ranked 32nd overall by the Hockey Recognized News, uh, 34th overall in by International NHL Scouting 21. Service. With the first pick in the 2020 NHL Draft, yeah, it New York seems Rangers like this is going to be a, a long Alexi day. Lafreniere. They're not even out of the second Lafreniere round yet. Was built and made to deliver in the biggest moments. I don't see anything but Sam, success. Who are they compared to Sam Palacio to? Going off to the dream of uh, uh, being drafted in the NHL I and uh, that, being but... able to uh, have an NHL jersey and uh, especially uh, a uh, New York jersey, it's, uh, it's really uh, unreal for me. It's unreal not only for Alexi Lafreniere and Sam also Colang for Rangers Colang fans, but also Colang 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 82 ranking right now. Six That's two, fantastic. Two He's going to hit the ice for the blue shirts. We hope perhaps Ranked January 1st. So by the hockey the news. Reasonable. Uh, uh, sorry, 41st by good. the hockey That's news. 61st by the international scouting. 36th by the Ducks. Yeah, no, we haven't. It'll be interesting. Anyways, back. Yeah. Can't wait. We are yeah, back. for a second when you showed me 82. You thought that was the number? Yes, it's like a beast. Looks <laughs> like a big game. Looks like a beast. This would be great. Let me tell you that. Whether that's a game or on the ice. Also great. Bill Daly, Deputy Commissioner. Here we go. Detroit. And we have a trade to announce. The oh. Detroit Red Wings have traded pick number 45 in the 2020 draft to the Los Angeles Kings 
in exchange for picks number 51 and number 97 in the 2020 draft. Okay. The Los Angeles Kings are on the clock. Okay, so the move is made. It was supposed to be the Red Wings, but they traded. So the Wings traded their 45th pick to LA for 51st and a 97th pick and they to Detroit. The pick because they moved around a little bit. So same rather, philosophy. Yeah, it's interesting to see everybody. What you know, teams like this pick in this spot. A guy um, we had and that they wanted folks, to move up for this, but a player we have in the top ten on our list this should be, is still available. They should be ready to pick this guy right away. If that's the case, that's and and that's why we're seeing so many trades right now. Yeah. It's a deep draft, and it's amazing how if you put five scouts together in a room and watch a game, they're all going to come um, up with a different a- a- angle on players. Now, you look at a game, you see the top top two players, let's say. So the top two players are gone in the draft so far. Now we're into that position where you're looking for your mid-tier players. You're looking for the second, third-line players, and we're, there's plenty of them still to be had in this draft, and that's why uh, everybody NHL feels Network should have a trade the, board the, up, the I Rangers would think. yesterday. They had to get that. I'm not going to take a look Jersey right now. I know if you look at uh, sports you know, nets, a pretty I think good this guy one. is going to take our guy. Let's make these deals. Um, very interesting. For instance, how this I mean, is, TSN uh, coming to shape in a very deep draft in 2020. And again, to reiterate, those are the names still available. Jan Mishak, Jeremy Poirier. Yeah, Jan is still Kromiak, available. Center. Perhaps one of these guys could be in the mix here. When you look at the are to and their feelings. I mean, that, uh, Maybe Meshach goes here. Sentiment, we've mentioned sentiment's always important. A D guy like Poirier could be one of those two. Hey, whoever it is, it's somebody. Like I said, that the team is sitting there and the director of their scouting is sitting there and telling their GM, this is a guy I can't believe is yeah. available. We got to move up. You got to do something. And we're seeing that constant jockeying right, right now back and forth. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Yes. Uh, and thank you for uh, uh, some of oh my God, uh, right? our yeah, rookies. Believe, Every our, GM our says that after the draft. Uh, for the subscribing, draft. I really this appreciate it. This is a little it. bit different than that. This is, I can't believe um, this player yeah, it's been is still two years here, I've been doing and this it's now, more so. believable. And we, and we, heard, that this, believable. we heard this draft was going to be deep um, for you know, more than just a couple of weeks. It's been I'm originally a Toronto. A I'm, I'm from down. Toronto. I'm originally a Maple Leafs fan. Oh, here we go. With LA. The 45th selection. Go ahead, Los Angeles. Bam, let's do this. The Los Angeles Kings are proud to select from the U.S. National Team Development Program and Minnesota, Brock Faber. Brock Faber. I like his first name. Brock Faber is a guy who began playing Sounds like a wrestler, doesn't four he? outdoor rinks in Maple Grove, Minnesota. Uh, his favorite moment, he says, when he gets to put on the Team USA jersey. So clearly he was fired up for good reason for a that. Defenseman. Defenseman. Red and shot GDP defenseman. In the USHL with Moore, the head coach at Wisconsin, Tony Granato. Brock Faber, another U.S. development player that uh, is one of those players that's a little bit under the radar because he's not all that fancy in his game. Simple, smart, great first pass. One of those yeah. defensemen that goes back for the puck, yeah, finds a, a way to beat the four check and get the puck up to his forwards. Great penalty killer, extremely coachable kid. Uh, his teammates love him. He's going to be one of those kids that continues to blossom. Uh, I'm going to put a big name next to him in Charlie McAvoy. I don't know that he'll ever get that offensive uh, uh, capabilities as McAvoy, but he's one of those guys at the back end that reminds me a lot of him because of the poise, uh, the way he gets the puck up to his forward. So I think this kid is going to be an outstanding player, uh, not only in college, but have a chance to be a, a really special NHL player. Well, thanks to Coach Granato, Hockey Hall of Fame inductee for the U.S. of 2020. Brock Faber going to the Los Angeles Kings, the 45th pick overall. E.J. Raddick, what else do you have on Faber? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, uh, Adnan, that when Tony said he's a coachable kid, talking to people around the program, they said, you know, they wanted him to commit to a more complete game. And sometimes when they ask, you know, a good skater or a talented young guy, because these guys get to that program, they're already really talented kids, to commit to the little things, to commit to other parts of the game, they're maybe not as excited about hearing that. But in Brock Faber's case, he is somebody that is committed to that. Talking to some scouts that watched him as well, they said he's a longer-term prospect. He's a young, one of the younger guys in this draft, the late August birthday so they see him as somebody that's going to take time to develop. He's kind of a tweener. One scout said to me, he could be maybe a Troy Stetcher on the upside. Troy Stetcher took some they time him a Troy and Stetcher. has become a good defenseman in this league. So uh, for Brock Faber, give him the time, let him develop, as is the case with all these guys. But uh, that is the upside on, on Faber, and they like his skating ability a lot. 
and obviously the LA Kings did do. They were able to, they wanted to trade up to get them. So we'll see how that plays out down the road. All right, AJ, thank you. We'll check back in a second. Two straight national development picks. Maybe Smolenic will make it a hat trick here. Well, let's hope so. It certainly would be a nice pick for whoever uh, eventually takes well, it. Well, Faber sure. doesn't look like he's in the top 100. I think the injuries um, have knocked him down. It's by not the really hockey surprising. news. Mm-hmm. Does it really matter to him in his career? No. Unless I missed something here. Chicago Blackhawks are currently on the clock. Has Brock Faber Black goes on the clock. pick to the Kings. So you look at Chicago overall as we take a look at the war room there as they're getting set once again. Yes, that's a war room. I was going to say, listen, that's social distancing. You've got real presence here. Everyone looks spread out. You're, you're working things. You've got a giant puck in the middle. You know what that really is? Having been a general manager and a member of the Board of Governors of the National Hockey League, it's almost the same setup you see at those meetings. Really? It's just yeah. this Chicago, this cavern meetings room. everywhere around yeah. the way it was set up. Yeah, Faber's. They definitely have a lot of space and kind of just I don't see the whole air. Um, United Center is big enough to do that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Everyone's table yeah. larger facilities. Yeah, the absolutely. National Hockey yes. League. Chicago oh, spares no. Yeah, I don't have yeah. much on yeah, Faber yeah, right now. If anyone wants to chime in and add to anything no else, surprise. won three cups. That they said about eleven years. Chicago Blackhawks right now about to make their selection at number forty-six. Let's go back to our deputy commissioner, Bill Daly, with this lunch. With the 46th selection in the 2020 NHL draft, go ahead, Chicago. The Chicago Blackhawks are proud to select from the U.S. National Development Team, Drew Camesso. Drew Camesso. Well, Drew Camesso, at six years of age, his teammate forgot his goalie gear, so Drew took over the netminding gig for good. How about that? Hockey hero, former NHL goalie slash oh, got ourselves a goaltender. Our first His goaltender since Tim Thomas. He also loves cheeseburgers like Timmy. EJ Raddick, what else do you have on him? Well, I like cheeseburgers too, as you can tell. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not, a, that's not a bad thing, but uh, Massachusetts kid. And uh, I think we're oh, he's another mass hole. Goaltenders awesome. go now because that's the way it usually goes in the draft. But, uh, you know, talking to uh, talk to Bobby Gepford, is a former goaltender, was U.S. So goaltender in the my 2003 World uh. Juniors. And, he was at Cedar Rapids and has seen a lot of these kids play, and he was a former goalie himself. He says he just thinks he's, he's an average-sized kid that does every little thing well, so he's not going to kind of blow you away with one particular skill. Damn it. But he likes his game. He thinks he does everything well. He thinks he's one of these kids that will need that development time. He likened him a little bit to Jimmy Howard, and he played with Jimmy Howard on that 2003 World Junior Team. Obviously, Jimmy Howard went to college, had a little time in the minors before coming to the National Hockey League. So he sees a similar development path for Drew. Time will tell, but uh, again, I say look out for some goalies now coming down the pike because we saw what happened with Askarov. He was far and away the best goalie in the draft. This is the next tier of guys, so they decide to go jump in on him here, Ah, the Chicago Blackhawks. We will see if other teams now decide that they need to grab a goalie if they like one moving forward. And to continue that point, E.J., about goalies, that is very apt. This was Chicago's pick for trading Robin Leonard. Of course, Leonard just signed that deal with Mm -hmm. the Vegas Golden Knights. So maybe this is the point, Reader, we start to see some goalies falling off the board. We may. I, I'm not sure in this draft the goaltenders are as high as we have seen in the past, so I'm not sure that this is going to start a trend of goaltenders. It usually does. CJ's absolutely okay, right. Anyway. When the goaltender goes, it's usually somewhere in the second round. We're right in the middle of the second round. So, Other teams say, oh, i got to get my guy, i got to get my guy. I'm not sure if goaltenders are ranked as high as some of the forwards and some of the defensemen that we've still got available. So I, I'm. We'll, we'll see how this plays out. It would... It would surprise me a little if it did play out in that regard with the talented forwards and skaters that we've still got available. There's a lot of good names out there. Yeah. I expect a guy like Joel Bloomquist, though, to be one of the first goalies selected in the second tier, if we do, in fact, go that way. So Drew Camesso there for the Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, it's interesting. <laughs> Just even the story, his mask, he's got Jim Craig on it, Uncle Sam, the Boston Skyline, and a St. Sebastian's logo, his high school team. So these, these kids get innovative, man. They're a lot okay. more passionate. I, I feel like they really kind Camesso of is ranked 80th overall, the overall by the hockey news, by the, the way. The identity these kids coming out. Yeah, it, it is. And he's going to be at Boston University, so that's going to be great for him, great for them. Uh, it's such a strange year. I can't tell you how many college players I've talked to in just the last couple of months and – in Minnesota, we have what's called the Beauty League. Generally, goes over the summer, and uh, there's been a lot of kids. Hey, you're going to have that Rudy League again? Ben Hankinson runs that. Oh, gonna, they're looking uh, for places he had, to play. In 27 and games, to stay he had uh, 920 save Not percentage. The same thing. Kick save in the uh, back in, in the USHL. To the 47th selection in the 2020 oh. NHL draft. Here's Trevor Timmins, the assistant general manager for the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal is on the clock. From the U.S. National Development Program. 
and BU, Luke Tuck. Luke Tuck. How about that reaction there? Luke Tuck. I mean, this the storyline here again. You like the bloodlines? Well, his brother Alex currently plays for the Vegas Golden Knights. Alex went to Boston College. Luke's going to play at BU. Luke used to joke with Alex. He'd go to BU and end up falling in love with their program. Twin sister, by the way, Leah, plays high school field hockey. So clearly a team and a family of athletes. And as you can see, the whole crowd there, I mean, they're fired up. Alex together. in the background right there, Admin. Any relation to the there, Vegas player? Is for the entire family. 6'2", uh, 203 uh, pounds, pounds shoots left. Tuck. Yeah, they're all smiling today, but when BC and BU get together, <laughs> there probably won't be too many smiles in that household. But uh, again, very, you know, a similar... In the, from the standpoint of the physical nature, big, strong well, guy, just Montreal like his brother, big, Luke, just the same players, way, 6'2", right? They don't have many of them, so. He's a left shot. Alex is a right shot. But the difference is this, really, that Alex Tuck, if you watch him play in the NHL, he is a big, strong, skilled guy. Him. Luke Tuck is not as skilled as his brother, but he's meaner. He's a nastier player. And the Montreal Canadiens, what are they looking for as they build their team? Bigger, stronger forwards to go with some of the smaller guys they have there. So he's a really nice pickup in that regard. Uh, one scout said he reminds him a little bit of a Blake Coleman. Recently with the Tampa Blake Bay Coleman? Lightning was a key Comparison? part of the Lightning winning a Stanley Cup. You need players like that, second, third line players that can really help you and move around your lineup a little bit. So the, the brothers, they have the similarities physically. But their games are different, and Luke is a, a nastier, chippier player. I did reach out to a couple of kids that play in that league that uh, have crossed paths with Luke Tuck, and they say the same thing. They said, boy, okay. he's a chirper. He's in the battle. He's in the Yeah, the hockey news compares him to Blake so, Coleman uh, as well. The Montreal Canadians are getting some Ranked 60th by, by the hockey news, 44th by the international scouting service. footwork in his hands. Not sure where the mean streak and the chippy just comes from. Maybe it's just from being a brother. But uh, and for Luke Tuck, it's an interesting selection. Montreal now back-to-back -back picks. Yeah, back-to-back oh. -back picks. It'd be interesting to see where they go with this next one. But you see some more reaction right here. And, you know, there's nothing better than, obviously, oh, Montreal's on the clock again. Like okay. Tuck, he's in the league. He's already got the big long-term contract with Vegas. He's been traded by the Minnesota Wild, technically, mm -hmm. via the uh, expansion draft transaction that transpired along with Eric Hollow when they went there. So this family knows the business. They understand what's in front of them. Now, for Luke, he's just got to get down to continue to work on his game, build it up, and hopefully he'll get a chance one day. I'd be surprised if he doesn't get a chance to be a professional player wow. at some point. Not necessarily this year or next year, but after that. Yeah, Canadians sticking with their uh, theme this week. They yeah. trade for Josh Anderson for Columbus, a bigger, more physical player. Mm -hmm. uh, they're answering, uh, the, the, I wouldn't say they're critics, but the noise out there that's saying we're not a big enough team, we need to be bigger, especially on the wings. So uh, this is a team that is looking to say we want to get bigger. take away this board say bye. And is going to fit into that bowl in a couple of years. Yeah, well, Josh Anderson certainly will do a lot to change that narrative. Yes. That's for sure. He is a big boy. As we saw a couple of years ago uh, with him just going up against Getting a guy a like too crowded in the spot. Yeah. Pretty was, strong guy in his own. Mark anyway, Bergeron so doing a nice job there. He's already been the first a round picks in some second. Why moment. not get to work on the forwards now? Of course, for Columbus and Max Domi, they get some desperately needed skill down the middle. Yeah. Well, Luke Tuck's favorite non hockey activity is fishing, also apparently a professional juggler. So we'll keep juggling all the activity now. Back to Bill Daly. How's the book? Can anyone read with the board? With the 48th selection, here's the Trevor board Timmons again. Oh, we got no volume. He got cut off. Sign. Sign. Cool. Thanks. Montreal Andrew. selected Jan Mizak from Hamilton Thanks, in Toby. the Ontario Hockey League. Chris. All right, Jan Misha. Look at the celebrations. Jan Misha. Here. Yes, they're fired up. A little bit grainy here, but the center of the Hamilton, it's exciting news. Listen, his older brother actually plays the NHL in 2019 2020 with Austin. He was named the captain of Litvinov for one game in March of 2019, which made him the youngest captain in the history of Extra League at the age of 16. He's a young man with a bright future, Sam Cosentino. Five foot ten center. I just want to touch on a point that we made pounds, about left. what Mark Bergman is doing with the Montreal Canadiens. And you go back a couple of years, and they were drafting smaller, skilled guys, and now they've gotten really big all of a sudden. Now they go back to a guy who's slight of frame, who fits that skill mold, a really good skater, a guy who was playing in the Czech Pro League. And after the World Junior, Steve Stales felt that they could get him over 
and get him playing with the young rebuilding Hamilton team. Well, that worked to perfection. This guy assimilated himself so quickly into the North American game. It was this it as if he were part of the team the entire time. You get a chance to play with Arthur Kaliev, who's an L.A. Kings pick, a true sniper, and all of a sudden you right. find that chemistry. You find a guy who's really good on the wing, but also with the ability to play center. When it comes to Meshack, three shorthanded goals to lead all Ontario Hockey League rookies, and he did it in such a short amount of time because he'd only played in 22 games. So uh, uh, 25 points in 22 games for this guy. Speed, skill guy, no problem going to the net. He, like many of these players, when you start to get into these rounds, a guy that I projected to be a little bit closer to the first just needs to build on that frame, work on his strength. But there's no question there's a lot to work with there. And I like this kind of ebb and flow we're seeing from Mark Bergevin. You get he's signed, the he's uh, ranked 27th he's got, overall by the you know, Hockey News, uh, 25th and overall by uh, uh, International Scouting Services. Allow for these kind of smaller skill type players That's to Yann feel Misek, free and easy uh, out there on the ice. Meshack won't get there right away, Misek, probably a couple Misek, years away. Six foot, five, five, seven, you mentioned pounds. the frame, 5'10", buck 75, but clearly he'll fill out a little bit. Buck 76! This is a guy that led all which are rookie shorthanded goals. And they compare him again to Adam Henrique. And Reno, this was the biggest name we had as far as on our rank. We had him at 24th, so he falls. Good sign here for much more pain. So they get a good play. It is a good sign, and I like exactly what Sam said. You build size, and then you bring your skill in. Good balance of both is always Zion the Zion Nebik hasn't, uh, if I'm saying that cor correctly, probably not. Now it's the 50th He selection. hasn't been picked yet. Here is think. Todd Button, the yeah. director of amateur scouting for the Calgary Flames. Calgary Flames are up. <laughs> Calgary Flames are proud to select from the University of Connecticut, Jan Kuznetsov. Another Jan. All right, Jan Kuznetsov. So according to College Hockey Inc., Kuznetsov had turned 18 in March, was the youngest player to play NCAA D1 hockey since Zach Wierenski back in 2014-15. But University he spelled the Michigan. lie. Okay. AJ, what do you have for us on Kuznetsov? Well, big, long, strong defenseman. Six foot four, 210 pounds. You've seen over the last couple of years with – you know, the teams that win with, with Tampa winning last year, with St. Louis this past week, I guess, last couple of weeks, St. Louis winning the year prior to that. Long Left shot, kind of in vogue again. And he's six a, foot four, he's got 209 pounds. Week. He played, uh, jumped in, came over from Russia, Ladies played at Sioux Falls, helped them win a uh, Clark Cup championship a couple of years back. Also was part of an under-17 uh, team for Russia that won a gold medal. But uh, comes over to the University of Connecticut, as you mentioned, at that one of the younger guys in college hockey. And scouts tell me he's kind of like a Jake. Another defenseman the he's Leafs will not get, really but he's a left shot. So. At, at yeah, he's a big boy. In the game. Defends really well. He's kind of looked at as maybe a three or four defenseman. But again, it's that size. And we're seeing more of that. This league, it, it's kind of follows trends over the years. We saw smaller guys were out and smaller guys were in. Detroit's now on it the seems clock. Like those longer defensemen are in again because of the fact that they are just able to defend well in the zone, hard to get around. Reader and Lots can talk about that. How some guys, these these long defensemen are just a handful. So the Calgary Flames, who haven't drafted a lot of defensemen when you go back over the last couple of years, add a guy like this to again. Slated in as kind of a second pair guy, but someone who was, uh, has obviously had some success early on in his career winning. Because Netsov was ranked 46th winning, uh, overall by the Hockey well. News, yeah, to pick up on that um, line, the 30th Flames overall by International Scouting, and they compare him to drafting. Brendan Dillon. It's been a while since they made a kind of a move here, so generally sometimes you see teams have trends and go away from them. For Calgary, a defenseman here, a little bit surprising. The pick is in, though. Back to Bill Daly. With the 51st selection, here is Chris Draper from the Detroit Red Wings. Oh, the Wings are taking their time. Hey, he's like, who am I picking? Who's the next pick? The Detroit Red Wings are proud to select centerman Theodore Niederbach from Falunda. Theodore Niederbach. Big day for Falunda. Theodore Niederbach, that's right, has a twin brother, Adam, who's also defensive playing in Sweden. His older brother, Ludwig, also plays in Sweden. What else can you tell us about a Raider? Well, I can tell you that the Detroit Red Wings have gone to Sweden again. <laughs> for another <laughs> pick. They vacation another every year. Cerebral. Hockey <laughs> IQ uh, is all over the scouting reports. For Theodore Niederbach. Interesting that Theodore missed a complete season with a knee injury. 5'11", 172 so pounds. Didn't set his right uh, shot pace of center. playback whatsoever. He was still able to play in the Super Elite League this past season. After missing a full season, had 48 points in those 40 games. 
And the Super Elite is uh, similar to the Ontario Leagues and the Junior Leagues. Uh, and for a young man, a teenager, to step up and be an over point a game player is remarkable. So he's had a fantastic season. He's a skilled player, plays a 200 foot game. We see that more and more coming from the European players, especially the players out of Sweden and Finland. They can play. And both sides of the puck, he's got excellent skating skills. He's got the, I already mentioned the hockey IQ. That's something that we talked about earlier. We talked about it yesterday, the Detroit Red Wings and Steve Eiserman. They are looking for those cerebral players, the players who can play a complete game, who think the game possibly on top or ahead of most players. So uh, for Niederbach, I think this is a another smart pick by the Detroit Red Wings. And a player They're on 50 a year when you're 16 years old of a hockey completely, you're wondering if you're ever actually 51. going to get back and to be able to play the game. Then you come back I'm and you step right in. And he has started off extremely fast. He took off. He had a fantastic season. And now he's a second-round draft pick of the Detroit Red Wings. The uh, upside is huge for Niederbach. I'd say. I, think it's a, I think it's a very good pick. Uh, and I think it just fits right in again with the Red Wings mold. And it's very key as well here for Detroit because it's the first of four picks on the next 15. So this is a I key think they have this right number now. Detroit, wrong. back to Bill Daly. To announce the 52nd selection in the 2020 NHL Apparently draft, there's no 51st Patrick pick. Alvin, director of amateur scouting. I didn't think I missed Penguins. anything here. This is weird. Pittsburgh Penguins are proud to select from Finland, Carpet, Joel Blomqvist. Well, as AJ had suggested earlier, sometimes a one goalie goes, maybe some more goalies will go. Third goalie now selected. I don't know. Is I, don't know what's, I messed up the numbering. I, I, the I first just checked my boards. And, I, and this guy was I'm in the 2019 2020 top goaltender in Junior A SM Liga. Lots. Uh, the number one note I have in my notes here, I had him about 80th on our I'm just going to go with my numbers. I think they're wrong. It was clear to me. And he wouldn't get selected higher. Why? Because he started the season thus far. Excellent for Cup Hat. He's played both games that they've played. He's got a 1.5 goals against, a 914 save percentage. And again, the environment has changed. He's playing on the junior team last year. Now he's up with the big team. He's getting an opportunity. He's making the most of it. And I'm certain that would have caught Pittsburgh's eye. This is a little bit of a surprise in the overall wow. ranking of where goaltenders were. Mm -hmm. It's not a surprise to me that he goes this early, though. Uh, I want to take a look at some of the best available players here. By the way, Penguins, in case you're just joining us, did deal uh, goaltender Matt Murray uh, got traded as well earlier. So goalie okay. down gets selected by the Penguins. Here. The best available players. So anyway. we had Meshack as our best available player who was Trying selected. He was right. out of the 24th. Joel, a and he was selected Joel just a few Blomfist. picks ago. So Jeremy Poirier, we got the defense in there at 28. Martin Kromiak, uh, Lucas Cormier as well. So there's a few guys here that, you know, at least by our projections, it's stuff a little bit here. So I'm curious where Poirier might go, the defenseman. That is a very good question. I think that he could go, he should go at any moment here, Reader. I just don't see why he hasn't gone yet, but that happens every year. Mm -hmm. You don't know what the individual draft list looked like. There's always something, though, and I could not get to the bottom of anything negative on him. No, I, I agree with you, and, and it's all personal preference. And again, we've seen three goaltenders go. That, to me, is a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. You always look at different things in the draft. Poirier not going yet. I mean, again, we're still close. The, the, the difference of the end of the first round to halfway through the second round is not that big a difference when you look at the draft team. The so um, for the goaltenders, so, so that, to me, I, I, we talked about it earlier, I just did not expect yeah, goaltenders other than Askarov to go in the second round. I thought they might be pushed back this year to the third round. So interesting trends as we move along. I thought someone would jump on Bloomquist just because of the start and that they could see he's going to go on and get great experience this year. And so far, although it's incredibly early, this is where you got to yeah, do Thanks for the tip there, guys. He looks really good. He looks like a different player. Carolina Hurricanes right now are on the clock. So take a look there in Raleigh, North Carolina. Invisalign, clearly a big hit as they're looking as uh, who they could select in here with their next selection. So I need a commercial. maybe Poirier might go here and you're looking for an offensive defenseman. Uh, trying to beef up that area of their department. Uh, once again, rounds two through seven we have coming for you here right now on NHL Network and on Sportsnet in Canada. And for all those listening on Sirius XM with Dave Reed, Brian Lawton, I'm Adnan Burke, AJ Raddick, Sam Cosentino, Elliot Friedman, Jamie Hirsch, all along for the ride today. And seriously, thanks to all of our technical team behind the scenes doing a phenomenal job. The fact that we're okay, here we go. Long right now, a virtual draft. I mean, it's been pretty seamless so far. Long fist. Yeah, really um, there's all kinds of uh, machinations you can go through in your mind of things that six could go one, wrong. Six foot one, two hundred five pound so goaltender. Very fortunate. Let's hope uh, that they that say he, here uh, he's technically continues. sound. But it's amazing goalie. to think that they're benefited from this draft being is having around the on world. I know the NFL did a great job in their draft.
first one to say that. They did not yeah, go around has the in 34 world. games. Yeah, we are literally um, fine kids. International experience. Car, uh, had a, a 931 save percentage. percentage. Let's go back to Bill Dale. With, with the 53rd selection, here is Darren York of the Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina is proud to select from Shawinigan the Q, QMJHL Vasily Ponomarinov. Vas so Ponomarinov is Ponomar a guy Ponomar who says he likes and enjoys walking in the woods. That's right, going in the forest. His inspiration to work hard, it comes from Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. That's Ponomaroff. right, the center from Shawinigan out of the queue. Cause, what do you have? A centerman shoots left 180 pounds. 49 points in 57 games last year and came over to compliment Maverick Bork, who we saw go in the first round <laughs> last night. But Ponomarev is a really interesting guy. His dad's a skills coach, and so he ended up coming over to Shawinigan as well. He's recently made his way there, and hopefully if things can co uh, continue to be played in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, he will progress. This guy is built. I mean, he is built like a small beer fridge. He is physical. <laughs> machine this guy so when it comes to the off-ice stuff there's no question he's dedicated to doing that obviously with his dad as a skill he's on the clock he's dedicated to doing that you know the one thing that's happened there the last uh, two years in Shawinigan, he's now in his uh, third coach they started off last year with a guy by the name of dan renault he was replaced by gordy dwyer and then this year ron Scholes is now the head coach in Shawinigan. so adjusting to different Zion coaches Nibic. can be a he's challenge especially for a player who has to adjust from coming overseas so I like the fact that this player's got a high skill set. He's built. You know the physical part of his game is going to be there without any issues, whatever. When I when I watch him, though, it just seems like there's that one thing missing. But Ponomarev, I think, will develop into that really good player down the road. All right, we'll see if that development continues. This is a guy who was third in the queue last week in terms of points by a rookie defenseman. Um, I've never Hockey News ranked him 36th overall. Uh, uh, International uh, Scouting uh, Services uh, has him at number 24. Experience. Uh, again, yeah, he's six foot, one hundred seventy-six pounds from Russia, I don't know about and he's that, compared man. to Philip uh, Deneau of Sam the Canadians. Small beer fridge, really? It's not even like a wine cellar. It's just by the hockey beer fridge. fridge. That's, That's how we do it back home. Right. Go back to Bill Daly with the fifty-fourth selection. Here's Brent Flair of the Philadelphia Flyers. <laughs> from HV seventy-one. The meal, Andre. Right, yeah, I'm familiar with the Arizona. Andre, why they got punished and everything. The I just the Flyers. He's an all super elite defenseman scoring in 2019 20. This was after Matt Niskan, by the way. Just all right, uh, Emil Andre. Yeah, they do. And, and Left this shot. Time, we've seen a lot of big five defensemen nine, go. This guy's not pounds. a big defenseman. At five foot nine, 180 pounds, he's on the smallest or slighter side. But the skill level, there's nothing smallish about that. <laughs> Reader, he's a very finesseful defenseman. He's got great mobility. He's impressive with all the tool set he has. There's a lot to like about this guy. And even though he's smaller, he's now officially playing with men. He's played four games already this year for Chopin. That's pretty darn good. Now you're going to see where he really fits. Obviously, Philadelphia feels pretty good about right what they've seen and really right. going here to select him at this number. It's an impressive reader. You look at the Flyers. This goes back to when Ron Hextel was running things. All the defense when they got, whether it was Provorov, Gostaspair, Haig, Sanheim. Uh, as I mentioned, this could just announce his retirement. They did sign Justin Braun to a two-year deal. But this could be an example of Philadelphia saying, all right, again, not stepping in right away. Yes. So let's build up some more defensemen. You never have enough good you, defense. You can never, absolutely. All teams that win. I mean, last the 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 clock again. you need defensemen. They go out and pick up Bogosian and Shed. Now, you may not be saying that those two guys are top four defensemen, but they're depth defensemen. They turn out to be extremely important for a I do need an assistant, win. yes. Well, you need to start with those Unfortunately, players. Unfortunately, my wife's at work, them, and she and doesn't really watch draft. hockey. You start drafting players. That's why all. you come <laughs> to Calgary. Not having a first-round pick in the, as a defenseman for was it 15 years? Yeah. Extremely surprising, especially with the depth of defense that they've acquired through trades and, and growth of, of players through the draft. But uh, And in my mind, if you're going to win, you have to start goaltending and defense. That's where it starts. And uh, I think we're seeing it in Philadelphia. We've seen some tremendous upside for young defensemen in Philadelphia. And we'll, there's even more to come. Jimmy McCallum, by the way, would not be happy with the fact okay, that so, Okay, so um, Emil Andre is ranked 43rd so overall by the Hockey News, uh, 53rd so overall by International Scouting exactly Services. And Richard they compare Bill him Daly. to Tyson Berry. With the 50, 55th selection here is Chris Draper from the Detroit Red Here Rebels. we go with Detroit again. The Detroit Red Wings select from the Portland Winterhawks, Cross Annis. 
across. So Hannes, Hannes is the pick. This is a guy, big story. Hey, he's not Swedish. Up. What's he up with that? He lived about a half hour north of Dallas, left with a mini stick uh -huh. as a kid, and while in the stroller played hockey fetch with his dog. He was ready to go as a kid, Lon. Let's go. Yeah, it's incredible. One of the best names in the draft, I might <laughs> add. Highland Village, Texas, of all places. <laughs> Look at that big smile there. Congratulations to him. He's a guy that really made huge strides this year. He's got dynamic qualities. He can make big plays. Left shot, left uh, winger, to be, six foot one, hundred sixty-seven pounds. To put it in perspective. Think David Perron, but a left-handed mm -hmm. shot. A guy with a lot of skill that can stick him on the phone booth. But this is going to be really interesting to see how this one plays out. The Detroit Red Wings have got themselves certainly a guy that you project maybe one day with that type of skill level can be in your top six. That's a long way off right now. San Jose is on the clock. To see uh, the state of Texas being represented. Yeah. This is quite a big draft. jump for Cross, I might add, in terms of where certainly our research had him pegged. We had him at 94th, so this right. is a big jump. You're right, yes. Ross. And, and to Rieger's point about Texas, I mean, yes. listen, uh, Poland's now by the Texas area. Well, it's most important WHL. Uh, Seth slash Caleb Jones, Nick Perno. So there's been a few guys there that Poland's done a good job of acquiring Texas talent, and then they go to the National Hockey League. The Red Wings so far, you see their selection so far. Anis, Anis. We got Lucas Raymond, William Valinder, Nieder Bach, and now Cross Honest. So Honest. good collection as far as a uh, couple of left like wings. University for the Red Wings there. Yeah, they're definitely mixing it up. They like to go all over the globe as we continue. Go back to our Deputy Fisher, Bill Daly, at the podium. The pick is in. With the 56th selection in the 2020 NHL draft, here is Doug Wilson, Jr. of the San Jose Sharks. Hannes, can't find him. From the Western Hockey Sorry. League, Tristan Robbins. Tristan well, Robbins. Dad, Trevor actually played for Saskatoon, was also a goaltender, signed as a free agent with the Sharks in the early 1990s. He could have backed up Archer's Urbay or Wade Flaherty, never actually made it into a game. His right, grandfather, Blinger. Don, inducted into the Manitoba. 5'10", 176 in pounds. Right Those shot. are his parents and grandparents. How about the player himself, Cos? <laughs> Well, you know what, uh, Dan? Trevor said, hey, listen, man, you're not playing goal. Sorry, not going to work for you, son. So Tristan <laughs> Robbins said, no problem, I'll play out. I interviewed him last year. I absolutely love this guy. And when you talk about a sleeper pick, I do believe Tristan Robbins is that pick. So let's go back to what happened with Saskatoon two years ago. Kirby Doc's there, unbelievable player. He gets drafted. Sorry, guys, it's hard to keep Chicago. up with the uh, He goes to Chicago. And, the yeah, chat here. be back in Saskatoon. Mitch Love expecting him to get him back in the lineup. Well, he starts to play pretty good, big body guy. The pause happens. Now it looks like he's on his way to start him. So in Saskatoon, they had that number one center spot open. Guess who filled it? This guy right here. And he scores 33 goals and plays a, a physical game. He gets in your face a little bit. He's got that smile. But meanwhile, he wants to choke you out. And here's the type of guy who has no problem going to the net, going to the dirty areas. Fun-loving character guy. A little bit of hockey in the background with his dad, Trevor, of course. So I really like this pick. I believe this guy's a sleeper. All right, good stuff there. And Tristan Robbins, good selection there. And excellent insight there from Kaz. Uh, Montreal Canadiens going to be back on the clock here momentarily. So the Canadiens are now very busy. Interesting on his perspective there, Rob. Yeah, I love him either. Might not come. And not in the top uh, 100 by the hockey team. Yeah. The team picks him up. Yeah, it's just great to see that type Montreal of improvement from a player. Not as big as Jack Quinn, albeit, who went mm -hmm. from 12 goals up to <laughs> 52. Know, 52. Pretty, yeah. Sounds like a pretty 40. big jump. Yes, exactly. But for Robbins, pretty big jump for him as well. Yeah. It's really special and unique. Mm -hmm. And as far as the team that's busy right now, the Montreal Canadiens, as we take a, a look at what they're going to be the board here. about to doing as the pick is in, we take a look at okay, the board here again and just recap where some of these selections have been. The Montreal Canadiens, you know, we we're looking at earlier here, Raiders, as far as the fact they're getting some strength, getting some size, and they went with a smallish player in their last selection. So it's maybe a little bit of yin and yang here. That could be the approach for Mark Bergeman moving forward. Joe Blomkvist is compared to Henrik Blomkvist, so apparently he's a year players. or two just away can't have all to go into the defense. America, you have to have a mix of everything. I mean, you look at the Stanley Cup champions. Yeah. This is like a league though, yeah. that loves, it's a copycat league. You love to do what the team that won. You Let's let's mimic what they've done. Well, the Montreal Canadiens, yes, they've got some bigger players coming in. They get Yannick Toby, Nisak, possibly. I mean, who knows? Player playing the goaltenders, job. right? It'd be so. interesting to see where they go with this. I'm not sure that they're worrying about goaltending. I don't think I kind of caught up with the chat. Uh, in Montreal oh for a few years. Saying that, they'll probably take a goaltender. It's a goddamn miracle. But uh, I... I you develop for the future. That's, what, that's what this draft is all about, especially rounds two through seven. You're looking two, three, four years down the road. When are these players going to be able to come in? Who are they going to be able to step in and replace? Uh, and uh, if you take the best players available, not uh, only get players ready to step in, you have also people who have just joined us. that you might uh, be able to switch and trade. Welcome. 
and thank manipulate you so much. your lineup with as you move uh, forward. Thank you to so, all my uh, subscribers. Let's see, this is great. This is um, a, a oh, Frank's back. Hey, what up, man? From Montreal with this many picks um, in the second. All right, we know we're live in Canada. I just want to ask anyone who's Toronto, new to the chat or new to the second, channel, please uh, don't feel shy about, about transitioning, uh, subscribing, Lightning, liking, worry, certainly hitting that notification uh, bell. I will strike, have Patreon going up in the next team. couple weeks. Make the transition so that's exciting to you. Harder to play against. I like to do this as a job. What do we hear about the Toronto Maple Leafs? That'd be fun. They want to be harder to play against. Work from home. So they're trailing them just a little bit. They have kind of the same or similar skill set for all you Toronto fans. If they can pull that off, they could be your next Stanley Cup champions. But it's very interesting wow. to see cyclically how things go. That's what was old is now in and vice versa. There's no doubt that what Tampa Bay was able to accomplish this year, and you have to credit Julian Breesbaugh. He did an incredible job. That took a lot of guts and a lot of gumption to step up, trade first round picks for guys that traditionally didn't get traded in an era where first they round said picks Toronto. Were more I was like, what? What's ever. going on? But without making those moves, I'm not sure the Lightning would have won this year when you think about yeah, certainly Blake Coleman and Barkley. A lot of people are talking about Toronto just getting for Blake defense. Coleman. I'm pretty sure he got the uh, the second goal in a two nothing win in the game, <laughs> exactly. in the, the final Stanley Cup. So, but that that's the way the Montreal's game is on the clock, and, and it, the uh, game then goes Boston, like that. then it goes Toronto, in, in then LA. Like, hey, Tampa Bay had all the skill in the world, but they lost to Columbus in four. We need to make changes. We no, just can Toronto continue. do that? No, no, mm. no, reader. That's the question. Can the Toronto Maple Leafs? That's, that, that's Toronto. a huge question. Like There's a few teams in that, in that situation. I bring that up because as we sit here, people are texting about William Nylander's name out there floating around. Well, you have well, to ask. A, there's the Nylander trade happen. talk. Right. But for the but Toronto Maple Leafs, surprising. will they make changes? Back. That's up to the general manager and Kyle Dubas. But you you have seen changes go around. The Boston Bruins kind of got that going. And these, you see the Montreal Canadiens, they're now changing from skill. They're bringing in some size that they need to address. We need to address uh, more than just puck over and players. And uh, if the Toronto Maple Leafs want to do that, they're going to have to change some of their assets to bring in different type of players. They're not going to find it in the draft right now. You're not going to find players right now to step into your lineup. But uh, moving forward, teams are going to have to make those changes. When they look at the West, you Colorado, speed, size, skill. Dallas gets the Stanley Cup final. They were stricken with injuries. Depth that you talk about from the draft. Depth of players coming in. Again, solid defense, speed and size up front. So we'll see how it works out. But for the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, they are they are a work in progress. And uh, you, you you mentioned the Stanley Cup with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I wouldn't quite put them. I wouldn't quite put them in the same sentence right now yeah. with Stanley with Stanley Cup. Oh, what a line! I, I they're, they're, still, that they're still there's still a ways away in my mind to get to the Stanley Cup. I think the competition, especially in the East, is ramping itself up, and um, the Leafs are going to have to try to keep up with that. It's right. interesting. We, we filled our quota. We talked about the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, you listen. did. You brought it up. From, from, Check the box. From Etobicoke to Mississauga. They're going wild right now. They're better. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That. Well, it's another part. Ottawa is the team in Ontario right now to talk about. Let's be serious. <laughs> well, they have, um, Ottawa they have the of the team to talk about. Again, with the cap, and you know this. Listen, $11.6 million is going to Matthews, right? $11 million is Tavares. Uh, Mitch Marner is ten point nine million. Nylander, you mentioned that's about six point seven. Highest paid forward. Yeah, like so that's where the Nylander name because yeah. you go listen. I'm not trading one of these guys. And Marner, you might want to move, but it's too much money. So Nylander could be in play. When you look at the you money, you can box yourself out if the allocation is not proper throughout your life. Right. We're finding that out, and it's been really unfortunate to be fair to the Toronto Maple Leafs that unfortunately they also have, have Casey DeSmith, and all of a sudden the salary cap is um, flat, pretty good. even more pressure on them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not the them ideal, but he put up some have decent to numbers a little bit more risk so to get to where they want to go. That's, pull him that's up not a bad decision. Be that's Smith what's called and, bad um, luck. For a and lot Jerry of teams, looks like not just Toronto. It's a good point. When you look at the economics of it right now, I mean, listen, we're looking at flat tax. I mean, $81.5 million or so, that's the salary cap. Because there's no fans, it's not going to increase, at least for next season. Back to Bill Daly. Right. So we have a trade to announce. Oh, trade. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens have traded pick number 57 yep. in the 2020 NHL draft to the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for pick number 124 in the 2020 draft and Tampa's second round pick in the 2021 draft. That means Tampa Bay is now on the clock. All right, so the trade Tampa details Bay. here is the Montreal so, Canadiens. Tampa gets this pick, pick and Montreal gets the 124 second round pick. The Tampa and Bay uh, next year's to make second a round pick. The 57th pick. Really? So, interesting. The Stanley Cup champion. Okay. Canadian champs decide to make a move here. And again, found a guy they think is available and want to make a move here. Okay. When you look at Tampa, you assess their needs. 
where they could be going here launch. Uh, Montreal has so many picks. Like, like, today well. they don't have any needs. <laughs> frankly, we just saw what they did. They but, need a bigger beer for you. <laughs> yes. Right, Sam? But, but things may be changing fast <laughs> at Tampa Bay Lightning. That is a fluid <laughs> equation right now. I got my <laughs> Toby Fleury. Yeah. Padres here. <laughs> Wouldn't that be <laughs> amusing to see him go back to Pittsburgh? Right. Let's talk right. about the Tampa Bay Lightning, seriously, because there is a lot going on with this team. They did win the Stanley Cup. And in the salary cap era, we've seen it in the past with teams like the Chicago Blackhawks, where you kind of have to pay a toll to do that. Yes, you will. You have to be able to potentially reorganize, uh, reallocate your salary cap dollars. The Tampa Bay Lightning are an embarrassment of riches. Any Leaf fans out there? Um, they have what do you think Toronto might pick at 59 <laughs> This guesses. will be a challenging time. Now they jump into the draft because no matter what happens through this time for them, the world will continue on. The National Hockey League is going to continue on. They're going to need to get back to restocking their cupboards so that they can continue with a long run and not be a one and done as a Stanley Cup champion. Interesting what's going to happen yeah. because they decided to make that move. That was obviously the key. So the Lightning decided that they found a guy they identified, wanted to select him. Who is that person? So many Let's players go um, gone completely off the To make Tampa's pick here. here is Al Murray, the assistant general manager of Al right, Tampa scouting Bay. for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa Bay Lightning select from Spokane of the Western Hockey League, Jack Finley. Jack Finley. That's right. Jack Finley gets selected and a whooping and a hollering and for good reason. What a special day for Jack Finley and the Finley family. His father, Jeff, played 708 NHL games. And if you want a special skill, I'm not sure Sam Codson's here to even do this. I can tell you, Jack Finley can ride a unicycle. 18, 6'6", six foot six, six foot right? six, 213 pounds, shoots right. You know He's what I mean? I do with a little weight vest. So no wow. problem there. That's interesting. Tampa picked a player. That size. I'm on my way to the beer for a big one. Too. That's 19 goals, 38 assists, that's plus 32 in 61 games in the WHL. They got to raise the roof over there at the Finley House. I mean, this guy's Man Mountain. At last check, he was 6'5", 213, and no doubt. With all the time off, he's been able to get bigger Frickin and stronger. My goodness, Holy cow. they're going to have to get a car with a sunroof so he can drive down the street. But you talk a little bit about his dad, Jack, who's obviously a very good NHL player. All kinds of resources in that, in that area. They've been around hockey their entire six, lives. Six, their dad's scouting with the Winnipeg Jets. And so when it comes to Finley, yeah, the point production was really good. Working on his face-offs, a guy who's dedicated to the craft. But what's interesting to note is, He's one of these kids who's still growing into his body, learning what it's like to have long limbs and long legs and still trying to figure out. And when I talked to him at the prospects game in January, he said, I, I kind of want to stop growing because I want to be able to catch up to my body. Yet when you look at what's happening with the big centers down the middle of the ice, we saw it with Quentin Byfield yesterday. No doubt that's coveted. Al Murray, who lives in Florida, Florida the Toby. assistant general manager for the Tampa Bay Lightning, who, of course, Toby loves to be out the road and do his scouting, identified Finley as being that guy, that big centerman down the middle of the ice. They did pretty good with the guy in the back end in Tampa Bay, raising the cup in Victor Hedman. So a nice pick here with Jack Finley. Got to love the NHL bloodlines with his dad, Jeff. No doubt about it. Coswell said younger brother Mason playing minor midget also for Okanagan. So good stuff there for the Finleys as they get the selection there. The Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, one of the youngest players in the draft, too. It's amazing with that size. Now, quick, Rear, name me one center that's been truly elite at 6'6". Six, six. Mary Lemieux? Maybe I have him at 6'5". A little smaller yeah. than 6'5". I don't think we've ever had a guy. It's a rhetorical question. Of course, no, John Balavo. That doesn't mean we won't. Four. No, you're right, though. That doesn't mean we won't. How big athlete, 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 Ross? Six, four. Adam Creighton? Remember Big Crates? Yeah, Crates a big I'm man. talking I don't know if about six, six. really elite. Oh, no, yeah. 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 We haven't seen it because it is a challenge, yeah. but that does not mean it'll happen. The way kids are training nowadays, absolutely. Like there was no Zidane Chara before there was Zidane Chara. And the reason you ride unicycles is for balance. You yeah. can laugh about no, it. No, you can laugh about it. Try do it. It's difficult. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, Sam can do it, but it, not everybody else can. <laughs> well, nobody has. But, yeah, like, yeah. but that's part. That's part of the, today's training. It's not all about being bigger and stronger. It's about being. Yeah, he's big. So all right, let's get your dexterity. Let's get things going. Let's get your balance going. And it's the toughest thing for a young man. You see a lot of young athletes, and they're tall, and they're they haven't grown into their body. And it's six foot six at eighteen years old, and you see one of the younger guys in the draft. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the ceiling, they don't even know where the ceiling is on this young man. So uh, that's tremendous. And the abilities that these young guys have, I mean, you imagine a center at 6'6 six, six coming in, filling out. What would yeah. that put you at? Maybe about 230 pounds? Oh, ben, ben, Finley was a big guy. Finley's like, off the you, charts, you come in, too. You start filling out 6'6, six, six, moving on a stick in a face-off. 
I, and I, being I able to drive the middle in today's that's game, with the, speed, the hand skills that all these young two, players three, have, four. that's a... Uh, no, we're going to see it, Reed. I'm telling four, you, we six, will see seven. it. And I say that because of a guy who looked no further than Kemp Bay are Lightning in their best so defense. Far. No, no, they weren't no, even in the top in the For different reasons than Victor Hedman. Let's go back to Bill Daly. Caps jersey, I've got a... The 58th selection here is Ryan. I don't have many jerseys, unfortunately. Director of Amateur Scouting for the Boston Bruins. They're pretty expensive. I got most the of these all in one shot. To select from the Green Bay Gamblers of the USHL Boston. defenseman Mason Lowry. Defenseman Mason Lowry for Boston. All right, so Mason Lowry. This has been a surprise here as far as uh, our scouting was. By the way, I want to go back to the point you're making about elite centers. My friend Sean Cameron watching, by the way. He pointed out Keith Primo, 6'5". So maybe that's one of the conversations. There you go. Keith but Primo, not 6'6". Six, 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 that point. was my point. <laughs> to your point. That's my real six. main point yeah. for I'll Jack his name. is it? It's going to happen. I'm not saying he's going to be the oh, first. Oh, wow. Guy. We're going to see really differently. Uh, Nick Bukestad, just for the record, mm. is 6'6". Six, six. Now, uh, has he developed into an elite, not elite. No. center? No, but yeah. there, there's always the fallback. Interesting. One thing about Nick is he is an excellent winger, in my opinion. That was much yeah, easier uh, for him playing center. So uh, I just think times are changing. I love the way Tampa is stretching the boundaries. So the Boston Bruins here select. And again, this is a surprise for us at number 58, Mason Loray is the guy there. Mason so Loray? that's a selection for Boston. When you look at what they're trying to accomplish here in the draft. Uh, listen, we'll get to Mason in a second. I, I love the fact uh, we've been focusing a lot here. We just saw with Jack Finley. Bloodlines here, right? Like father, like son. Sometimes like grandfather, like son. All right? There's sisters, there's brothers. Everybody's in the mix when it comes to hockey being passed down in these two great countries that are being broadcast right now, but also around the world. Look at some of these names and where they Blind could be caps. as far as their brothers and other families as well. So you got Foundy, his brother Liam. You got Luke Tuck, his brother Alex, Something of never, course, yeah. playing for Vegas. Michael you. Benning. This is a big one. Dad, Brian Benning. His brother's Sorry. Matt Benning. His uncle's Jim Benning. Vancouver GM. Ryan Rolson. Remember Brian Rolson, that great shot for the Minnesota Wild, played 17 seasons. Danny Waite, his father, Doug Waite, played 19 NHL seasons. We've got him uh, a little bit later rounds, perhaps, for the Mason Langer runner as well. Uh, his father, Jimmy Langer, the two-time Stanley Cup champion, he could be uh, a later selection as well. So it's always interesting. You look at some of these names of the past. Of course, you follow hockey. We love hockey. So, oh, that's his kid. Yep, that's the one. Langer, brother. That makes sense. Um, we will get to those selections as far as the bloodlines in just a second. Once again, the Boston Bruins just made their pick. I did see him play last year. Which one? Checking Are you guys going to talk about Mason? Mason, Mason Lowry? He was a big, Lowry? big guy. What's... Nothing really jumped out. Obviously, the Boston Bruins felt differently. But to be fair to him, he was their second leading scorer on the team as a defenseman. So it's impressive. You know, when, when you look at it, these are the Boston Bruins do a great job. And Jamie Langerbrunner, who you just mentioned, you know, a guy that would be involved in this type of stuff as yeah. well. Good for you to at least have a little bit of info on him. Let's go to Bill Daly. To announce the 59th selection in the 2020 NHL draft, yeah. here's John Lilly, the director of amateur scouting for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Can't find Laurie anywhere. The Toronto Maple Leafs are proud to select from a sot of the Finnish Elite League, Ronnie Hervonen. Ronnie okay, Hervonen. Like the stories of the day. The right? Finnish Elite League. Ronnie Hervonen. We've seen a lot of these guys He's and their captain reaction where they are, their friends and family. Ronnie Hervonen is playing hockey right a now. Left so shot, 5'9", 164 pounds. Across. Hey, by the way, Ronnie, you just got drafted in the National Hockey League Where the, the defense, Toronto man? Maple Leafs. Where? <laughs> he didn't score a goal. just sitting on the bench. No, he just got drafted, guys. I'm telling you. This is a guy who finished second among the under-19 league of skaters in scoring in 2019-2020. His dad, Timo, played 15-plus years of pro hockey in Finland. His dad also coached 10-plus years. What about this selection here, lots for the Leafs? Yeah, Timo was a coach, and he's a good all-around player he kind of reminds me in my notes i had scribbled down a michael granlin type player he's a smallish centerman but he's got great skill and obviously michael granlin was a guy that the minnesota wild picked 11th overall way back when i saw him that year i believe it was 09 and okay uh, high, what the hell skill. yeah this guy reminds <laughs> let's me see if i can him. find this he's guy. not the biggest guy right now though and there's going to be some of that maturity that just happened so the player looks light but he's got all kinds, all Am types of skill, fan? all types of IQ. I like the team. Excellent. Um, they are like the one of my favorites, per se. To me, I, mean, I was very right happy to see Ovi win the cup. It, it hasn't been as big a draft as we've seen the last few, but I believe that we're getting the most well-rounded players routinely coming out of there. And you played with some pretty darn good ones in Dallas. I think a year elected and a guy like that was as rounded as any player you probably played with. Yeah, I still say that the, the, the young Finnish players coming up are probably the most well-balanced top to bottom 
as far as the skill level from elite skill to uh, defensive play. Come the 200-foot game, we've seen it more uh, in the last couple of years in the Swedish. Okay, the he's on the leagues, charts. Thank the God. Having to develop that skill. But in Finland, they've always come as full 200-foot players once they're about 14 years old. It's pretty much in green. This is how we play. Tough way to play against. And uh, This guy never so had a bad of so The games I watched of his, he did not have a bad night. He was a very, very tight band, very consistent. That's exactly what you're pointing out. That's exactly what I'm saying for a guy like this. Going wild right now in Scarborough as the Leafs make that selection with that finished player. Well, nobody worked harder. Herculean effort by Jamie Hirsch when it came to the NHL draft yesterday. I, I last check, it he's got a high players. hockey so IQ, can score in and or dish, a size and skating are drawbacks, not talent. Oh, yeah. I, I'm definitely not the expert here. Gervonen. I just asked the question. So I'm going to ask EJ the next question, and it is, who are center, you looking forward to seeing their name called here shortly? Well, uh, Sean Farrell is one of the guys on my list that uh, I'm looking forward to see. Chicago Steel player um, in the USHL. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Ryan Hardy has done a really nice job putting that group together. They've got a couple of players that uh, oh, already we've got Lenny so uh, arguments Rishon happening. Was drafted uh, on night one late in the first round. But uh, Massachusetts kid and uh, someone who was looking to go to Harvard at some point, he was going to enroll, but with all that's going on. He's enrolling and taking online classes. Uh, going to stay LA's and next. play with Chicago this year. Okay, it's it's Ottawa, Tampa, and in Detroit. The USHL. So, uh, you know, someone that talking to scouts say he's a kind of a Chris Drury type player. You know, and I and I when I make that comment, and the guys I'm sure inside will, will would agree with me is that you know we're just trying to give the viewer an idea of what the player is. We're not saying this is going to be the next Chris Drury because those type of players they've had a lot of success. They've had great careers. Not easy to yeah. do what they did. But uh, when we look to try to give you an insight on who the guy is, he kind Detroit. of plays that kind of game, a smart player and someone that has been playing with really good players in that Chicago organization. So uh, looking forward to seeing him as well. And and one, I got to go to the notes for this one. It's a little bit later in the draft. Dmitry Zoldeev, a Russian player and talking to different scouts that, uh, that have seen him play. And again, I don't like to uh, make it seem like I've seen these guys. We're here doing NHL now day to day. We go out, we talk to the scouts, we watch video, we do as best we can. But a couple of different scouts told me they really like this player. And I'll be curious what NHL team steps up and grabs and just said he's really in the battle, smart, can play any way you like to play. So sometimes oh, those players go. in Russia, it depends on what the scouting staffs look like, how much they value those players. But we've seen many of them come over to this league and play very, very well for many, many years. So that's a name to keep an eye on as well. And he's probably currently playing over in Russia. We know a lot of guys overseas are able to play hockey right now, whereas a lot of guys over here are not. They're still in the midst of this pause. So what benefit do you think that'll give the players that are able to continue uh, playing meaningful games during this? Well, it gives, especially with this being moved right into early October where we are now, when guys are playing games, that's available to watch. So, uh, you know, people have been training, people have been working. It gives everybody a little bit more time. And guys have moved up. We've seen that already. We saw it last night in night number one with a, a couple of surprises of guys that moved up. And I think that's probably, I would say that's largely due to the fact that there was extra time for the players to uh, train. Okay, but so... Also Anna's asking about uh, see, and, Emil you know, Andre. Tom Fitzgerald yesterday from the Devils. Uh, and picked, I, and uh, I thought it's fourth overall by the Flyers. He's ranked 43rd. The general managers are overall much by um, with the this Hockey draft News. Than they normally would be. Uh, but by 53rd overall the uh, by the, the International Scouting Services. Really dig in and do he's compared. Uh, he's a left shot defenseman. I do think that they would be compared to Tyson Berry. A little bit more of a say. Five foot nine, hundred eighty-three tied up with playoffs and other things, and don't have a chance to see these players. Yeah, especially teams like the Kings that haven't played a game since March, Correct. and they are and the Devils who we talked to Tommy exactly. Oh, yeah. So the Kings looks are like he'll at least be um, a couple of years what away. They make. Let's go back Minimum. to him. Jamie, thank yeah. you. EJ You're never welcome. apologized for using notes. You know, host of these teleprompters. <laughs> we don't know anything. Just put the prompter. I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, we'll come back with plenty more draft coverage here on NHL Network and on Sportsnet. <laughs> International so we got a commercial happening here. Um, I'm just trying to answer some questions. Like, yeah, Register your kids for the Team Rogers Community Draft. 
for a chance to get access to pro athlete mentors and $150 towards league fees. Apply now at rogers.com slash get drafted. Oh my! Free delivery is. Uh, Fred Lindbergh! I mean, Bernie, please! Lapierre. Free delivery is back at Little Caesars! This is so exciting! Order with us online and get yours today! Delivery, delivery. This is a no name commercial for Simple Check products. Lapierre? You don't mean left for. for simple for, Check yeah, simple you mean is shown on no name products made without the use of 10 ingredients. Like. Look for it on over 500 products, such as peanut butter. What's holding in here? Uh, Lapierre, um, pick 22nd overall take the uh, by the Caps, um, ranked 28th by no the Hockey News, 17th overall in inter by international scouting, <laughs> and he was compared to Alexander Barkov, so obviously he, he's got um, a really... Uh, really high potential, high ceiling there. Since you last bought a car. With the Ford Traded Upgrade event, you can get a trade-in bonus for your old vehicle to use towards a new 2020 Ford Escape. It also means you get driver assist features. Marco. Talk about Marco. And the latest tech. During the Ford Trade and Upgrade event, get a great financing rate. Plus, eligible customers get a trade-in bonus on most new 2020 Escape models. Put some fresh in your step with a free footlong. Right now, buy a footlong sub on the Subway app and get a second one free. Order ahead. Pick it up quickly and safely. Only at Subway. Sportsnet Central. Nightly on Sportsnet. Um, is it possible he is... <laughs> You're watching our NHL Draft 2020 coverage presented by EA Sports NHL 21. Let's go back to Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly. And we have a trade to announce. Trade! The Los Angeles Kings have traded pick number 60 in the 2020 draft to the New York Rangers in exchange for player Leas Anderson. That huh. means the New York Rangers are on the clock with the 60th pick overall. Okay, Rangers trade right, with LA for that 60th pick. So here it is, the trade details. So uh, Leas Anderson makes the move as the Kings acquire that forward and the Rangers acquiring the 60th pick. So interesting oh, really? Here, um, the Kings Rangers, acquire Leas Anderson? Yeah, Leas Anderson, okay. obviously. Well, uh, we know about the issues happening there with New York, so in it's good they moved on from them, I guess. Overall pick that came over from the Arizona Coyotes when they transferred Eric Stepan to that See, organization. Like something with him. Sometimes you just need a fresh start, reader. You need a little bit of a do-over. I think that's from. So there might be a Polari Anderson <laughs> trade in the We're about at that stage right now <laughs> in, in the second uh, round. But Elias the Anderson, this should be a great now. opportunity just to change the scenery. Uh, hopefully, he'll feel better about things in the New York Rangers. They get a pick out of it. All right. Speaking of that pick, the pick is in. Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly. The pick is in. To announce the 60th selection, here is Gordy Clark, the Director of Player Personnel for the New York Rangers. New York Rangers select from the Windsor Spitfire, William Cooley. William Cooley? <laughs> William Cooley. He was still on the board. Boys to men fans, because it's Cooley High Harmony right now. Look how fired up that family is, huh? By the way, he says he can answer any question oh, cool. about Star Wars. So at some point, oh, I would like to talk to him about The Empire Strikes Back. But bottom line is this, this kid's a player for the hometown of Toronto, left winger with Windsor. Cause, take it away. Uh, this guy's a big rig, no question about it. So he comes into the league as a 16-year-old last winger. year, and then, or two years ago, rather, and ends up putting up 26 goals and figured, hey, and might be able to do that again with Trevor Latowski's team. 22 well, goals, 42 points, and 62 games. A little bit games. of back puck as well, but really struggled to find the score sheet. So he's trying to identify Six foot three, what he would be. Pounds, How he can left. still impact the left game winger. without doing what you do best, and that score goals. So Cooley went through this trial period of what can I do to be better. The one thing that can be clearly evident, and the one thing where I think Will needs to find consistency, is in that physical game. I believe when he plays Man, fans when he's out, there? out there looking for the big hit, not necessarily pulling himself out of position to do it, but when he plays with that physical edge, a lot of times the offense seems no, to follow uh, that. 
If you're looking to be a guy William that's purely Cooley. a goal scorer and you're Will Cooley, that's not likely to be the thing. It, it yeah, for a second I thought it was too, but thought, not at that high level. Like, so let's go with gone. the physical. Be that north south guy. Use that speed. Use that physicality. Show everyone fine, you're a beast out there. That's going to buy you some space. And of course, when he gets the puck now, he can really shoot it. So the big rig can shoot it. He can play that physical game, the power forward oh, style yeah. of game. Just needs to find some more consistency and has to learn that when he's not at his best in scoring goals, how is it that I'm going to impact the game? All right, cause good stuff there. Will Cooley strongly considered attending. We are Penn State before just choosing to go the OHL route. Watch, you want to make a point about Leah Sanders. Well, keep in mind, his dad does work for the LA Kings. That always helps. Of course, he was back. Interesting. He had left the Hartford Wolf Pack last year, back in Sweden, played 15 games. Had 12 points. This year, he's off to four four points in his first four games, and he gets okay. a fresh opportunity. I Someone think this was a good uh, in the top 100, for thank God. a difficult situation that really had become untenable. Ranked 53rd overall by yeah, Hockey News, earlier, right? 62nd overall um, yeah. by he's International skill, Scouting we'll, Services. We'll see how the whole thing plays out. Uh, right he's now, compared to, if, as high, best case scenario, big, Evander Kane. Powerful possible goal-scoring winger uh, in their organization with Cooley. Yeah, and his sister, Lauren, a swimmer at Wilfrid Laurier University. So all of our Canadian fans know all about Laurier. Let's go back to Bill Daly. To announce the 61st selection, here is Trent Mann from the Ottawa Senators. With pick 61, the Ottawa Senators are proud to select for the Cape Breton Eagles, Igor Sokolov. Igor Sokolov. Guys, Igor I'll turn the board in a second. delivering groceries during COVID to his billet families. This is a guy clearly the big heart. Left six winger. 6'4", 235 so pounds. Shoots right, age 20. Madonna. I love the comp Sam causes. You know, they like call him a modern day like Tim Kerr. Yeah, I got to love it. And uh, he's a player that I really focused on. And uh, what's interesting, when you go back into his career, his first two years with Kate Breton playing under Mark andre Dumont, then they made a coaching change. Jake Grimes came in. It really gave him a new lease on life. Yet he kept going about his business, scoring goals, protecting the puck, being that guy who could dig it out of the corners. And so when Jake Grimes comes in, he big ends boy. up staying last He's two summers boy. ago in the Maritimes. So you're half working, Russian, out, nice. working on his skating with Jill Plandowski. Trent yeah, Lee, I heard about that. Dylan representing a four-year contract for the Caps. Good, good for them. Looks at this guy over the course of three years. Nice it's money. It's not often that you get nice your year. Uh, player selected in your third year of eligibility. So let's go back and look at the last two years. 76 goals, 46 nice. of them last year. A star on Russia's World Junior team. So there's a lot to like about this player. He is, in fact, still based in the Maritimes. We talked about it off the top of the show, that he's working out there and awaiting what the word will be. He'll now get direction from Ottawa as to which way he will go. But I do believe he's an NHL player. His puck protection skills are awesome. Obviously, with the size, he's down to 217. It's a marathon today. I really like this pick. Well, Don't Costa, forget to eat back to Bill and drink, Daly. everybody. <laughs> to announce Tampa's pick, once again, here's Al Murray of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, I'm falling behind here. <laughs> Tampa Bay Lightning select from Everett of the Western Hockey League, Gage Goncalves. That's Gage Goncalves. His dad, Fernando, came to Canada from Portugal at the age of six. He went undrafted in 2016. Oh, Portuguese. WHL I'm Portuguese. I'm sort Portuguese. Of Peter Forsberg type shootout goal in December, by the way. Gun made Cows. ESPN plays the night Cows. Cows. This guy made a big jump. One Gage goal in 2018 19 to 33 goals this season. Any other pork chops in there? Yeah, and 71 points in 60 games for the Everett Silverton. Uh, he's a, a center. Led by Six Gary foot, Davis 165 pounds. That continues left. to pump out really good players, you know, top-notch players. Casper Pudio, a defenseman, will likely see him well, go a little bit later. Ours, but not only was he not drafted into the Western Hockey League, he's a listed player, so you have to walk on and just kind of earn your way. He went through the draft once last year, and that one, one goal and 12 assists would indicate why. I talked to their coach, Dennis Williams, the other day, and he says, this guy's the real deal. He's a hockey nut. He's really in tune with what we're trying to teach him. He's got great interactions with the coaching staff and can be that type of guy that if he were injured or not playing or maybe somewhere down the road, would be that coach type player. This is a huge rise to prominence from one to 33 goals. Of course, the point totals are huge, but he also gets in invited to Canada's world junior virtual camp. That's a huge jump for a player to make, especially when you've been passed over once. Didn't pout, came back, worked hard, well-deserved. 
Good things happen to good people. Well said, Sam Cosentino, when it comes to Gabe Gonzalez. And yes, mercifully for some, the second round comes to an end here at 152 Eastern. Perhaps the pace will go from glacial to lightning quick. Rounds three through seven are coming up. We got plenty more right here on the network. Coverage right. of the 20 A little bit of a break, NHL thank God. Okay, okay, back to uh, left winger Igor Sokolov that Ottawa just picked. He's ranked 71st by the Hockey News overall. He's got six foot four, 240 pounds from uh, Lunch is worth he's Russian, new playing Great Britain. Britain. They call him, they say he's a mammoth power forward with sauce. nimble hands passed Served over twice artisan style in the draft. Try it for just $3.99. And then catching up here with uh, the shabby Bengals. The uh, let's see if I can find him. The fussy faucet. The buzzy fan. The handle you can't handle. I am Portuguese. Your Please. last straw. At Home Hardware's kitchen so. and bath sale, you'll find great deals on everything you need. Save 20% on select new tone range hoods and bath fans. Half save 20% around. on in-stock SPC plank and tile floor. Well. And save 20% on mowing faucets. Available now at Home Hardware and Building well. Centers. Locally owned. Genuinely Canadian. Go. Go. Kick off the day with protein and energy from Vector. Show the boss who's boss. Show the game who's game. Nice catch. Show up with high protein and energy from Vector. Who says a dollar is only worth a dollar? We think it should be more. So we reimagine the bank account. You can't do that. Can you? We can, and we did. For a start, we got rid of monthly fees and added points. Five. No, make it ten PC optimum points for every dollar you spend anywhere. Even here. Sure. So you're earning points on your own money that you can use for stuff you really need now or stuff you want. The PC money account. A whole new way to think about money. You give me 34, 34, rabbit and babbit doo. Give me 34. Gone college is not in the top hundred in the hockey news uh ranks. I'm gonna give you 45. I got 45. I got 45. What's going on? Well, since we've been using Skip That's the Dishes, so around, much, we're, we're eight, eight players now. Kitcheny stuff. So I'm working on my online auction. Um, who haven't been? To the skinny kid. Did I been ranked, yep. and, that and we're about to start uh, the lunch. next round. So we haven't changed the There's probably leftovers in your new fridge. I think I'll do Not that. that. Skip the dishes. You deserve great delivery. When you commit to setting the new standard, you don't just build an award-winning vehicle. Okay, so we'll switch from green. Or say blue. How does blue suit everybody? You build a truck that's more than anyone thought was possible. Oh, great. Ram 1500, awarded luxury car of the year. Right now, get 0% financing cool, for up cool, to cool, 96 cool. months on Ram 1500. Plus, your first three payments are on us. Okay. Um, this is sports fan life coach. It's my job to guide you to a better tomorrow. Now, All right, thanks everyone for, um, you for sticking around, for watching. I uh, really appreciate all the support. Pirating is no way of life. And I mean, uh, last time you even saw a real pirate. Yeah, never. Um, because those of you who just happened to uh, just join a little while ago, cannonballs. Uh, cannonballs welcome. Loaded with scurvy. and uh, welcome so, to the channel. Don't be a dead pirate. Uh, if you like Maybe what you see, now uh, please don't forget to hit uh, like, subscribe, here for the hit that Capitals. notification bell. Um, I'll also be up on Patreon in maybe a couple weeks' time, probably. And, uh, yeah, so I think I might just go one. Grab um, something really quickly from the fridge. We're at 318 subscribers. Oh, my God. Alexander okay. Benson is certainly one of the game's greatest stars. And once again, our cover today is being brought to you by EA Sports NHL 21. Look at oh, is there another trade? Game. And he's a gamer, too. Like, he's going to get after it, right? When you see Alexander Ovechkin, not only on the ice or when you're playing video games. I mean, look at this. Right back. NHL 21, over those low angles, that great shot, the one-timer. Oh, just fantastic plays, especially with that speed and size and skating. Like, we're going to get some, you know, we're going to get a console out here. We might play some EA Sports NHL 21. We're, we're making two requests. One, we're going to start up a GoFundMe, see if we can get a unicycle, see if AJ Raddick can ride that. And secondly, we're going to get EA Sports NHL 21. Brian Lawton, Dave Reed, I'm at Dan Brooke. Let's reset. Sam Cosentino, our draft guru. Uh, I think we're going to get Fridge back at some point. We better need him back at some point. And EJ Raddick and Jamie Hirsch are here as well. Round two is in the books as we will continue right now with the rest of the draft. Draft rounds three through seven. NHL Network here in America on Sportsnet back in Canada. And also to those of you listening on SiriusXM.
Let us recap as we look at the draft board right now as to what is ahead. Oh. So Donovan Sobrango just went to the Detroit Red Wings. That was with the 63rd pick overall. His dad, Eduardo, a former captain of the Cuban national soccer team, uh, big fan of cats, favorite athlete, former NFLer Ray Lewis. That's right. And Topi Niemela also going to the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's at number 64. So the Leafs able to nap that selection. Uh, we'll talk with Niemela, excuse me, in a second. First, though, Sam Cosentino, what do you have on Sobranga? Really impressed with Sobrango when he came into the league as a 16-year-old. And he was playing in the shadows of Michael Vukojevic, who is also an NHL-drafted player. And so he was just able to go about and do his thing. And many thought, this guy's going to exceed what Vukojevic did when it comes to his draft potential. So he settles into his game this year. A guy who moves extremely well, six goals, 24 assists for 30 points, who gets up and down the ice really well. You talked about the soccer background that his dad has. And it's interesting. He did play some soccer. When he was younger, his mother also involved in the game. But one of the things that's consistently come up in our conversations is we like our guys to be multi-sport oh, guys when they're growing up. Why? Because okay, they just on. develop different muscles and different and uses for hand-eye coordination and other All kinds right, of skills. Uh, Donovan you if you're just exclusively playing hockey. So Sobrango does indeed have that background, pretty good size, excellent skater and a puck right mover, shot defenseman on the defensive side than he would be on the offensive side as I project him to the National Hockey League. Well, good to know. Kaz always going to clean things up in the defensive zone. Uh, let's talk further about the Maple Leafs selection here with Topi Niemela. So uh, finished player here, uh, some comparing him to Dylan DeMello at three assists in three games for Finland 2019 Helinka Gretzky Cup. Lots, what do you have? Yeah, Topi Niemela is a guy that played the full season last year Poor Carpad in the top league in Finland. He's from the oh, shit. The picks are just rolling Ulu. through now. Oh, and Ulu. Feel oh free my to God. jump on the train about six hours. Head north. All right. At least got to open email. Somebody's happy. Oh, you. I, I'm jotting it down. <laughs> yes. I have made it before. <laughs> but he's not a flashy guy. Just by virtue of playing a year as an underage with men, that kind of brings attention to your game. The, the stats haven't been there, but I expect a lot more. This is a pure projection pick. If you can handle what he was able to handle last year with men, being significantly outgunned in terms of weight. You know, this is a guy that, uh, by our notes, we've got him at roughly 160 pounds. Mm -hmm. He's not necessarily uh, the tallest guy either, Sabrango. but he's five eleven. Yeah. yeah, there's some room for growth there. So you're just looking at a projection pick, another, as oh, we talked about earlier, fast another well-rounded okay. player, not flashy, but he does all the little things right. And Neil was a guy, as you said, his all father right. actually Tapio played pro hockey in Finland back in the 1990s. So interesting here, as the Maple Fox. Leafs are trying to, again, here, reader, mix and match a little bit. Listen, these guys are not going to make an immediate impact, but a finished player maybe fills out a little bit, can make an Talk impact. Talk about the Leafs, yeah. So that, that's what it is. It's Honestly. all about projection. These players we're looking at now in the third rounds through the seventh round, uh, you are looking at the depth. You are looking at the future. Unless you're going to start looking into drafting a player who is ready to step into pro. We don't see it happen that, that often. I think the last first rounder was probably Tanner Pearson. Los Angeles yeah. Kings was drafted. And he stepped right in uh, from the draft into the pro from the juniors, a little different sometimes when the players are playing in Europe. Uh, they're a little, uh, if you draft them a year or two older, you can bring them over and put them in the American Hockey League. But anybody playing in junior hockey drafted in the North, North America, at least, uh, has to continue to play there until their junior career is over, which is at 20 years old. All right. So, Nimala going to the Toronto Leafs with pick number 64. We are waiting pick number 65 from the Troy Red Wings. In the meantime, we'll take a quick break. And once again, yes, there was an historic LA. Alexi Lafreniere, Lafreniere going number one. Last French player to go number one, Marc Andre Fleury back in 03. The 2020 NHL draft is presented by EA Sports NHL 21. This year, you'll be able to pull off yes. new digs and moves inspired okay. by the league's most groundbreaking They're innovators. Moving, uh, much faster Recognize now. greatness in EA Sports uh, last NHL kind of 21. Off guard, the Sibrango, and then <laughs> he's got Nimela. Nimela, defenseman. Finally, a defenseman. To lead the charge, good had to be amazing. And amazing okay. had to become the expectation. Ram. Back-to-back -back winner of Motor Trend Truck of the Year. The power has shifted. Right now, get 0% financing for up to 96 uh, months. On see Ram if I can find some of these guys. Plus, your first three payments are on us. After a long day, 
Nothing brings me more joy than coming home to Coco. But every year, 100,000 dogs and cats in Canadian animal shelters are waiting to find their forever home. The Royale Home for Every Pet Project is a way for you to help. When you buy $20 of Royale products, Royale will donate $5 sure to the animal shelters and reward you with a $5 uh -huh. Royale coupon. It's a win-win. Help find a home for every pet. Walking into a clothing store is a completely different experience for me now. It's amazing. I'm learning how the brain works, but not just any brain, okay. my brain. Sabringo. This is not Where just some temporary kind of fix. It's psychological. Visit Noom.com and change your life for good. Register your kids for the Team Rogers there Community is. Okay. Drive for a chance to get access to pro athlete mentors and $150 towards the Detroit. Apply now at rogers.com slash get drafted. Uh, this is a league of power for those of you interested. The uh, Detroit Red Wings 63rd overall pick uh, was ranked 87th overall by the Hockey News. And we know that sometimes, um, if you remember, he's a defenseman, sad. six foot, 179 pounds. They say he's a mobile D play. man and the weak skater. Uh, Puck skills right. are a concern. Plays a two way role. Let's look up uh, the women behind Mila. I have trouble with that one. And I think Arby's is 100% Canadian, just like our poutines, made with Canadian potatoes and cheese. For a limited time, grab any of our signature poutines okay, for just so four ninety nine, including our new chicken bacon. All right, we have some poutine. more information. Don't miss four ninety nine poutines at Here, Arby's. Uh, the least thing. thick. Um, it was, he was 50th overall by the Hockey News, 57th overall uh, um, the by the uh, International Scouting Services. Alexi he's compared Lafreniere to Neil Pjoik. He's a right shot, right shot defenseman. Oh my God. The first one. And William Cooley was selected in the second round. So the Rangers are feeling pretty good about themselves and how they're building their draft, Jeff Gordon and company. And when it comes to Lafreniere, listen, upper deck. Phenomenal when it comes to trading cards. I've still got upper deck cards from the 90s. Six foot 163 pounds as well. Heat back here from the front here. Uh, an immoral moment for this young man from St. Eustache, Quebec. Mom grew up a huge bunch of all Canadians fan, but now they're all going to be New York Rangers fans. So very cool there to see the card as it were for Lafreniere. Um, see how that card is going to be doing well, okay. sure, especially in New York circles. Hey, can I get a card again, Lafreniere card? Sure, I'll trade you this one, that one. It's interesting here with Brian Lott and Dave Reed. Brian Lawton was the number one overall pick back in 1983 by the Minnesota North Stars. He went on to play 493 oh, games. How about this? 65th. Wild. I mean, this is... The, oh, there must have been a trade there, I guess. Upper day. I mean, how nice is that? That brings back memory. Wild That's jump in. Uh, it's yeah, number 65. It and I remember that. It's hot and heavy here. Standing with Tom Barrasso and uh, Pat <laughs> LaFontaine, two other uh, players from that draft that went on and had amazing careers. Yeah. <laughs> cool to see that, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah it is. You don't you don't see that very often. <laughs> we'll get you a copy at some point. Try get a copy over here a lot so we can sign a couple Damon of cards Hunt. for us. Way back in the day, 1983, Brian Lott, number one draft pick. Dave Reed, by the way, 60th overall pick, Boston Bruins, and went on to be a two-time Stanley Cup champion. We're thrilled to be here with all of you. Uh, round two is in the book. Hey, we're going to talk about Hunt. Just begin. We go back to Deputy Commissioner. Bill Daly has the latest. Go ahead with your selection, Minnesota. Thank from the Moose Jaw Warriors, Damon Hunt. We put that up on the board before Damon they show the, cue the video for that. Now, this I guess that was during a commercial maybe. streak. He was suspended two games for his actions during a game March 3rd in Regina. Opposing goalie Spencer Welke earned his first career win for Regina when his teammates went to collect the game puck at the buzzer. Hunt tossed it into the stands. Reader, David Hunt's got a little fire. A little bit of nastiness. We <laughs> talked about David Hunt off the top of the show as the kind of the player that I was looking at. A little bit of a, a wild card due to the injury. Uh, he's he a left shot defenseman, 198. Six foot. And uh, required immediate surgery. He missed 32 games. He missed the remainder of the season. He had 15 assists in his 28 games, 57 games, 20 points in his rookie year with Moose Jaw. He is a, uh, a left shot defenseman. He's six feet tall. He was about 198 pounds. Excellent skater, excellent puck mover. And then this is going to give Damon time to Good. develop into his Another size, develop into his body. But he plays a little bit of an edge. He happening. likes to right. win. You can see the competitiveness as you talked about Adnan throwing the puck into the stands, but uh, for Minnesota, they've got a competitive defenseman who's got all sorts of skill, and I'm not saying he missed the season, but when you 
lose four months of the season. He will lose uh, 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 He's ranked 42nd overall by the hockey news. Yeah, I'm talking about Damon Hunt me. here. He didn't have an um, opportunity. Left shot defenseman. A lot of players lost their playoff, all the playoff um, opportunities. He's compared to but Chris Tanner. Um, because of the injury that he's had. Temporarily One of good the thing Vancouver is the extra time allows you to heal a little bit more. Uh, to soon. come back and see what's going on. Now it's drafted by the, in the third round by Minnesota. They have a great opportunity once we get going in. The WHL gets going once again, and the in Boys 28 games uh, last NHL season he had great news for Damon Hunt back to the podium. 15 assists, 15 points. Go ahead with your selection, Los Angeles. LA is picking. Josh knows. He knows our Casper Simultan. The LA Kings are proud to select from Tapura in the Finnish Elite League, Casper Simontaiva. That's a Casper Simon Tyval. That's right. Their right winger, older name. brother Matias, plays pro hockey in Finland. Brother Nicholas also retired. He led all skaters in scoring the 2019 Five Nations Tournament. Reader, what do you have on Simon Tyval? Well, he's not a big guy. He's five foot nine. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of change to the Los Angeles Kings. They were going with big players earlier. Now you've got a smaller, speedy right winger. Uh, he was listed as 21st overall by the National Hockey League Central Scouting European. Uh, five foot skaters. nine right winger. He's got all sorts of hockey. 177 IQ. pounds. He's got an excellent shot. And when you read scouting reports and you see players play when other scouts talk about it here's a guy that makes everybody around him that's better. casper that goes Simon a long way Tybal. to show you what type of player that he is he's got an ability right. to dart in um, and out not. with the size at five foot nine he's absolutely a fearless type of player which will fit in perfectly with los angeles kings but again a young player a smaller player uh, with pick all ian sorts Moore. of skill the very very high compete level uh for Simon Tavall. it'll be very interesting to see how quickly this young player Moves along through the uh, the Liga in in uh, in Finland, and then his opportunities come in North America, the National Hockey League. Uh, that's the story when it comes to Simon Tybal. Another pick second. has just been made, in fact, as Ian Moore is now off the board. Looks like Anaheim is selecting Ian Moore. This was a guy who won the uh, Thomas E. Federico Memorial Award. That's given the player and his family on and off the ice back in 2015. Defenseman, St. Mark's School of USHS Lots. Yeah, this is one of the guys that uh, I did some deep, uh, due diligence on, and he did play in the U.S. High School League. He's born in Concord, Massachusetts. He's got nice size at 6'2". He's another one of those prototypical defensemen, transition guys. He's got great skating ability, uh, excellent lateral movement, both with and without the puck. He's hard to contain. He passes the puck well. Uh, this is an interesting pick. I came down to a comparison for him. It's kind of similar to the Harvard man, John Marino, who the Pittsburgh Penguins eventually uh, got from the Edmonton uh, For those of you interested, really okay. So, uh, Ian Moore you know, is, is a uh, projection picks. That's what right shot defenseman, now. six foot two. Interestingly enough, 171 will pounds. also be going to Harvard. Ooh. Harvard man. All right, Concord Mass. They're going wild um, right now. And so we all do England is appreciating what we're showing you here on the draft, what Ian Moore is capable of. There is a look at the big board as Vegas is on the clock. We'll come back with pick number 68 right here on NHL Network. The 2020 uh, NHL Draft uh, is presented the 66th by, pick by the LA Kings. For those of you who are interested, uh, the year, right winger, the pull up, new um, and the, how can you say uh, he's a stocky most shooter, has a nose for net, but character, greatness, uh, defense, sports, new NHL refining. 21. Five foot nine hundred and seventy two no pounds. How long this revolution may take, uh, Ian Moore, look for him. I'm just getting started. This is America. Binge every episode on FX now. <laughs> you're, you're funny, Ben. <laughs> I'll turn up here. I'll turn the board over just for a second. To setting the new standard. You don't just build an award-winning vehicle. While I look for Ian Moore. Or a safe vehicle. You build a truck that's more than anyone thought was possible. Ram 1500. Awarded luxury car for the year. Right now, get 0% financing for up to 96 months on Ram 1500. Plus, your first three payments are on us. When you need to see up close, do you squint and strain? And without enough light, it's more of a pain. Then you need Mighty Sight, the new LED lighted magnifying eyewear that makes detailed tasks easy to see. 
ultra bright and hands free. Inspired by the eyewear worn by surgeons, Mighty Sight gives more. you instant more. 160% magnification and brings prescription labels up close Six and clear. Look closer. The high definition optical lenses utilize new magnification technology, while two built in LEDs. Uh, Ian Moore's ranked uh, 82nd by the hockey news overall. Just 67 by the Ducks. Like you've never um, seen six before. Uh, like he's a puck with good frame, needs time to hold. Mighty Sight fits comfortably over your prescription glasses and are rechargeable, so they're always wow, ready when you are. Perfect for crazy reading, knitting, arts and crafts, and more. Best of all, the LED lights follow your view with pinpoint accuracy, so you won't disturb others around you. I could never read the tiny print on my vitamins, but now with Mighty Sight, it's as clear as a bell. Don't give up on detailed tasks. Just reach for Mighty Sight. There's nothing like them on the market today. Act now to get your LED magnification eyewear. Don't forget Mighty to eat. Sight with charging cord for just twenty nine ninety nine. Oh, See what you've been missing oh, and get up close and clear with Mighty Sight. Call now. To get your Mighty Sight for only twenty nine ninety nine, call one eight hundred six six four four six one seven or go to mightysight.ca. This offer is not available in stores, so call one eight hundred six six four four six one seven. That's one eight hundred six six four four six one seven or go to mightysight.ca. That number again is one eight hundred six six four four six one seven. That's one eight hundred six six four four six one seven or order online at mightysight.ca. Order your Mighty Sight today. Hockey Central signing season Friday on Sportsnet. Who's my favorite player? The 2020 NHL like picking, draft like is presented your favorite by song, EA Sports really. NHL that's 21. Really difficult to this say. year, uh, you'll be able to pull off new dates and moves inspired by the league's most groundbreaking innovators. Recognize greatness in EA uh, Sports NHL 21. Toronto has won the 2016 NHL. Oh, wow. Okay. Lottery. Here we go. This is a team that earned the number one pick. Toronto proud to announce Austin Matthews. We all know what the expectation is for Austin Matthews. He's a unique special player when you think about Austin Matthews. He's got a real consistency to his approach to playing, and they're going to love him in Toronto. Austin Matthews, the number one pick. The Toronto Maple Leafs are the best player of the draft and one of the best players that have come along in the draft in many years. He's going to be a, a great player for many years to come. He's ready to play with the big boys in the National Hockey League. I mean, it's a dream come true. It's such a big honor, uh, you know, especially a historic franchise like the Toronto Maple Leafs. Austin Matthews has been nothing short of a sensational player. We continue our Why draft. Why are you talking about Austin Matthews? Like Sports, I mean, NHL I like him. Yeah, but that cover let's there, talk about Austin Matthews. Keep up with the trades, man. And, uh, of course, whenever you're featured in NHL trades. 20, you go there and do big things that on season. the ice. So you saw Austin Matthews on the ice while in the game. Guy's incredible. Just his goal scoring touch. Hey, at 68, the Vegas Golden Knights picked Lucas Cormier. How do you account for that? Uh, defenseman, Austin Matthews, uh, 69, uh, video uh, on the ice. It's a big reason Carolina why. Hurricanes took Alexander. In. Pre-order now, Nish NHL Nishkin. 21. Nish I got it from my eldest Nishkin. son. He's locked in. We love the Xbox. Nishkin. Love the hockey video games. Brian Sorry, that's a hard one. and Dave Reed, I'm at Dan Brooke. We continue as Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly. So far, we're through round two. Round three continues. The pick is in. We go back to Mr. Daly at the podium. With the 68th selection, here is Bob Lowe's, the Assistant Director of Player Personnel for the Vegas Golden Detroit, Knights. Detroit, Ottawa. Vegas is proud to select Lucas Cormier. Lucas Cormier, you heard him right there. A nice value pick for the Vegas Golden Knights. Played in Charlottetown, PEI. We all know that well, beautiful place. Here. He's another one of those defenders under six feet. He's about 5'10", 180 pounds. He finished fourth among all QHML defensemen and power play assists. Yeah, so they're talking about uh, who Vegas picked at 68 team, right now. He won a well, silver medal with Canada with Ivan Halenka. His sister, Dominic, is also a defenseman, and she played for Canada on the, the like U18 championship here. in 2019. Uh, for me, I, I loved his feet. When I watched him on tape, that was the most impressive thing to me. Uh, the secondary skill that really stood out, he's an excellent passer. And in today's game, more than anything, or just the transition chaos, game being so you know. key to so many teams and the ability of D to jump in the play, 
Okay, so we're talking about Vegas is pick. Three on two, the NHL, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, this um, is a guy that fits the mold. This is a guy that he's I a left shot defense developing into five ten hundred eighty pounds. For the Vegas Gold Knights. I like this pick. We had him rated much higher. We did. We had him at 37. Good exactly. point, Lots. He skipped a grade in school as a kid, so I have that in common with him. Lucas Cormier is a selection. 68th pick overall. Ottawa, Dave Rain gives me a thumbs Calgary, up. How about National Alexander Nikishin, defenseman of the Spartak, as you can see. He's off the board. He goes to the Carolina Hurricanes. This is a guy who played the fourth most games of any under-19 skater in the KHL. What do you have? Well, I have it. He had three assists in 29 games, and he played in Sparta in the KHL. Sparta. And guess what, Carolina? You are going to love this six foot, three hundred ninety-six pound defender in a few years. Okay, uh, Carolina's pick. Those are something that was 69th I overall. Last time I said the player loves uh, six foot three. He steps up. And he doesn't take himself out of Left position to make the hits, but he's a very physical player. He's got all the skills. He's an excellent skater, which allows him to step up in the neutral zone, excellent lateral movement. But he really enjoys um, the physical play. And it's Ottawa just three, picked a goalie. Being able to throw his weight around, being able to be Levi a little Mer menace. Is something that you can never have enough of, especially in the National Hockey League come playoff time. Uh, Nikishin is uh, proving proving in the KHL to be a force, and he's still a teenager. So, again, these young KHL players expect them to come over in a few years. The majority of them have signed or re-signing coming into the draft year. The KHL is smart. They say, let's sign these guys for at least a couple of years. And the agreements between the NHL and the European leagues, KHL being one of them, is that you have to wait for that contract to expire yeah, yeah. before you have the opportunity to bring a player over. So we'll see Big Nikishin over uh, for Carolina soon. But I love the fact that the first thing everybody says this guy loves the open ice hits. I was going to say, old school hockey, baby. Line him up, get that shoulder down, away you go. There's 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 say, there's a menace on, on the ice, as long as he's not a menace to society. Uh, pick now the picks are flying a little better here, right? The third uh, round. Hurricanes. The Red Wings drafting Emil Vero, the Ottawa Senators, drafting Levi Miralainen as well. So we're getting some more action now. Feels like teams are like, okay, we've got our second round out of the way. The ones that we covered, let's go a little quicker now as far as the pace, and we'll continue that pace rounds three through seven. Um, your thoughts, Lots, just about the pace. The here. Europeans are coming. The pace is picking up. You're seeing a lot of names that maybe aren't as familiar to North American folks, but they certainly are in the scouting world. I'm not surprised by this. We're a more global game than ever. This is just part of the repercussions of that. The good news for the Canadians Florida. watching out there, it was a banner year for them in the first round. We had to go back to 03 to match 19 players. The selection here again is Todd yeah. Button of the Calgary Flames. Calgary's proud to select. From St. John of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, Jeremy Poirier. Poirier, there he is. For Calgary at 72nd. Big one here, Jeremy Poirier. So this is a guy, we were looking at him in our CHL top prospects. Who Left shot defenseman. Monday night. He's the third defenseman from the queue of the past 20 years to score at least 20 goals under 18. And his past, him loves to go fishing. He's a huge fan of Tiger Woods. Listen, they've gone fishing here for a guy who, as Sam Cosasino told us, can be a, a wild horse up there on the ice. P.K. Subban types cause. What a pick here. No question that, man. But before we get to that, great picture of Lots. In fact, I ended up finding his old helmet here. I'll show you that in a second. But when it comes to Jeremy Poirier, the interesting thing about this guy is that he actually has NHL skills in terms. There's a helmet, Lots, just so you can see. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, glad we have that. You can uh, sign it for us later. Okay? Very safe helmet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but in terms, getting back to Poirier, unbelievable uh, skill set in terms of his shooting ability. He had 20 goals last year. That's only happened four times in the queue in the last 20 years. He there? passed the puck extremely well. He's an unbelievable skater, and his puck skills are like that of a forward. The problem is in the defensive side of the puck. That's where all the issues are. That's why he's dropped to where he's dropped here to Calgary. At some point, you have to get to the skill. Calgary addressed it here. Greg Gilbert will keep him accountable in that area. He's the new head coach in St. John. Looking forward to see how this development comes. This could be a home run pick here. Yeah, certainly could be a home run pick. You're right. You look at his pedigree and where we had him. And listen, these are all just, you know, approximations. But we had him at 28, perhaps, as a ranking. And a guy certainly put up good numbers in St. John's. For him to go down at 72 for the Flames could be a great pick for the Flames. Back to Bill Daly. With the 73rd selection, go ahead, Nashville. From the Calgary hitman, Luke Prokop. 
Luke Prokop is a guy who was actually selected seventh overall the 2017 WHL Bantam draft. He's a thinking man. That's player. Nashville's Love pick. sitting down and doing puzzles. I know we uh, can appreciate it. Luke Prokop. Right? Nice puzzles, last name. And you can see um, for hours shoots right. And figure it all out. Six foot so four, two hundred seventeen pounds. Make sure things are in the proper place as you're putting your puzzle together. Always start with the outside, much like you always start drafting defensemen. He's a right shot defenseman. He's six foot four, big kid. At the big wingspan, but he's uh, he's known more for his offensive game. He can step up in the play. Twenty three points in fifty nine games, right? Shot defenseman been in the WHL. So this is a, a great skating, long strides, big kid, got lots of room to grow. He's still starting at two hundred seventeen pounds. I don't know if he wants to get much bigger. He loves to play the offensive game, but he's also known to be able to play physically in his own zone. Very responsible on the defensive side of the game. Probably more uh, for those of you interested in Vegas, it's Cormier. Game, uh, no, he's the, compared uh, to Samuel Girard of, of, of the Avalanche. Some of the scouts are saying that that's something he's going to continue to work I was third, on. Ranked 34th overall, about that, by uh, the Hustle League, 43rd by uh, the International Scouts. years old. We've got to make sure he is. He's still 18 years old. He's yeah. a big lad. <laughs> Older and much smaller brother, Josh, by the way, uh, playing for Calgary. He's a forward. So we'll keep it going here. It's Luke Prokop. Is the selection their defenseman out of Calgary? There's a look at all the war rooms right now as teams are looking to make their picks. The third round rolling on. Oh, really? The Sportsnet coverage is supposed to end in 10 minutes. 100 layers of flavor for that refreshing and delicious taste. Refreshing moments are just a tic tac away. Uh, it looks like it's another hour. I could be wrong, but right that's just me glancing. The clear out sales event. Finance a kicks from 0% for up to 60 months. Plus, get a set of winter tires at no charge. Yeah, I am watching on Sportsnet, which is a Canadian broadcast. So, Zoom is easy because it takes five but uh, minutes. But, they're, but they are doing it through um, the NHL through. network. Five, ten minutes. You can change. So, anyway. Every other time, it just says you, you can eat this, you can eat that, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, and that's it. You can receive that it's about what's happening in my head. I'd use a couple of apps before, and they uh, never really worked. They put you in a good place to make the right decisions, and that's the tool you need. You change up here. Uh, what are we talking about now? 69th. Mikishkin for Carolina. Mikishkin. Mikishkin. I knew this was going to be um, hard to keep track of today. It's always, you know, a bit of a shit show, so welcome to the show. The understandably, they have to speed up because there's so many rounds and players. Selfishly, Harvey I wish they is put this 100% on the show. Canadian. Day. Just like our poutines, down a bit. made with Canadian potatoes and cheese. For a limited so time, we can any of our signature poutines for just $4.99, including our new chicken, bacon, ranch poutine. Don't miss $4.99 poutines at Harvey's. It's a beautiful thing. I could really use this. Can't find a Keisha. Can't find him. Where are you? Uh, Vero. Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to slice Vero. a lemon. Slice a lemon. Put the lemon on the cutting board. Slice right through. You're a genius. You can do this, you can do that. Vero. And this. And all you need is this. That, my friends, is all you need to conquer your food. And now you're cooking with Chef's Plate. Order now at chefsplate.com. Our NHL draft coverage continues rounds two through seven on NHL Network on Sports. Okay, listening on Sirius XM is brought to you by EA Sports NHL. Okay, Colorado will pick the center. Uh, John Luke Oh, in Florida, pick two. Um, a center, Ty Smilianic. The Florida Panthers are proud to select from the U.S. National Team Development Program in Quinnipiac University, Ty Smilianic. Smilianic. So Ty Smolinic gets selected. We'll get Brian Lawton's thoughts in just a second. This is a guy who loves the show Friends so much. He's rewatched the entire series six times. He considers himself a mix between Chandler and Joey. He's also a big okay. fan of the Avalanche because Joe Sackett actually coached Ty when he was eight years old, and they forged a bond. Lots, what more do you have on him? 
Yeah, I was kind of hoping he might get drafted by the Avalanche, to be honest with you. He missed it by a pick here, unfortunately, but that doesn't matter. Florida Panthers, great organization on the upswing. I think they got a good one here. I think there's a lot of untapped potential in Ty's game. I think he got chipped down a little bit in the draft, quite frankly, because of the injuries last year. We talked about him earlier in the show. He had mono. He broke his so finger. Keeping up with the board injuries. here, uh, Spring, kind of fairly. A lot of things went wrong, unfortunately, for looking? him in the wrong season. But in the end, it doesn't matter because I see a guy that's got some experience playing uh, wing, but also center. He's the type 76. of Swiss Army knife every team is looking for. I think there's a lot so of potential see, with him. He's yeah, still, still growing. Reminds me just a little bit of a Kyle Connor. He's got that type of ability. Now, he's not quite at that level. You don't know what he's going to be. This is another value pick, in my opinion, for the Florida Panthers. All right, and look forward to that pick there. Ty Splenic is off the board as he gets selected. And then you also see Jean-Luc Foodie is there as well. Goes the Colorado Avalanche, as Ken Boulder reminded me. His brother was the Canadian kid, the juniors, who kept saying Scarborough, Scarborough, Scarborough. Cause you got to love him in Scarborough. No question about it. And if you watch the playoffs, you would have seen his brother, Liam, who was selected in the first round out of the London Knights program a couple of years ago by the Columbus Blue Jackets. And one thing that really stuck out is the speed. Jean-Luc Foudy, the brother, definitely has okay, that. Okay, Jean-Luc Foudy, but picked by Colorado, 5'11". In high school, uh, 177 pounds, player, shoots right, center. Olympium on the track. So From Scarborough, that Ontario. That there's competitiveness, obviously, That's built into the family is my because first they're place all elite athletes. But you're He's a the path of Liam. That's what you that need them. He gets the skating part under control, which he has, and then is able to do other things, like score goals, not defer as much, be a shoot-first type of guy. There's no question when you watch him play, he pops because of that seeing, skating ability. Here? Still have space. figuring out sort the of. best way in which to use not on that the left skill side. and use it on a consistent basis. But I really like Jean-Luc Foody because you have to, have the to get a new board here. Brian Burke, my colleague here at Sportsnet, always says that, hey, you know what? The second brother One seems more. to be One the more. more competitive of the bunch, so that would bode well for this pick knowing how well Lee, his brother Liam has already performed. Yeah, no question. 18th overall by the Jackets 2018. Thanks, guys. Jean-Luc Foody also double gold medalist in 2018 offset track and field championships. Great in the 100-meter dash and the 300-meter hurdles. We're hurtling ahead with our draft coverage when we come back. This commercial is for the Pizzants. Okay, that'll be it for the whole family. Awards. Sophie and Philippe, up to 79 on for this. the Kurzaks, the Bushers, uh, okay. and the Flanagans. All the home hardwares across Canada. See how that's Local family-owned businesses sucks. who support the specific needs of anyway. their communities. Okay, because Chats. the local I've been ignoring local, that for a little bit. Local it's been hard to um, And that's what being locally owned, genuinely Canadian, is all about. Register your kids for the Team Rogers Community Draft for a chance to get access to pro athlete mentors and $150 towards league fees. Apply now at rogers.com slash get drafted. My favorite player. Oh. Mom and dad used to argue about everything, especially about dad's drinking. My family went from totally crazy to quiet. I, name, I can name a bunch, but Even like Oria Salming, um, one of the first first uh, wanted a better relationship Swedish with dad. Last year so I asked players mom to if she would take me to her Alan back in the day in the early Alan 80s. Team. I'm sure glad I did. Um, if someone's drinking trouble, you may be surprised at what Again, you can learn in an Alan or Alateen family group from people just like you. Call one 888 4 or go to Alan It's the final weekend of Leon's Save the Tax event. Get special uh, prices on furniture, plus save the tax. Save up to 30% on mattresses, plus save the tax. And save the tax on three piece appliance packages. And obviously, Austin Matthews. Call, visit Leon's for details. Uh, As we all manage through these stressful times, let Pharmacy to Home help by directly yeah, just, shipping all your people needs it's to it's your like, home. Simply like go to pharmacy2home.ca. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate that. Um, pharmacy. If you can't find yeah, a pharmacy, yeah, everyone who's new, just subscribe. Just I just want to say thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Over sixteen thousand. Um, thanks for joining me this marathon. Sorry, I haven't been able to keep up. Supplies, free delivery. Uh, with some of the players, pharmacy. they're just going so fast right now. I'm happy I'm at least getting them on the board. Or visit pharmacy2home.ca. I've got two more boards. Shift. But don't go anywhere. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm gonna, I might have to start erasing after a certain charge. point. Maybe I'll just be flipping the board, some of my used boards over, because there's a bottom part I have to do it. Ram, back to back winning. It'll look a little bit confusing, but they'll fit. The power has shifted. 
Right now, get 0% financing for up to 96 months on Ram 1500. Shark Plus, is 79. Three payments are on us. October. Finally. But we've never done it like this before. This is October. The remix. That means anything can happen. Anything. These kids are. Uh, yeah, if you happen to be just arrived, um, welcome. Thanks for joining us here. It's pretty fast and heavy. Um, I'm watching it through Sportsnet. They're on a commercial at the moment, obviously. This is the remix. 323. Thank you, everyone, for subscribing. Really appreciate that. Oh, here we go. Sharks. Wow, they've just been. Trade details okay. are in. The Oilers acquired the 100th pick and the 126th sharks. pick. Because the San Jose Sharks, you know what? Oh, there was a trade? A about this one. Sharks after the, the Avalanche. 76th pick. With more on that, let's go to the deputy. A bit of a trade there, Bill I guess. With the go ahead with your selection, San Jose. From Muskegon in the USHL, Daniil Gushkin. Daniil Gushkin for San Jose. Daniil Gushkin is a guy who tied for the most shorthanded Left goals and game-winning goals in the USHL in 2019-20. He idolized Pavel Datsuk growing up and was raised in the same hometown. How about that synchronicity, Sam Cosentino? 47 points in 42 games last year, and now it uh, looks like he'll play for the Niagara Ice Dogs in the Ontario Hockey League next season. Where this guy really started to pop for me is going back two years ago to the Holinka Gretzky Cup. I kept watching this guy as an underage player and saying, this guy's unbelievable. His mitts are silky smooth. He gets to the net. He left winger, 5'8", 165 pounds. And then the thing left. go so well in his second appearance there, where his point totals dropped to less than a point per game in that short tournament. Yet he goes into the USHL, plays a pretty good season there for Muskegon, thinks that he wants to change things up a little bit with this move to Niagara. But there is no doubt the skill set is there. It's just a matter of, again, putting it all together, finding that consistency, and getting back to the guy he was as an underager two years ago at the Holinka Gretzky Cup when I watched him in Red Deer in Edmonton. All right, interesting stuff there when it comes to Daniil Gushin. The fact, like I said, he's... The guy who loved Datsuk, another guy. I get a new board after this. USA, so he's doing very well right now. Good numbers for Gushka as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, that's you know, the, the San Jose Sharks, I mean, they're trying to figure out a way to get this thing back on track. They've had 12 great years of incredible mm -hmm. performance, really, up until last year where things went a little bit sideways for them. Okay, they're Pittsburgh at 77 just picked a goalie. Be involved in Cal the draft. It Cal some nice Klang. Moves. I like what Doug Wilson's been able to get accomplished. Cal Klang, I should, yeah. All right, so once again, let's check out the draft board right now. As Neil Gushkin goes to the San Jose Sharks, the Pittsburgh Penguins making their pick at number 77. And it's another goalie. That's right, Callie Kong, the Klong. goalie for Rogel Jr. out of Sweden. Some comps to Braden Holtby. EJ, what say you? Yeah, well, the Pittsburgh Penguins stocking up on some goaltenders, and uh, I like it. I like taking some shots after the first round. And uh, yeah, from what we understand about Cali Klaas, average was size a goalie, goalie good technique, uh -huh. plays very deep in his net, a little bit like Henry Six Wentz. 6'2", 194 imagine, pounds, catches left. The kid from Sweden probably tried to model his game after a Henrik Lundqvist. So he plays deep in the net, good glove, often a lot of flair, one scout told me. So that was kind of interesting, uh, likes to flash the leather a little bit. But uh, the Penguins go with their second goaltender, of this draft and uh cali clang someone that uh again a little bit of a henrik lundquist clone the penguins hope that he is they saw enough of lundquist over the years a little bit of flair i need some more pieces of flair on you there as they said in office space by the way his dad played play from him. sweden in the 80s and 90s <clears throat> back to the podium to announce the 78th overall selection in the draft here is billy siren okay we're on to columbus on deck for the columbus blue jackets from TPS Finland, Samuel Knatsko. Samuel. All right, so Samuel Knatsko is Knatsko. the guy. Listen, alternate captain for Slovakia, the 2019 Under-18 oh, World yeah. Championship. Hey, the scoring lead of Under-18 defenseman. He can fill it up as well for the Slovak Pang and Finland leader. He's playing with uh, TPS in the junior, junior Six league. Six foot, 191 so, uh, pounds. Uh, for, uh, left shot defenseman Samuel for Columbus. His feet. He's got great skating ability. Very, very fluid. Uh, with his footwork, he's six foot one, 191 pounds. It's six foot one, 191 pounds. You yes, you're right. He did play for Slovakia at the World Junior Championship. He had one assist in five games. Very good with the puck. He's brought that 
the pass first mentality. Not saying that he doesn't have the shot. His shot is there. He had seven goals in 48 games in June in the Finnish junior leagues. But he's more known for his skating and his playmaking abilities on the ice than he is for a goal scorer. Have right. we seen a Slovakian picked already in the draft? Is this the first? I think that's. Mm, I'll have to double check on yeah, that. I think this might be the first one. Yeah, yeah double check on that. I think we should know that because we've been here a while. That we should have marked, <laughs> we should have marked that one down. But yeah, I, think, I think I think you're right. I think this could be the first Slovak. Right. Will that be too drafted yeah. in the? Yeah, so no, far. I, I agree. The Slovaks and the Czechs a little bit down in this draft, not for the level that you know they'd yep. like to see as a country. I uh, hope to see that perk back really up because well, there's such a rich history a of players, better. obviously, particularly Czechs in the National Hockey League. Yeah, Samuel Kanasko, the pick at number 78 for the Columbus Blue Jackets. We'll come back and come back with plenty more here from our draft coverage. As you can see, the United Center in Chicago. They're okay. on the clock. We'll see what their pick is in round three when we return. Do not go anywhere. Look at that big board. Yeah, I got, I got two more whiteboards, two more whiteboards. And then after that, I'll have to start flipping them over. To do the, the bottom part. The 2020 Welcome, NHL Mr. Draft Ryan. Is presented by Spending. EA Sports NHL 21. This year, you'll be able to pull off new digs and moves inspired okay. by the league's most groundbreaking innovators. Yeah. Recognize greatness in EA Sports NHL 21. Sure, uh, <laughs> get the other board prepped a little bit. Kick off the day with protein and energy from Vector. Show the boss who's boss. Show the game who's game. Nice catch. Show up with high protein and okay. energy. Okay. Looking, for, yeah. Chromiac to Chicago. That would be nice for them. Most certainly. Who was the first goalie overall? Um, that was Askarov uh, to Nashville. Eat breakfast whenever you want, because it's always 9 a.m. somewhere. Oh, yeah, let's see if I can find some of these uh, players here. It's always morning-ish. I just can't get away from you know, some sort of glare. Damn you, glare. Is only worth a dollar. We think Not it should Claire, be more. Claire, so Claire. we reimagine the bank account. You can't do that. Okay. Um, we can, and we did. For a start, we got rid of monthly fees and added points. Where would I finish no, it? No, make it 10 PC optimum points for every dollar you spend anywhere. Even here. Sure. So you're earning points on your own money that you can use for stuff you really need now or stuff you want. The PC money account, a whole new way to think about money. So far behind. Poirier is on the board. Lunch is worth taking with new yeah, Tim's Poirier. Crispy Crispy seasoned chicken Steak breast with creamy fried. barbecue Bubba sauce. Bubba. Served on a toasted artisan style bun. Calgary Fry flames. it for just $3.99 and start loving lunch again. Uh, Winter's so coming seconds. fast. Time to call on Reliance. We'll help you beat the winter rush with the fall furnace sale with up to $2,500 in savings and rebates on a featured furnace. If you're looking for a great deal now, uh, so Poirier, who a lot of people were looking to, uh, to get picked, he was picked by the Flames back at uh, 72nd overall. Uh, just the FYI, he was ranked 44th overall by the Hockey News, uh, 40th overall by International Scouting Services. And they compare your kids to the Dean Rogers, Rogers Community Draft uh, the Vegas for a chance to get access to pro athlete mentors and one hundred and fifty dollars towards league fees. Apply now at rogers.com slash get drafted. Let's see what who else I can find here. Sportsnet uh, nightly. Sportsnet. Dogs, yeah. We're back here with the okay, NHL. See how far behind NBA, I am now. NHL twenty twenty one. Chicago Blackhawks about to make their okay. play. Let's send it over to Deputy Blackhawks get uh, Landon Slaggart with the left winger selection in this year's draft. Go ahead, Chicago. Blue. The Chicago Blackhawks are proud to select from the U.S. National Team Development Program, Landon Slaggart. Slaggart. Interesting how that's pronounced. Landon Slaggart. Congratulations to Slager. him out of South Bend, Indiana, EJ. Yeah. The, uh, South the Bend, Indiana. Okay. Uh, they, he's a local guy. I mean, yeah. uh, he played for the Chicago Mission Program, youth hockey program, all the way from 13 to 16 years of age. Okay, take Went one good National look at this because uh, new board's coming in. On, oddly enough, being from South Bend, going to Notre Dame, and it's going to be a family affair <laughs> because his that. dad You're not gonna be able to see that, is though. currently uh, an really. associate head coach there. Can anyone Welcome see that? Four years at Dame, and his brother Graham is already on the roster. So uh, 
It will definitely be anyone want to let me know anyone uh, in South Bend for Landon Slaggard, but uh, is it's it too be hard to see back because here? I would suspect that if he grew up in that area with the Chicago Blackhawks so yes being no. as good probably a team no. as they've been over the last decade, it doesn't look. This is probably something that's exciting to no, him. No to one can see this. The Chicago Blackhawks. We'll see. We'll find out if it is. But I get the sense he's okay. probably thrilled anyway. to get drafted there. And he's he's kind of an industrial player, the board. hardworking guy. Someone it's fine. Who, again, is going to need that time at Notre Dame and in college. Okay. To continue right. to develop I'll leave this game. back here. And I'll try and bring in another chair. To watch him develop at Notre Dame, uh, if indeed he goes on to play exactly. the Chicago Blackhawks someday. We uh, do have another pick made by the Chicago Blackhawks. And you see the Calgary Flames also making their pick with Jake Boltman. Okay. About Two picks behind. Let's get up, caught Kaiser. up here. What do you know about All right. So the. Well, you know, another uh, defenseman, uh, six foot, 175 pounds. Minnesota Calgary, kid, Chicago. high school hockey kid up there. So, Jamie, that's right in, in your neck of the woods there, Ham Lake, Minnesota. But uh, he's one of these kids that uh, – Okay, hey, they're talking about uh, really Chicago's pick at number 81, player. Wyatt Kaiser, and defenseman. He shoots left. That level. And then now – I'll get to Calgary in a second. Up. How is that going to – how is he going to look at the next level? Great escape ability, good skater, gets in and out of traffic, smart player, but that is really – the consideration now moving forward is where will his game show up at that next level? You can see the college commitment there, University of Minnesota, Duluth. Okay. And uh, it's interesting. His dad, another guy with like athletic background, his dad, Don, played linebacker at the University of North Dakota football team. His sister also plays hockey. She's a defense woman and uh, committed to the University of Michigan. So an athletic family. And for the Blackhawks, oh, again, looking to add help on the blue line. A long-term development kid, but a really good skater. Okay, so from a Minnesota-born player to a guy that is headed to Minnesota to play for the Minnesota Wild someday, he hopes Damon right, Hurst joining to a player us now. now. Uh, uh, so Calgary picked uh, Boltman, here, Damon. a defenseman at 80. To finding out that you would be long to the Minnesota Wild franchise? Uh, they haven't talked about him yet, but... Yeah, thank you very oh, much. And, uh, um, no, Vancouver just picked Yoni Yermo, and, uh, a defenseman. But, you know, I, I can be more happy on the to be board. part of Minnesota, you know, in the state of hockey, too. So, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled right now. Yeah, we're looking at the celebration right now. And look, that's a thrilled look right there from everybody in the uh, in the yeah. house. And, uh, you know, one of the last Any couple Vancouver of days Wright's has been like this for pick? you because, as you mentioned, it was a little bit of a wait. But good things come to those who wait. What were the last few days like in the lead up to being selected by Minnesota today? Yeah, I think the last couple of days, they've been pretty long, you know, the draft. <laughs> Three defensemen in a row here. With the, with the pandemic. So, yeah, it's been a long couple of months as well. So, you know, I'm just I'm just glad that, you know, I found that draft. <laughs> Ask you in four years. Start, you know, my, my <laughs> okay. hockey career with Minnesota. And I think it would be right, safe so to there's... say that part of the reason you had to wait a little longer was because this was a tough year overall. Okay, uh, for you. LA's you on the clock. 32 games this LA, past season because a skate Devils, cut your Tampa. arm back in December. So that uh, set you back a little bit. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the pandemic has taken a toll on you being able to really prove yourself on the ice. So what has life been like for you now? How are you trying to stay in shape both uh, mentally and physically as you get ready to continue your hockey career? Yeah, last season was really tough for me. Um, you know, getting that pretty gruesome arm injury with, with the skate blade. Uh, okay. You know, that, that was really tough. And, you know, with the They're pandemic, still talk my season was Oh, short, talking to Damon but, Hunt. Um, you know, I'm finally oh, glad I got drafted. Way back and, at 65th. You know, now, now moving forward, you know, uh, these last couple months, I've been training really hard. I've been skating really hard. And, you know, I'm kind of just ready for a fresh start here with Minnesota and with my club team back in the Western Hockey League. All right, let me ask you, for the Minnesota Wild fans that are watching, I have one actually to the right of me right here. Uh, what what kind of player are you? What can they look forward to down the road when you eventually hopefully make your way to the Minnesota Wild? Oh, the Canucks. Yeah, my game consi consists of a two-way defenseman. Um, I bring lots of energy. I like to be physical. And, you know, I, I like to shut down top line, but I think what completes my game is, you know, like having a two-way game, so, you know, being – to create offense and be part of the rush as well. Well, I appreciate that you already learned the saying, the state yeah, of hockey. That means a lot, especially coming from a man that's just trying to get ahead here. I'll show thanks you the for doing your second. homework. And as yeah. a wild fan, I'm already rooting for you. And thanks <laughs> for the time. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Adnan, back to you. My writing is just getting worse and worse. And EJ, you see some of those picks coming off the board. Wyatt Kaiser, EJ was talking about the guy who's big in his ceramics. Last year, he made around 120 items. The only issue is they kept running out of clay. He was so talented. His grandfather, a goalie at Bemidji State, played the 1976 USA Olympic team. So there's lots of interesting stories, both on the ice and off the ice as well. And you can definitely sense uh, that young man's excitement there. You see Yanni Yermo as Woo! well. Okay, uh, the there's Alex Left Frere. Uh, I know some of you were waiting for him to get picked. He just got picked, snatched up by L.A., a right winger. As we're talking about the Minnesota Wild, one of their assistant GMs. Am I shouting? They sound like I'm shouting. How does that? How do I sound? Sorry, I'm a projector. I'm from the fat. I project. As well as he can. We're all thinking about you, brother. We love you. Thank you. Now let's jump into Yoni uh, Yermo, who uh, is a guy that, quite frankly, had an awesome year last season in the junior leagues in in Finland. So he has this great year. Here we are. Pandemic hits. Now everybody's back playing. He's he's Uh, They're talking about Yoni Yermo right now, by the way, for for Vancouver fans. And I thought that might give him a little bit more of a boost in his draft. We had him rated about 47. So I'm a little surprised by this pick. Uh, he's just a real mobile guy for his size. At six foot four, 190 pounds, he gets around the ice so well. Uh, this is a guy that I think is going to really uh, be a great player one day for the Vancouver Canucks. I love this pick for them. All right, some people comparing to Lindell, actually, as far as the edge. Yes, he's got that so. type of... Uh, range in his game. Yeah, Jersey's on the clock. Yanni, your All right, Alex Lafreniere. That's right. Not to be confused with Alexi Lafreniere. This is a guy expected to play at Harvard. His dad and Rob played well, hockey for one year at Princeton oh. and three years at BC. Oh, Listen, yeah. EJ right? that is some Bax higher is, learning, uh, baby. That is some higher learning, sure. my friend. And you know what? This young man comes from the great state of New Jersey, so we have to throw that out there from Chatham, New Jersey, hey, playing in the LA. USHL right with the morning and the scouts that I talked right to winger. really like this player. They think he's got good skill. He's really smart. Just didn't be, need to be a little bit patient with him. Planning to play at Harvard, as you mentioned. So he's got the smarts to his game. Played his youth hockey here, in the, as I say, in New Jersey with the Colonials and the Avalanche programs. Two really good programs. Was at the Kent Fair School yeah. as well. And now in the USHL, headed to Harvard. But uh, the scouts raved about the character about this kid. So that is something that's really important. The LA Kings are in that rebuilding process. They've been adding a lot of really good young players to the mix. I think this young guy is somebody that could be part of it a couple of years down the road. Give him the time. The scouts love him. They just think this is one of those guys that you just love having on your team. All right, EJ, appreciate the insight there when it comes to LaFerriere and good. Yeah, setup Nico there. does. Looks like to he's the still Garden available. State. Picks are coming in. If I'm not mistaken, Fast I don't remember him Back to Bill Daly, the deputy commission. Here to make New Jersey selection, the 84th pick overall. Oh, New Jersey Thompson, just selected him. Speaking of amateur the, scouting for the New Jersey Devils. Oh, the Devils. All right. Speaking of the Devils and Devils. New Jersey Devils are proud to select from the Wealth Storm, Nico Dawes. Nico Dawes. So this guy was born in Germany, moved to Canada as a baby. He's got dual citizenship. So born in Germany, say, raised in Canada. We actually reached out to Germany to see if they'd consider him for the 2020 World Junior Team. They wouldn't. So Dawes made Team Canada and won the gold medal in January, playing a couple of games. How do you like that, Ouch. Apple, Dawes? That hurts. Massive fan. He of was ranked 56th overall. The goaltender they're talking about now by the Hawking News. in Halifax. He was the backup to Anthony Popovich and didn't get any time. So he spent some time after practice one day showing me the reverse VH, apparently a goaltending technique. You know, I'm always trying to learn a little bit. But uh, they're comparing that, him to Tuka Rask. He could be part of a really good team. And so he went into that offseason, lost 25 pounds, guys, rededicated himself, came back for George Burnett's 12th storm, and was lights out in the first half. Never having been a part of Hockey Canada's program of excellence previously, that's a difficult thing to do, to jump right in, and was actually the starter for Canada at that World Juniors. It didn't quite go quite so well. Weeks. A lot of pressure for a young guy who hasn't really seen that you stage. Name. So he cooled name. down a little bit after Welcome. that. Was hurt in our prospects game. Then rebounded. Had an unbelievable year. A tall guy, really um, in terms of his technical oh, yeah. play, really sound that. in that Nico regard. So I devils. love the fact that he's getting an opportunity here. You know, these goaltenders, as they get older, they a year is already for Nico Dawes. I tend to like to draft the goaltenders a little bit older because they're a little bit more <laughs> 
Yes, the, the Pens are only scouting goalies. Yeah. So really impressed with Nico Dazi. I hope he keeps up that hard work and keeps trending upward. The goalie at a goal. Thank you for that, Sam Cosentino. Once again, oh, Ronin's okay, so Tampa's just picked. For all those listing as right winger, sure Maxim Grosha. The power play, the great Steve Cooley. That's coming up after the draft. So, guys, check it out. That'll be there on Sirius XM. We continue right now here on Sportsnet on NHL Network in America. Look at the fans applauding and cheering. So great to see. There's smiles everywhere for the Nico Dawes and his family. Imagine a future uh, where machine damn you would commercial. trash sleep. Damn you. Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This already does that. Uh, oh. We'll learn about uh, uh, Ross of uh, Lord One day, you'll be able to take an ECG. It already does that. Really? Oh. Does it do that? Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining me once again. Uh, we're like, yeah, three, over three hours in, three hours and 20 minutes in here. This is quite the marathon. Uh, one, two, three, and leave. We're still in the third round. Oh, my. Free yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, and it's it's God, going by pretty free fast. Free delivery is back at Little Caesars. This is so exciting. Order with us online and get yours today. Delivery, delivery. When you commit to setting the new standard. Uh, if you happen to be new, uh, thanks, you know, welcome. Um Please consider, uh, you know, subscribing, liking, hitting that notification bell. Um, I'll be, this isn't my job. I'd like it to be one day. Um, I work in the film industry uh, on a gig by gig basis, and I've been a little busy lately. Um, Right but now, get zero percent financing for up to ninety six we'll months. Definitely be around. Uh, I, I should Plus, be around first three tomorrow. Are on us. Um, definitely Friday. You're fixing the drawer. Uh, so yeah. I'll be good time. my so ears to the ground, trying to put to out as morning. many uh, trade Actually, videos. I just checked the RBC possible. mobile app, and we're a little ahead this month. So, so yeah, thanks. And, um, Way ahead of you. See, this is fun. We do. Is it, is it too early to drink? Do you have a guy in mind? Or? Banking at home is easy with RBC. And it's iPad. almost 12. Switch to RBC and get the latest iPad. It's a cider in the cost. fridge with my name on it. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up after. Register yeah. your kids for the we'll Team see. Rogers Community Draft for a chance to get access to pro uh, athlete and They're probably going to be a few fees. Text ahead by the time I get back. Com slash get drafted. The Whopper at Burger King, with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. That's a legit good burger. Russell. That's great. Oh, my God. This is good. You can taste how fresh this is. And it tastes like it just came off the grill. Russell. It's Russell. the Whopper, Russell. and nothing but the Whopper. When they've got the favorite, you take the slap shot on the underdog. When social media says, no chance, you're chirping to prove them wrong. When it's got frenzy time, post games taste sweeter. Make a play. Bodog.net. Okay, for those of you interested, I found uh, uh, Grosso, uh, who had a NHL draft here, uh, presented by EA Sports 2021. We are uh, right winger, six for 294 pounds. Elliot Friedman, as this is a crazy week, not only do we have the draft uh, last night, the 13th all they for say, the Russian but then in less World Juniors team. Agency has size and uses it well. A busy week for you. Friedman's going to talk start now, so the in Vancouver. he's a good insider. I'll shut up for a second. In terms of them trying to find a deal with Jacob Markstrom. Markstrom with a Vancouver. Well, as the week turned into this one, Jamie, I do believe that Vancouver looked at two primary objectives, seeing if they could secure a trade with Arizona for Oliver ekman Larson, and seeing if they could re-sign Jacob Markstrom. I think they've really worked hard on both of those things. We know that ekman Larson has a deadline of Friday at noon, uh, noon Eastern when free agency begins. And yeah, also that Markstrom, deadline, huh? You know, I, I think the Canucks have really learned that there are some teams wow. out there that are patiently waiting for their opportunities to get their chances at him if he hits the market. So at this point in time, I think a lot of us are expecting him to hit the market. And I'm wondering if there's a stealth team out there, someone like Edmonton, who's waiting for the opportunity to get a chance to talk to him. Elsewhere in the Pacific, of course, hey, the, the Vegas Golden Knights have an interesting goaltender situation so there. What's Florida. the latest you're hearing okay. coming out of Vegas? Well, we haven't had a lot of big player trades so far in the last couple of days. We've had the Montreal-Columbus deal. We had the Rangers-Kings deal today. Um, but I think one of the teams that's definitely trying the hardest to clear some room is Vegas. And obviously, the Flurry situation is a big one. I mean, goaltenders is the position to watch. There's a lot of available goaltenders around the National Hockey League. But there's no question that when it comes to trying to clear salary cap space, Vegas is probably the busiest team in the National Hockey League right now. It's a challenge. 
challenge to do it because teams are making it very difficult to agree to take on money. You really have to sweeten the pot. When we look at the RFA situation across the National Hockey League, are there any surprises so oh. far that you've seen? I think that we're, it's just before 3 o'clock Eastern time right now, Jamie, and that means the qualifying offers are due. The deadline is in two hours. And we've seen Edmonton is now officially announced. Andreas Athanasio and Matt Benning will be free agents. We're still waiting for Troy Stetcher in Vancouver. We're waiting that? for Ryan Stroman with the New York Rangers. We're waiting for those kinds of decisions. So those decisions could have a big impact on what kind of things could be done out there. I think the other one today that really caught a lot of people was Kyle Turris in Nashville. The Predators bought him out along with a defenseman named Steven Santini. Um, I think there's going to be interest in Nashville oh, uh, and Turris at a lower number to come play for them. And you take a look at what the Predators are doing. They've also announced they're not re-signing Craig Smith or Michael Granlin. Some people are really wondering really? if they're going to take a big Craig ride Smith, and someone to play I'm their I'm a little surprised side. that they didn't resign him. Lots of questions still to be answered over the next couple of days. Uh, Thank you, Elliot. Let's send it back over to Deputy my, Commissioner Bill Daly now. With the 86th selection, here is Tony Feltrin, amateur scout for the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues are pleased to select from the US UNDP BU forward Dylan Peterson. That's the 86 picture. So we're Dylan about. Peterson, how impressive sentiment. is this young man? As you see the reaction there, as indeed he gets selected. He lived in Taiwan for two years during his childhood and learned to speak Mandarin. He's got three sisters with a 14-year age gap. Is expected to play for Boston University this year. Tony Bernardo, head coach, University of Wisconsin, has these thoughts. Dylan Peterson, another U.S. prospect out of the U.S. Development Program. Big, solid kid that's still got a lot of growing to do. Uh, a little bit light uh, for his big frame, uh, but a power forward for sure. One of those guys that's in on the four check, strong on the puck, takes the puck to the net well. Uh, his numbers can get better because he'll get more polished around the net as he gets uh, as he gets older. But he creates a ton of chances. He's hard to play against with being that big body. Loves to have the one-on-one -on -one battles with the defenders in the corners, along the boards, and at the net front. And I see this kid continuing to get better. Reminds me a lot of Blake Wheeler, the way he gets up and down the ice. Uh, not quite as polished yet, but he has that style of play and, and uh, certainly has great potential. Thanks nice to that, Coach Granato. You look at Dylan Peterson, the profile there, and the thoughts to Tony Granato. Lots your thoughts? Yeah, he's a big guy. I think Charlie Coyle, formerly of the Minnesota Wild, currently of the Boston Bruins. Mm -hmm. He's just got that kind of capability. He also can leave you at times wanting just There's a little bit on, more. Uh, you look Patterson, at the package of his center, attributes six and you're pounds, maybe a little uh, bit bigger numbers on his portion. People would love to see him run some numbers. That would really elevate his value. That's what he'll be working on. But overall, I think Florida he's got a bright picked, future. Uh, Justin and he is Sergei, a guy the right that winger hopefully at some point can be that prototypical shut-down third-line center that can give you some offense. Uh, that's the thought there. Dylan Peterson, like you said, gives you some offense, big body, impactful when he's on his A game. As we take a look at the other selections coming in, at number 87 is Justin Sortif. So Sortif is a guy, as we take a closer look at his profile, a player that can offer lots of different intangibles here. 12 goals in his final 16 games played. He scored 23 goals in 2018-19 as a 16-year-old. Sam Cosentino, what else you got? Sort of, yeah. 5'11". Really right. polite young man. Right the winger. type of guy that you want to pull for. But I watched him first onto the scene with the Vancouver Giants as a 15-year-old. Oh, Boston just picked uh, Trev, Trevor Clintar at uh, 89. And you can see a lot of different things in this game. The skating ability, really light on the skates, yet a powerful guy when going north and south. And then the one thing that really stood out to me is you talked about that goal stretch towards the end of the year. He has a, a kind of a sneaky release. It's tough to read it coming off his stick. So he shoots the puck really well. And when it comes to sort of, again, you, you'd, you'd think that he was going to be a guy that was just going to put up massive point numbers. The numbers were good. I think that's an area in which he can prove on just playing more consistently, night in, night out, work on that play away from the puck. Yet when he has the puck, really impressive. It's tough to get it off him. Lumpus and that caps, tricky release, be, good uh, job just adjusting the blade fit. angle for that ability to score a goal. So he's one of the guys that I'm pulling for. Again, I'm always partial to the guys that I get the chance to meet throughout the course of the season. A very polite young man. 
I like that, cause. Uh, politeness goes a long way, right? A firm handshake, yes, sir, no, sir, please, and thank you, just like they teach you the Cosentino family, I'm sure. All right, let's go back here, look at some of the picks. Nico Dawes went 84th of the New Jersey Devils. I'm sure he's a polite young man. Let's find out. Jamie Hirsch, EJ Raddick. Yeah, let's find out indeed. We're so happy to have Nico joining us now. Congratulations, Nico. Uh, we saw the reaction of your parents and the relief on your face to finally hear your name called. I'm sure it has been a, an anxious few hours for you, just waiting to find out what your future holds. What was your reaction to finding out you'd be going to the Devils? Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely a lot of relief. Um, oh, you know, cool. Michael. Cool, Michael. Did you have any expectation yeah, on a Bruins, team? Uh, Did you set of any feeling that maybe Hunter, the Devils yeah, would be a team that was interested in you? Right up there. Uh, not, no, if you can see that. Me, so, you know, um, I've talked to, I talked to a few teams obviously before, but I have my my you know, uh, my just, live uh, feed to to video my that I see. It's minimized. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I want so, to go back to the year you had it, uh, because it was really a breakout you might be season it for you in, the, uh, in the OHL coaches um, poll. You finished why I'm most, you how most improved looks all the time. player. What was it about this past uh, season my that really helped split you split find between, your game uh, more than ever? Uh, that and you know the, um, the I think there's a lot the, of things, uh, NHL feed, um, you know confidence sports was a big thing for me. Feed. and uh, opportunity was another big thing you know finally being able to you know come into that starting role and um, be able to play games all the time it, it really helped my my confidence and, and my game so yeah. Well, congratulations. Oh, yeah, you can see the board see pretty well. sweater okay. right over your left shoulder there that looks like it could be New Jersey Devils red. I'm sure it's not, <laughs> but it will be very soon. So thanks so much for the time here today, and okay. congratulations. Oh, uh, Islanders picked a right Thank winger, Alexander. Oh, my. How do you pronounce that? That's right. Devil's the right. Uh, as you take a look at the big wow, board here, okay. some of the other selections that have been made. That's a you difficult see one there. Trevor Kuntar there at number 89 for the Boston Bruins. He was going to start talking about Kuntar. A season ago, his dad, Les, was a goalie for Montreal for six games back in 93, 94. Lots, well, what do you have? Yeah, it is a familiar name. It yeah. uh, just feels like it's a typical Kuntar Boston Bruin. About. But the one thing you'll notice about him right away, he's one of a number of guys uh, today and even in the first round, that have been passed over in the draft in the past. He is an on-time 01. Does that mean anything? No, it doesn't mean anything about the player's ability. What it means to me is that teams are so good now, and not only going through the kids year by year, but also going back and rechecking in kids that maybe they thought about the year before. I think that's where Kuntar fits in. He's one of those guys that you hate to play against every day in practice you love to have him on your team but you hate to play against him even in practice he reminds me kind of like a jordan martin Luke. he's a heavy guy he'll be hard on a four check he'll do Vegas the right things all up, the time. Uh, jackson he could that be a valuable year. guy for the bruins down the line what kind of player you love to have on your team and if he's on the other team you hate to play against him. exactly <laughs> thank <laughs> you exactly so kuntar is the pick there for the boston bruins in terms of some other selections being done uh, Leo Luf, I believe, also in the mix here, the defenseman from Barjestad out of Sweden. The twin brother Linus is also a center. Reader, what can you tell us about Leo Luf? Well, Luf is not a center. Uh, he's a left shot defenseman. Uh, he's a tremendous skater, as we've seen so many times. You get players come out of Sweden, players come out of Europe, and the skating ability that he's got, that's something that's just going to carry on moving forward. St. Louis Blues are not necessarily looking for defense, but you can never have too many defensemen uh, and his puck moving abilities because of his skating are something that's going to go now, um, this, this is a this is some of the best scouting reports you, you, I've heard. It says he isn't flashy. Biggest skills are skating and hockey IQ. You can skate, you have hockey IQ. You don't need to be flashy, especially as a defenseman. Get excellent first pass availability, excellent understanding of the game. And in today's game, you see it so often if you can skate and you've got some size, which he has, he's listed, I've got him listed at 6'2", 176 pounds, plenty of room to fill out. But when you can skate as a defenseman, that is so key in the neutral zone. You can slow teams down, slow the speed down because you're able to move up quickly and be able to backtrack quickly on the back skating as well as turning and your pivots, which Loof is very good at his agility and his footwork. The Rangers just picked up a sentiment, a Oliver Tarnstrom. In today's game, a lot more defensemen we talked about being uh, scouted in today's game have that ability to shut teams down in the neutral zone because of their skating. And Luf is one of these defensemen, again, a few years away, but he's got all sorts of potential, probably a few more years to put on some upper body and lower body strength and add to that 176 pounds and probably end up around the, the 205 pounds at six foot two. All right, so uh, Leo Luf going to fill it a little bit. Linus, I'm sure, is leading the cheers right now in Sweden. Thrilled to see that selection there. As you take a look at the big board. It's the base on the clock. What's that? Filling up fast. I was going to say, yeah. 
Kuntar we talked about, Leo Lufa, there's three other names in there as well. We're going to take a quick break and come back and talk about some of these guys here when we come back. Fourth uh, round, in fact, coming up. Yeah. The 2020 NHL Draft is presented by EA Sports NHL 21. This year, you'll be able to pull off new dates and moves inspired by the league's most groundbreaking innovators. Recognize greatness in EA Sports NHL 21. As a sports fan life coach, it's my job to guide you to a better tomorrow. Now, with Sportsnet Now. You may have watched illegal sports streams in the past, but pirating is no way of life. I mean, when's the last time you even saw a real pirate? Never. Because they're all dead. From scurvy and cannonballs. And cannonballs loaded with scurvy. <laughs> so, don't be a dead pirate. Live your better tomorrow. Now, with Sportsnet Now. Okay. Three, four, Some two board three, action two, happening. <laughs> It's like a canvas. It's which the lighting is better. Just keep on getting some fresh so much in your step with a free foot long. Right now, buy a foot long step on the subway up and get a second one would... free. Huh. Order ahead. Pick it up quickly and safely. Only at Subway. <laughs> Celebrate Canada's talented and racially diverse filmmakers during the Real World Film Festival this October 14th to 19th online. Get your pass now at realworld.ca. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system could make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. It's a little bit better. <gasps> SoClean Clean is the world's first automated CPAP cleaner and disinfecting device. So clean is fast and effective, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP uh, germs Reese. that can build up what in your mask and hose. Here, uh... Try So Clean now, risk free for 30 nights. And when you order now, get $50 off. Home, yeah. Just go to SoClean.com today. The So Clean works, and I couldn't believe how easy it was to use. Thanks so everyone for sticking around. Uh, we're obviously in the middle of a commercial. Masks, destroying CPAP germs oh. without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, Column. close that the lid, and walk away. Too. Voila! Disinfected and ready to use. Uh, Go to SoClean.com to try SoClean risk-free for 30 nights and get $50 off. Hell, hell, hell. Just go to SoClean.com today. At TSC, discover surprises every day so you can spark new connections, surprise your taste buds, and beat your personal best. Today will surprise you. Shop TSC.ca. Today's shopping choice. What's going on, guys? Nasher here, and we've got some big news. The NHL is giving you a first look at EA Sports NHL 21. We're hosting the First Look Tournament, and we're playing the new Hunt Rush Mode, where style counts. The more creative the goal, the more points you'll get. We have eight competitors, including Brady Kachuk, ready to go. NHL Gaming First Look Tournament, today on Sportsnet One. Honda, the official vehicle of the NHL. We welcome you to the 2008 NHL Entry Draft. Isn't that exciting? A fourth rounder in all eight. Great and Holby. Making his first NHL no, start. Not, I man. expect a big performance from Holby today. My goodness, Wayne Holby. Okay. Drive south, south. Hi, how you doing? Welcome. Oh, Welcome, everybody. They rush out onto the ice to congratulate Brayden Holby. The Washington Capitals for the first time in their 40 uh, year history. Are the Stanley Cup champions. <laughs> Incredible memories there when it came to the Washington right. Capitals. Doc Emmerich there with a call. Braden Holby was selected Tampa by the Capitals just back in 2008 as the fourth round. Is about um, to begin. There's some yeah, 93rd overall, fourth round draft Jack Thompson. Active players. That's right. Johnny Hockey. Go, go, Goudreau. Back in 2011 by the Flames. Victor Arvidsson by Nashville. Matias Ekholm also by the Prads. Uh, TJ Brody by the Flames and Jacob Slavin as well. 2012 by the Carolina Hurricanes. That fourth round is about to come up. But first, the final pick of the third round. Back to Deputy Commissioner, Bill Daly. With the 92nd selection overall, here again is Gordy Clark from the New York Rangers. New York Rangers select from AIK, Oliver Tarnstrom. 
All right, so Jack Thompson is the guy. Listen, uh, first, no tear, loves golfing. His favorite actor is Adam Sandler. So you think Happy Gilmore is his favorite movie? But it's actually a miracle. That's what I can tell you about Jack Thompson off the ice. Defenseman with Sudbury out of the OHL. So Jack Thompson is a selection there. So interesting selection. Sam Cosentino, I gave you the hey. off the ice flavor. Give me the on the ice story. Uh, we're in the fourth round now. Yeah, it starts with his skating. A really serious young man who was uh, thrust into a role in his family as his dad passed uh, at a young age. But a guy who really has his eye on the prize. The skating is the big thing with him. Now, here's a guy who had 13 goals at Nan. That's the most by an OHL draft eligible defenseman this year. Jamie Drysdale, who went in the first round last oh, night, a bit of a had nine goals. Here. So there uh, is that element to his game. No question he's got a good shot. He really has that knack for finding a way to get shots uh, through from the point. And what does everybody love? A right shot defenseman who can skate. Jack Thompson fits that bill perfectly with the Sudbury Wolves. Chatted with his coach, Corey Stillman, uh, a little bit two nights ago and really impressed and was wondering where he would go. Figured this would be about the spot. So a nice pick there for the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, good stuff, Cos. Thank you. That's the story when it comes to Jack Thompson, the 93rd pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Trade details here just involving the Tampa Bay Lightning, acquiring the 116th pick and the 147th pick as the Philadelphia Flyers acquire the 94th pick. So yeah. they Okay, so uh, uh, Light, Lightning trade their, their pick uh, to, the Flyers, to the Flyers, the 94th, to for 116th and 147th. Bailey, Deputy Commissioner. To announce the 94th selection overall, uh, Brent Flair from the Philadelphia Flyers. From the Kingston Frontenac, Zaid Wisdom. Love this story. First off, love the Limestone City. So shout out to Kingston. Zaid Wisdom, Zade right? Wisdom, what his story so is they're all talking about, about right now. His dad, a nice Jamaican Philly? immigrant, long haul truck driver. He's raised by his mom, Mary, and grandma, Kitty. Part of his childhood included trips to the food bank, lengthy time without electricity. He told the athletic, I'm going to make it one day, and I'm going to make sure our power never gets shut off again. This is an inspired young man, cause. He sure is, and he plays with the sort of, of edge that he will not let anyone get in his way to achieve his dream. Now, a lot of people are saying, all right, he picked up points well, because he was playing like with exceptional like player Shane Wright. And later, at the games, end of the year, with a guy goals, Martin Kromiak, who has yet to be picked. But the fact of the matter is, there is no question, this guy drives the play. He is in the battle all the time. He is in the fight. He's in the corners digging Zade pucks out. He's nice going to the too. net front. Right. When anyone comes near Shane Wright, took, turn around because you're going to have to deal with Zade Wisdom. So he's a thick guy who's supremely athletic. I love that power forward element to his game. But there's undercover skill to this player. And the fact is, he's going to continue to grow. Under Paul okay. McCall, a new head coach there. We spent some time in the NHL with Florida, with the Toronto Maple Leafs, Shane Wright and Martin Kromiak. Florida Look just picked a trio, defenseman, Michael Benning. Playing again in the Ontario Hockey League to be one of the best lines in all the junior hockey moving forward. I really like this pick, and obviously a big move up to 94 for Philadelphia to get him there. Yeah, because we had him at 106, so 12 spots up. He goes 94 power forwards that like him in Philadelphia. Michael Benning is the pick at number 95. Again, you like family history. Brother Matt with Edmonton. Dad Brian played 568 games. His uncle Jim, GM with Vancouver. EJ, the betting family, they love uh, hockey. Sure. Yes, they do. And uh, the latest edition uh, gets wrapped in the NHL, Michael Benning. And uh, if you like assists, he's your guy too. At that, 63 assists right in the shot Alberta defense. Junior Hockey League of Sherwood Park this year. Second among all AJHL skaters and uh, 63 Nuts. assists, most by a defenseman in a single season in that league since 85 86 when Bill Davidson did that. So, uh, the skinny, so to speak, on uh, Benning is that uh, he's an offensive defenseman, obviously, by those numbers. Smart, he has really good anticipation. The skating is kind of the question mark. Is he going to be able at the next level to beat pressure? Can he get find his way out of traffic and then use those skills as he gets moves up the ladder? Is he expected to play at the University of Denver? So we will keep an eye on him there. And uh, another betting making it into the National Hockey League. Yeah, the betting sticks just keep coming, AJ. Good news there for Michael Benning okay. at number 95. We got 81 Calgary people Flames watching. Nice. At number 96. Three hours and 40 minutes Tesla, in. So he gets picked by the Calgary uh, Flames. Oh, what Calgary is next. There in Calgary, but with more. They got a goalie. Got selected, what he's feeling like. Let's go back to Jamie and AJ. 
Yeah, thanks, Adna. And we are happy to have Will Cooley, the newest member of the New York Rangers, joining us here now. Will, congratulations, first of all. Uh, Danielle Chetchilov, your thoughts about goaltender for Ranger. Calgary. We know they have ninety six overall pick this year. Alexi Lafreniere. They made the qualifying round of the playoffs already, so they're already kind of ahead of schedule. What was your reaction to finding out you would be joining this elite franchise? Oh well, yeah, I was uh, I was really excited. Obviously, me and my family shared a great moment there. Um, obviously, being picked by such a great organization with uh, such good history, um, obviously, it was really exciting. And uh, yeah, I was just, uh, super ecstatic. And uh, one of my family was really uh, happy and uh, proud of me. It was just a great moment altogether. Well, you're a big fella, and I know the the fans in New York. I've been around Ranger fans my whole life. They like big, tough players. Is that what you hope to bring to the NHL if and when that time comes? Yeah, definitely. I definitely They're just interviewing William Cooley, and, uh, uh, the left winger. Clearly the Rangers uh, picked. rough and tough physical game in New York. I think uh, uh, that's way back uh, one of my big strengths. A while ago. I think um, you know, that's what's going to make me successful at the next level is uh, playing physical and uh, – Really, and Detroit uh, really just picked up uh, right winger right Sam Stan. Yeah, our research team here does a great job of picking out all these nuggets about you, not only on the ice, but off the ice as well. They tell me that you can answer any question about Star Wars. I don't know if you can answer this question. Which is your favorite Star Wars movie? Oh, that's an easy question. It's obviously uh, Revenge of the Sith, the third one. That's uh, my favorite, not only Obviously, favorite Star Wars movie, but favorite movie in general. So, uh, that's I don't great. know. When did you start I don't know Star about Wars that. Why the huge fandom? Oh, I just uh, started watching it when I was a kid with my dad, and uh, I just love, uh, just love the characters and the story, and uh, I think it's uh, just some great, some great movies and some great stuff put together. All right, you say you can answer any question about it. I'm not any expert on Star Wars, so I don't have that question. But let me ask you Come this. Come on, guys. You know, I'd rather than the foresee the interview, player interviews for the most part, sure and just stick to the, the clock answer. here and the picks. It's. Um, do you mean in terms of Star Wars? Yeah. Just any Asking people what your favorite Wars. movie is. I mean, come on. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, the hardest do this question later. I think uh, that many people struggle to answer would be who is Anakin and Skywalker's father? I am your father. Isn't that the, I don't know. This is terrible. Yeah, well, why? 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 So why? Bring it why? 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 He's the Star Wars guy here, not us. You got this. That's good stuff. I'm sure he's a great <laughs> kid. Nothing against him. It's just <laughs> the in general. It's like Luke, interviewing players. Your just... father. That's great. <laughs> I wanted to hear him talk about Baby Yoda or Anakin's origin, something like that. <laughs> give us the answer. Come on. I, I don't know the answer. Uh, Star Wars is no. not my forte. Let him give us the answer. Okay, what is the answer? Oh, it's, uh, he actually doesn't have a father. He was created by, like, these midichlorians, which, uh, they're in, like, every living Jesus, thing. come on, the guys. Force. So he doesn't have a father. It's kind of like Mary the Virgin, where his mom just kind of got, uh, like, had him with uh, no real father. So he's kind of, that's why he's the chosen one, but it's. Pretty complicated stuff. It's a so trick question. A trick that's question. That. That's that's a trick question. Sounds very complicated. Wow. That's a, yeah, that's a hard one to answer. Yeah. That's a hard one to answer. You know so. what? That's that's why you were only, only, only the real Star Wars fans know that. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. That's why you're an elite Star Wars mind. You're obviously an elite <laughs> hockey player as well, <laughs> since you are now drafted into the National Hockey League. So uh bring it back Ugh. to the ice where we can, you know, add a little more to the maybe, conversation. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I also read that you strongly considered uh, attending Penn State but then eventually decided to go the OHL route. What went into that decision? Okay, uh, so last pick that they picked up yeah, was think, uh, uh, a 97, 97 for Detroit was uh, Sam uh, Stange. Stange? Stange? A right winger. And there's here. I'll turn the board around so you can see it. I made the right choice and it worked out well. And Windsor's obviously a great town. I know. Why they – yeah, I'm not a big fan of – um, I mean, look, let's, let's just, face it, right? Most – Interviews yeah, with hockey sure players are pretty cool. Well, I think we hear your phone um, buzzing off the hook. It's and then all your when you interviewees you decide to, to you know, talk about something Thanks else so like this right us. now, it's just like... Good luck with your further development. The, why not go over some more stats right. with some right. of the right. other yeah. players? Let's I mean, go back to the deputy commissioner, Bill Daly. I, maybe now. I'm being mean. I don't think so. Maybe it's just my preference. With the 97th overall selection, go ahead, Detroit. Thank God. Uh, okay, so we know about this already. Red Wings are proud to select Sam Stein, Wisconsin. 
Sam Stang. Stang. That's how they pronounce it. Okay. Love a guy Stang. who's a star. They don't say the, the sport. E at the end. Two sports star in high school. Uh, there's been a trade player because there in both hockey and baseball. Um, he was the 98 pick is no longer 2000, Montreal. It's He's committed to the San University Jose. of Wisconsin to play hockey this year. Speaking of, head coach Tony Renato, what do you got? <laughs> Sam Stang, I'm real excited about because I get a chance to coach the kid. I've, I've watched him the last couple of years. He's a kid that's a little bit under the uh, radar. And now San Jose is on the clock right now. Wisconsin High School uh, played all the way uh, up until his senior year at, at uh, Eau Claire High School. Uh, uh, played his first year in the USHL last year. Did extremely well. Yeah, get her off these interviews. Goals. Yeah. Uh, so that step that yeah, he was made the worst interview ever. High school to to the UHL was outstanding. Uh, very big, strong. Uh, that's not a Cavs jersey. It's a T-shirt. These are all t -shirt. most of these are T-shirts. Uh, won the state championship. Uh, these are actually vintage MVP jerseys right here of by. Uh, in baseball, oh my god, year, by starter nice hockey player of the year. Starter, uh, you remember that? Yeah, that's like eight. Class. So you talk about I got, I got them at a vintage store. Uh, this kid's special. Um, jerseys are uh, so expensive. Coming into college, like, you know, I think you expect two hundred plus dollars. Uh, can skate, uh, I sort of live the month by month. Uh, Physicality-wise, he has the ability um, based I'm on his size worker, structure so to I be can't, a, a power forward. Uh, so these are all, yeah, these are all t-shirts. The grinding part of the game, would be something um, which that are still like thirty-five dollars Canadian for uh, but a, a t-shirt. Cool prospect. Uh, I find pretty. So there's no doubt Tony's excited expensive. about seeing him playing for the back. Uh, so there's no one. On. Uh, I mean, there uh, are season, some players on some of these t-shirts, well. like uh, but there's saying? no one on the back. Uh, of there's the a lot of things to like, but first of all, you have to point out the obvious. He is another one of those guys. It is another one draft. He was passed over last year, then he. Gets his game together. Am I a baseball fan? In the USA I used to be um, kids when I was a kid and teenager. It's not just Joe Pawlowski. You know, um, I used to be like really into numbers, numbers and everything. Kids coming uh, from Wisconsin as they up their game up until maybe in terms the, of the programs they're putting out. But mid to late nineties, and I just sort of gave up on it. I still lose. Very little get follow baseball, basketball, in your state in two sports, that kind of thing. I'm mostly in the hockey now. I just devote so much time to it. It's hard to Minnesota. Was another two do that and have a job, blah blah blah. blah. Uh, to be listening to Tony describe him, it, it sounds like he's describing a bigger version uh, well, of himself. That's who he's recording. Well, I don't know what the exchange rate is Tony right now. I think it's was a little bit back. Like, like a, we're taking 30 you know, cents difference. The NHL scene, so you got to keep that in mind when I say it. Took everybody by most surprise. Most of these t-shirts around, speed you know, go for this thirty-five dollars Canadian. Some of them I got on sale though. At, Maybe the at least half of them for the University of Wisconsin, which has a very rich tradition. Get no like Vegas jersey, yeah, Michigan that's definitely worth one getting. That's for sure. Best. From Sam Spade to Sam Stang, he's the pick there for the Red Wings. The San Jose Sharks selecting Brandon uh, Coe led North Bay know, in assists this past about. season. Always puts his left skate on first. He's also oh, when it comes to drawing. baseball, they love him up there well, in North Bay. Sammy, what'd you say to him or the OHL? I'm originally a. Uh, Oh, well, I've been uh, well, I'm originally right. from Toronto, so, so a, I'm a Blue Jays fan. Pick here for the San Jose um, I was, six, five, I was uh, going to school in Massachusetts was, um, for about uh, three, four years when they won the World Series. Uh, playing that was interesting. The North I was the other person cheering with the North Bay at the time. And this is a franchise that okay. has traditionally um, taken great San Jose has picked right winger Brandon Cole. And turning the National Hockey League players. Mike Amadio, I think about him. Nick Paul has got some time with the... Uh, Ottawa Senators, and I look at a guy like Barkley Goodrow, who just won a Stanley Cup, all coming from that program. So when it comes to Cole, this is a guy who works. We're talking about him now. He's a really good skater. He plays in North. Really Bay, good so skater. Six foot four. Market. Maybe doesn't get seen quite to the extent pounds. to some of the other players. But I, again, I, I like this pick because of the size, the skating ability, and of course the ability to score goals coming from a program that does a really good job developing bigger players. All right, Cos, thank you. That's the story when it comes to okay. Brandon Cole. As you said, Devils just picked a center, Yarmir Number 99 Pitlick. selection. That's right, folks. New Jersey Devils, Yarmir Pitlick is now off the board as he will be going to the New Jersey Devils. The Oilers are coming up momentarily. Nashville, Montreal, and he the was. Rangers. Plenty more action coming up almost four hours in here today. <laughs> This is game changing. The pageantry. A new era begins. The superstars. Another commercial. Okay. The thrills. Um, when I was uh, going to high school in uh, Massachusetts, um, I bet a lot of my teachers on the Jays and winning in both years, obviously, against uh, one against Atlanta, one against Philly. The Philadelphia Phillies. Dinner's ready. And uh, 
Yeah, Eggs? I took a lot of teachers' Dinner? monies. <laughs> Money. I thought we would try something uh, new. Those two years. That's weird. It's <laughs> not weird. And from friends, Your too. Your are weird. Anyway. Eggs for dinner baseball. isn't weird. You're weird for thinking it's Thoughts weird. Thoughts on the abs for next season. Days, well, they're, they're, they're favorites right now to win next year's Stanley Cup. And I don't doubt that at all. Devices, if, if, um, it would be interesting to see what they do with their goals. They keep saying so they're going to keep more. those two guys, Frasquez and Bubauer. Um, I mean, that's got to be an anomaly, right? A for them to lose two goaltenders in a playoff like that and have Hutchinson do that. And they still went to the seventh game against Dallas. That's pretty impressive. Visit well, with with the, the draft, with the prospect good. pool that they have, CSC they're going to be good for a long time. Every day, so you can spark new you connections. Know. I can see them being contenders, you know, for the next. And beat your personal best easily for the next Today few will years. Today surprise really. you. Shop tsc.ca so, yeah. today's shopping choice. Chromiak still not drafted. Yeah, that's kind of surprising, fast. huh? Time to call on Rolex. He's uh, ranked thirty second well, overall by the hockey news, by the way. With up to twenty five hundred dollars in savings and rebates on a featured furnace. If you're looking He's for a, a great left, deal now, left, uh, left uh, winger, right shot. The Whopper at Burger King with no artificial colors. Um, yeah, I mentioned them burgers. earlier. Uh, uh, they say he's uh, a lot like Tanner Pearson. That's, oh that's the hockey news, by good. the way. You can taste how he was also ranked 34th like by the, the scouting, uh, international the scouting services. Nothing but the Whopper. <laughs> Which is, uh, yeah, bizarre. He, he hasn't gone so early. Like this before. This is October. The remix. They say he's a smart offensive player. For the offensive blue line on down, he's money. His skating is better than some give him credit for. Um, his small game, his small area game is outstanding. He has good core strength. He's lost some life. Makes plays at high speeds. Welcome back to our coverage of the NHL draft. Take a look at Justin. Yeah, they don't say anything bad about him he here. It's very bizarre. He is headed to the Florida Panthers. Okay. Number eight, Whoa. Seven overall. His family and friends gathered to Pit looks a celebrate him and wish him well. I love this. Okay. Not at all. Pit looks a sentiment. He went to Jersey. Uh, Edmonton at 100 oh, picked pandemic, Carter Savoie. And now everything happening from the living room, but congratulations, <laughs> Justin. Uh, how would you describe the last few days and weeks getting ready for this big day? Uh, it was pretty nerve-wracking, actually, but also a lot of excitement. Um, oh, look, another finally come. Uh, player interview, June, Justin then, uh, Sordis, you know, uh, right-winger from uh, Florida Panthers. Panthers. And, uh, you know, I'm happy uh, that it finally did. All right, Justin, you're in you're in the Western Hockey League. Give the viewers a, a, you know around North Take America uh, an opportunity to, so to hear from Nashville's you. on on the um, clock here what right now. Strengths? Who do you who do you think you model your game after? Two, three, and four. Um, I model my game after uh, Nazem Kadri and TJ Oshie. Um, I feel like uh, I'm a well-rounded player. Uh, I'm able to kind of do uh, a little bit of everything. Um, I think, uh, Sounds like you are a big fan of Formula One racing as uh, Montreal, well. I New know York a Ducks. Formula One savant here, but <laughs> when did you get into the sport and what makes you uh, such a fan? Uh, I just like how fast those guys are able to go around corners and, uh, you know, the visualization that they kind of do before they get into their uh, the car. And okay. Really uh, a lot. Um, Nashville just picked um, a defenseman, Adam uh, Wills, and, um, Willsby, you know, at guys, 101st. Uh, it's dangerous what they Montreal is on the and, clock uh, now. They're able to keep their cool and, uh, you know, I guess kind of wheel around the track. It's uh, it's pretty amazing to watch. Uh, and it's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah, I don't know much about that, that particular sport, but I know about Lewis Hamilton. He wins a lot. That's what I know. He wins an awful lot. Yeah. No, he okay. no yeah. question about that. Yeah. Uh, what's the plans now for you in the coming days and weeks as we, you know, we have a little bit of uncertainty as to uh, certain leagues. So I was trying to catch start. up here. Uh, I know the USHL down here is going to start in November. Not quite sure what's going on in the Western Hockey League. Uh, what's the plan for you now moving forward over the next several weeks? Uh, it's probably just kind of preparing to go into my first NHL camp, obviously. Um, try and make a, a really good first impression there. And then obviously what comes with, uh, you know, the Western Hockey League, I'm not sure when it's going to start, um, but also preparing for uh, okay. you know, uh, uh, the season to start there. Um, live chat is picking really up here. Year. 
and uh, Call I just have next. to take yeah. the steps that I need to. We'll see if yeah, Montreal grabs him. Yeah, there's a lot of around the entire... Yeah, I keep on. I do hear lunches to the caps. I've been hearing that a while. There, Elliot. Now, remember, this is on Sportsnet, but it's an NHL network, feed, NHL network feed. So it's not the same feed I was watching yesterday. I, I much better like. Uh, I much like uh, English. I much prefer um, the Sportsnet feed than this NHL network one. It's, it's, yeah. The 2020 the American League Division Series is presented by Hot Snacks. It's game three of five for Dodger Stadium in L.A. It's the Oakland A's and the Houston Astros. Yes, the draft is still going on. We're just doing a commercial at the moment. Oh, wait a second. It's 12.30. No. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you know, we're going to try. And, we don't have the feed anymore. Um, but I'm going to try and keep up with the picks here. Dusty Baker has waited for this offense. Just give me a second. I'm going to switch over. Yeah, so, so my live feed just finished. So I'm going to have to um, talk up a bunch here right now. Uh -huh. uh, just give me a second. I'm just going to catch up. Uh, what round are we in? Uh, we're in round four. Okay. All right. So the feed just finished, um, but I'm going to keep going here. If you want to stick around, um, maybe I should put some uh, some music on or something. <laughs> All right, so we're still only up to uh, Nashville's um, pick, last pick, uh, which was Adam Willsby um, from Sweden, a defenseman. He's six foot, um, one hundred eighty three pounds, and that's what we know about him so far. And we'll just uh, refresh this every so. So, so far, that's what I'm waiting. Does anyone else um, uh, who's on the live chat right now, does anyone have a live feed that's continuing um, to play the NHL, NHL draft? Anyone? Oh, Go Caps says, um, what are you watching, Go Caps? Are you on NBC or something? Or I want to check. Okay. Yeah, there's no more commentary left. Um, I'm going to try and go to the NHL network. Maybe I can s find something there. Um, oh, it looks like we have some action here. A Montreal pick at 102. Uh, it hasn't been updated on my end yet. Um, but it looks like uh, K-Row was saying Jack Smith. Let's see if I can get a uh, full draft tracker from the NHL. Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying seeing if I can find um, another feed from the NHL network. I don't know if they have one because I – nothing's working here. I will update you on the picks. Have no, um, have no fear. Don't worry. Be happy. Okay.
NHL is giving me a problem with the live feed, that is. Round four. Okay, wow. All right, here we go. Um, I don't have a live feed, but uh, I've got a bit of more of an up, better updated uh, tracker here. So, yeah, we jumped ahead here. Adam Wilmsby. Jack Smith was a center for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, the New York Rangers uh, just picked Dylan Ger uh, Gerard. excuse me. Uh, a goalie, a uh, Canadian goalie. Ducks just picked up uh, defenseman Timo Nickel. Um, and Florida Panthers are next. Uh, I'll get to some of those stats in just a second or so. Let me just up to, uh, to update this board. Uh, okay, where are we? Uh, we need 101, 102. So 102, Jack Smith. Maybe I should play some music. Uh, Smith. Um, Montreal, Dylan Gerard. 103, Dylan Garand, Dylan Garand. I just need a second here to catch up. Um, Ducks, Timo Nickel. If that's how you say that. All right. And... Jack Smith is a center. Jack Smith from the Montreal Canadiens is a center. He's 5'11", 182 pounds, um, playing in the USHL. Uh, he's from Sioux Falls. Or he's playing in Sioux Falls. What is that stat? Is that where he's from or is that where he's playing? Oh, that's his amateur team. Okay playing for Sioux Falls, if that's how you pronounce it. I'm not so good at pronunciations the first time I see them, especially. I guess you've probably noticed this. Okay, ba 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 All right, 103, uh, Dylan Garand, a goaltender. Uh, the New York Rangers picked him. Um, he's Canadian, six foot, 173 pounds, not too big for a goalie, playing in a WHL with, the Cam, with Cam Loops. And um, then at 104, the Ducks, Timo Nickel, the defenseman, uh, is from Austria, um, six foot two, 176 pounds, playing in the QMJHL with Drummondville. And I'll flip this board in a second. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay, and the Florida Panthers at pick 105 have picked uh, Zachary, ooh, how do you say that last name? U-E-N-S, Zachary Unens. Um, give me a, yeah, give me a second from the live chat. I got to catch up here. I'll be right there. ba 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 Ooh, anyone know how to pronounce that uh, last name for that defenseman that Florida just picked? Spelt U E N S. Uh, again, he's six foot one hundred eighty pounds. He's Canadian. Um, he's playing in, in a league called H East with Merrimack in in Merrimack. Okay. I'm just gonna play something on Spotify here. Let's get some, I'm literally going to get some soundtrack music here.
But, 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 but. All right. Oh, okay. Got to catch up here. All okay, right. So the Maple Leafs have picked a goalie. Holy cow. Um, from Russia, six foot one hundred sixty-seven pounds, playing in Russian junior with Irbis Kazan. Uh, Detroit just picked after them too. Leafs, uh, Leafs, uh, Detroit, Pittsburgh. Leafs, Detroit, Pittsburgh. Uh, dismiss. Okay. One of five. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. One of five. So I'm just writing down the Leafs pick. One six. One seven. One eight. Uh, go caps. You're saying you have a uh, you have a link. I don't see any link here, though. If that's what you mean to do, um, yeah, maybe I'm not understanding. Any case, catching up here. Arthur A K H T. Y A M O V. Okay. Okay, oops. Okay, so 107. I know I'm behind here. I'm trying as best as I can. Uh, Jan Bednar, another goalie to, um, to the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, he's six foot four, 196 pounds from Russia or from Czech Republic here. Or Jan Bednar, B D N A R. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's update this. See how behind I am. Oh, not too far behind. Uh, Pittsburgh just picks picked at the uh, 108th spot. They picked a centerman, not a goalie. What? Um, from the U.S., five foot ten, 165 pounds. Pounds. His name is Lucas. Uh, how do you pronounce this one? You, oh, you'll see it on the board when I write it down. How about that? <laughs> uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah, sorry, it's it's hard to keep up with the feed here. Uh, the live feed, I mean. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Dexter's 
That album, uh, for anyone interested, that's um, the Avalanches off the Avalanches album that I've got playing in the background here. Uh, now, Pittsburgh's, yeah, I mentioned him 5'10, 165 pounds, uh, playing in a WHL for Medicine Hat, Lucas Savenchevsky. There you have it. How do you say this? Anyway. Okay, let's update this. Uh, Montreal's on deck here. Okay. Montreal has picked Blake B. Biondi, a uh, centerman um, from the U.S., six foot, 191 pounds, playing with. Uh, Playing in Her Hermantown. Okay, let's get this up here. Like the only. Chicago just picked. Still see this board. Ooh. Just sort of. That'll be the last row. Uh, Chicago, Arizona, LA. Vancouver. Okay, just finishing off with this board here over the next few picks. Uh, Chicago's pick at 110 was uh, Michael Crudel, a uh, defenseman from the Czech Republic, 6'3", 202 pounds, playing for Sparta in a junior, Sparta Junior. Okay. Let's get that on the board. My back is starting to hurt. Okay, Michael. Crudel. Defenseman. You all see that? Yeah, we can see that. Okay. Let's see if I can minimize this a bit. There we go. And make the live chat a bit bigger for me here. There we are. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. Oh.
Okay, so Arizona just made their pick um, at 111. It's Mitchell Miller, defenseman from the U from the U.S., five foot ten, 180 pounds, playing in the USHL for Tri City. Arizona has a pick, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Ba -ba -ba -ba. D. All right. Oh, I gotta sit down for a second. Oh my god. Oh, there's a dog. And want to say hello to the dog? Oh, thanks for the kisses. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right. So I'm up to date so far on the board. Oh, here's the dog. Here's the dog. Where's the dog? Where's the dog? Okay, let's try and see if I can find a soundtrack here. Um, playlists. Okay. Huh? Okay. Here we go. Uh, that's a loaded question, Anthony. <laughs> I think everyone's got a bunch of picks left. We're still in the fourth round. We're, um, so, okay. Uh, two, we've got two more picks to update the board with. Uh, L.A. just picked at 112th overall. You know Markinen, a goalie, another goalie, a Canadian, six foot two, 146 pounds, um, playing in Finland in the Finland Two League at Ketra. Interesting. I'm sure he has a. He's got a Finnish name, but he was born in Canada, I guess. I wonder if he's an NHL player's um, son or something. Which is why that's there. Okay, board. Last space you can probably see here. Yeah, okay. So Canucks for the goalie. Miller. Oh, oh no, that was, oh, that's L.A. with a goalie. Excuse me, L.A., L.A. Markkanen. And then. Let's go. I like just drafts really good goalies all the time. It's unbelievable how they do that so consistently. Uh, all right, so Vancouver. Picked up a left winger, Jackson Kunz from the U.S., six foot three, two hundred ten pounds, big boy. Kunz, Kunz. Uh, 
All right, so uh, I got to change boards here again. Uh, and Columbus has just picked. So I'm only one team behind. Columbus just picked up a uh, left winger. Uh, Mikael Pietia from Finland, six foot, 154 pounds. Yeah, I'll get him on, on the board in a second. So that's one last look at this board. I'll just switch spots with that one over there. Um, I know it's a little hard to see, but there you have it. Here we go. It's going to the back row. And, uh, All right, Columbus at 114. Columbus, Carolina, Tampa. Yeah, the one in the corner. Yeah, that's best I can do. Try to make the numbers a little bit bigger. I am running. This is my last whiteboard. Then I'll have to start flipping them over. That'll be interesting reading them then. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. All right. Let's update. Let's update this sucker. See how far behind I am. Okay. All right, so two players behind. All right, so Carolina just picked a left winger from Sweden named Zion Nebeck, if I'm saying that correctly. Only five foot six. Wow, 182 pounds, though. This guy must be built like a Mack truck. That's a thick boy. Um, from He's Swedish, too. Interesting. Be watching that player, see how he develops. I mean, he could still grow a little, obviously, but five, I'm five, six. I'm not a, wow. Okay. Left winger. Let's get it on the board. On the board. On the board. Uh, Tampa just uh, Tampa picked as well. 
Um, and they picked a defenseman, uh, Eamon Powell, from the U.S. He's five foot eleven, 165 pounds. Eamon Powell. Uh, okay, Washington Avalanche, St. Louis. Just updating the board here. Uh, I'm pretty close to being up to date. Still in the fourth round. Thanks for everyone uh, who's stuck around after the feed it finished. Um, we're going to continue to fight through this. Let's do it. Uh, ba ba ba. Uh, who are we going? It's Capitals, Avalanche, and Irish. St. Louis, uh, Devils, Islanders, Leafs. Live feed saying here. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. All right. Okay. All right. Let's update this. Oh, got a few picks happening here. All right, it's three that I missed. They're going fast and furious. Okay, so the Capitals uh, picked Bodigan Triniev, if I'm saying that properly. Uh, right winger, for Russian, six foot three, 198 pounds. I like that. Bogdan, that's how you say it. Bogdan. Trying, yeah. Who am I looking at? Uh, Raven. Okay. All right. So that's uh, again uh, 117 for the Capitals. Uh, Bogdan and Trinayev, uh, right winger from Russia, six foot three, 198 pounds. Next up um, at 118, we have the Colorado Avalanche. Um, who've picked Colby Ambrosio. Ambrosio. Italian, I think. Ambrosio. He's a centerman from Canada. Uh, five foot eight, 170 pounds. 
playing in the USHL for Tri-City, by the way. That's Colby Ambrosio for the Avalanche at 118th, a Canadian who's 5'8", 170 pounds. Another thick kid. Uh, ba, ba, ba. All right, moving on uh, to the St. Louis Blues at 119th spot. Uh, Tanner Dickinson, a centerman, another centerman. He's from the U.S. He's 5'11", uh, with 115 pounds, playing in the OHL for Sault Ste. Marie. Dickinson. Uh, center. Ooh. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, there you are. All right. So we'll update this. So that last one there again was uh, 119th St. Louis. Tanner Dickinson, a centerman from the U.S., 5'11", 150 pounds, um, for the o playing in the OHL for Sault Ste. Marie. Let's update this sucker. And, well, we're only one behind. Uh, talking about the New Jersey Devils, who picked uh, defenseman Ethan Edwards, uh, Canadian, 5'10", 166 pounds, uh, playing in the AJHL uh, for Spruce Grove. Let's get him on the board, yeah? Here, let's attack the enemy. Here, here, and here. All right. Um, anyone know what movie that's from? And even harder, which actor has that line? It was a cameo in what movie by which actor? I'll give you a guess, uh, a hint. It's a uh, Quentin Tarantino movie. Ooh, uh, we look like we have a signing here. I'm looking in the live stream. Yes, Polvari was assigned for a two-year deal um, to the Oilers. We don't we don't know what the the money is going to be like yet. Not that I know of. Uh, Stevenson was just resigned to the Vegas Golden Knights, the centerman, to a four-year contract worth eleven million dollars. Uh, Stevens uh, was just signed on a on a deal um, to Tampa Bay on a two-year deal. Smith just signed with Tampa Bay on a one-year deal. Yeah, those are just the recent ones. Anyway, all right. Um, Edwards. Ethan Edwards, defenseman for the Jersey Devils. Canadian, 5'10", 166 pounds. Uh, let's move it along here. Yeah, Povari. Povari. <laughs> Yeah, you wonder what kind of um, – they've been speculating a lot about that with Elliot Friedman um, and Jeff Merrick on uh, 31 Thoughts as well about what the issue might be with Pavari and how it might have been in the locker room. So uh, it's be very curious to see how that whole thing pans out and how he's going to be accepted back in the room. Uh, welcome, everyone. If you're just joining us, uh, thank you for those who have been sticking around. Um, our feed just, My feed just cut out a little while ago, but I'm continuing on here. Just hit 332 subscribers. That's like a, 
around just oh, oh yeah about a 30 subscriber jump so uh i've been around for two years now i just want to thank you so much for your support i really appreciate it um if you're new here please consider um uh subscribing liking and hitting that notification bell i also will be um having a uh patreon it's got it's going to be set up at some point in the next couple of weeks um for those of you who are interested in uh, helping out that way I would love to make this um, my job. Uh, I currently work in the film industry. I'm a gig worker. Um, so uh, that's been taking me away a lot from this lately. Uh, but I should be around at least for the most part for the next three, four days in a row, um, especially on Friday. So I'm just updating the uh, trade board or the trade board. Um, uh, we've got two new picks here. Uh, the Islanders have picked uh, left winger Alex Jeffries from the U.S., six foot, 195 pounds. And the Leafs uh, just picked up a um, defenseman, William Villeneuve, a Canadian, six foot, 175 pounds from the QMJHL, playing in St. John. So let's update the board here with those uh, two picks. Uh, starting off with the Islanders first. Uh, Alex Jeffries. Any French Canadians out there at all? Oh, hey. Zax plays games. Nice. My I'm 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 from Toronto, but my wife is um, French Canadian. And my French is coming along. Oh, Jerry Berry, you're a French Canadian too. Cool. Well, welcome. Glad to have you. French Canadian who's a Boston Bruins fan. Interesting. Oh, OVTV. Cool. French as well. Oh, Devithor is a uh, Dav. Davithor is Swedish. Your news. So I don't know if you hear any of the, the songs I'm playing in the background. Some of them are, are French songs that I had playing. Um, this is my wedding playlist, my sort of a cocktail mix. I had a few French songs, a bunch of French songs thrown in there. You may have recognized uh, Jacques Brel and stuff. Uh, Owen saying he lost his speed from, speed from Sportsnet and TSN. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks for joining me, Owen. Appreciate it. Glad to have you aboard. Oh, uh, command code man dragon twenty one thinks there'll be a beef between McDavid and Pavari. Well, be very curious to see how that turns out. That's for sure. Okay. All right. So, again, so those last two picks here, um, as you can see on the board uh, for the Islanders at, at pick 121, Alex Jeffries, left winger from the U.S., six foot, 195 pounds. Uh, at pick 122, the Leafs grab a defenseman, William Villeneuve. Um, Canadian, six foot one, 175 pounds, playing in the queue. Um, let's update this. Last two teams uh, for the fourth round, Dallas and Montreal.
Do I sound like I'm shouting all the time? Okay, okay, here we go. All right. Um, so you got the board there. Let's update this. Let's see who Dallas and Montreal picked in the end of the fourth round. Um, all right. So Dallas has picked Antonio Strange, Strange, Stranges. <laughs> um, I'm laughing at my pronunciation, not at his name. Uh, he's a left winger from the U.S., 5'10", 168 pounds. Let's get that on the board. On the board, yeah. Okay, um... 123, Antonio Stranges. Shit. Left wing. Uh, Jeffrey is... Is a left one too. Okay, Montreal. All right, Montreal has picked um, at 124th spot. Uh, Santerman, Sean. Oh my God, the mouse is in the way. Uh, Sean Farrell uh, from the U.S. Five foot eight, 178 pounds, uh, playing in the USHL with Chicago. Cinnamon. Okay, so again, that's the end of the fourth round. Um, at pick 124, it's uh, Montreal pick Sean Farrell of Cinnamon uh, from the U.S., 5'8", 175 pounds. And we're going to move on to uh, the next round. And I'll change markers from green uh, back to blue. All right, so we're into the fifth round here, folks. Um, let's let's do this. All right. So that that's. Um, the fourth and the uh, third round mixed back there. I don't know if you see any of that, but. Have they not started the fifth round yet? Okay, it looks like they have not started the fifth round at this moment. Yeah. I mean, they're actually breathing, taking a time to maybe everyone one, one for a pee or something. Okay. Don't wait. Don't ask me how I'm holding it in. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you. All right. Kidding. Kidding. All right. I guess I'll get a little ready here for the um, the next round here. Uh, yeah, 125. Okay. Uh, so, again, if you just joined, joined us, um, the fourth round is over. Uh, those are the last few, um, few picks there. And we're going to get into the fifth round shortly. I don't think it's 
quite started yet. I'm just doing a little prep work. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'll let you look at that while I just grab some. Oh, Texas represents. Nice. Reagan, how appropriate. Strange and strangers. Isn't it weird? Yeah. Oh, hi, hi Elvis. Mers Lincoln's fan. Well, um, glad to have you. Uh, the streams are ended. Uh, well, the the hockey uh, pick. English. Blah, blah, blah. Um, stream is ended, but I'm going to continue going on here anyways. I just threw on some music and uh, I'm going to be updating the picks as fast as I can. So uh, welcome. Nice. Good to have you. Please, um, uh, if you like, if you like what you see, uh, consider subscribing and liking and all that fun jazz. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Anthony, that's a difficult question there. I don't, I'm not sure I have enough time to answer that one. Now it's going to take a little bit of research. Uh, oh, we have a, an update here from uh, Devithor says Domi signed two years at 5.3 million. I don't have that update yet, but I'll take your word for it. All right. Go Oilers. Oh, thanks, Elvis. Appreciate that. Oilers sign Pavari, too. Right. I'm just pulling up the Pavari... Uh, All right, so they signed Pulvari to a $1.175 million AAV, uh, two-year deal. So it says that Blue Jackets and Domi are closing in on a deal, but I don't have any. Um, that's all I, I get in my feed right now. Anyways, let's get back to uh, the fifth round here. Detroit Oilers, New York. Uh, L.A. Ducks, New Jersey. LA Ducks, New Jersey. So I waited with high hopes. Buffalo. And she walked in the place. I knew a smile in an instant. I knew the curve. Okay. Let's get this going here. Uh, the fifth round, you mean? So we're starting the fifth round. Huh. This can't be right. I'm not getting the fifth round has not started yet. I can't be right. Just. If you like me, get 
Uh, maybe it's a break for guys to grab a snack. Uh, maybe. I, I was pretty sure rounds two through seven were going to go on today. Um, but it still hasn't looked to be started yet. So, um, hey, if you want to, I'm going to I'm gonna keep on going here. If you uh, want to, yeah, grab a snack or something. Grab a drink. Okay. All right. Maybe. Uh, Monday. I'm a horrible singer. Okay. Then stop singing. Okay. The fifth round has begun. It has begun. Yes. Okay. So. Um, okay, 125 has actually gone to Vegas. There was a trade. I'm sure somebody's mentioned that in the live feed already. Yeah, okay. While well, I was blabbing away. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So Vegas picks up Jesper Vickman, a goaltender from Sweden, 6'3", 179 pounds. Let's get that on the board. Edmonton also picked uh, Tyler Tulio at number 126. Uh, right winger from the U.S., 5'10", 165 pounds, uh, playing in the OHL. All right, so let's get uh, Vickman up on the board first for Vegas. Uh, who did Vegas give Detroit for that trade? I'm not sure yet. I'm glad you're happy with that Oilers pick. Julio, nice last name. Uh, Vickman, he's a goalie. Yeah, right. Okay, so just going to uh, review that really quickly. Uh, Vegas got um, in the 125th pick, they got Jesper Vickman, a goaltender from Sweden, 6'3", 179 pounds. Edmonton at 126 picked up uh, Tyler Tulio, a right winger from the U.S., 5'10", 165 pounds, playing in the OHL uh, with Oshawa. Let's update this sucker. I think I'm going to switch to cider soon. It's 1.30 p.m. I think it's safe. It's allowed. Okay, we got two more picks rolling in here. Um, first off, the New York Rangers uh, at number 127. They pick up Evan uh, Vierling, a centerman from Canada, six foot 167 pounds uh, from the OHL. Uh, he's from Barrie. Let's get him on the board. Evan And L.A. just picked as well. Yeah. Yep, don't want to hear that right now. I'm not, I like this, but I don't want to hear it. Son of a... I don't, want to, don't want to hear that either. Right? Ooh, Cindy Lopper. Who doesn't want to hear Cindy Lopper? Okay, at um, pick 128 uh, for LA, they picked Martin Kromiak. Oh, there he is, finally. Jesus Christ. He was uh, ranked 32nd overall by the uh, Hockey News, 34th overall um, by the International Scouting Services. And he goes, we got to hear the story behind this guy. Uh, went 128. Holy cow. 
That is strange. That's crazy, isn't it? He um, is, a, they say he could be like a Tanner Pearson type. Six foot, 181 pounds. Martin, oh, now he's 187 pounds. Okay, let's get him on the board. LA's got him. Chromiak. Little nostalgia music for everybody here for him. I remember this music video. You ever seen that guy on TikTok who um, sort of does karaoke of some of these songs, uh, but pieces of these songs? Riley's skateboarding through neighborhoods while drinking cranberry juice. It's, it's pretty funny. And he looks like a real, you know, salt of the earth kind of guy, like a someone who could you wouldn't want to meet in a in an alley, you know, <laughs> like he could do some harm to you. Um, yeah, it's pretty. Anyways, it's on TikTok. I've all, I've seen it on Twitter lately though. All right. Let's update this. Uh, so there's the board. Let's update this sucker. All right, so the Ducks have picked. I'm pretty close to what's going on here, so that's a good sign. All right, uh, number 129, uh, it's the Anaheim Ducks, and they pick up um, left winger Artyom Galimov, uh, a Russian, six foot, 176 pounds. Again, I apologize for all the mispronunciations. Um, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, how do Ducks fans feel about that one? Do, is there any Ducks fans out there? Anyone? Be waiting. Okay, that's me lip syncing Cindy Lauper. Okay, time after time. All right, so again, at uh, pick 129, uh, we have the Anaheim Ducks have Artyom uh, Galimov, a uh, left winger from Russia, six foot 176 pounds. Um, playing Kazan right now, playing for Kazan. Uh, thank you everyone for looking stuff up while I'm sort of got my hands tied here. Oh yeah, uh, Elvis is saying Galimov uh, looks good so far this year in the KHL. Seven points in 12 games and a plus two. Cool, thanks for that. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty caught up at the moment. Uh, the Devils are next. I'm going to prep the board. Oh, it kind of is already prepped. I'll go a little further here. Uh, but, uh, Detroit, Winnipeg. Okay, 
Um, I'll be right back. I'm just going to use the facilities. I'm finally caving in. All right. Uh, so the Domi signing um, is Max Domi signing is two years uh, at ten point six million dollars. So five point three million dollars um, a year. That's a good signing for Vegas. The Stevenson um, signing. Four years. That's three, six, nine, twelve. Just under three million dollars a year over four years. That's pretty good for Stevenson. He's got a bit of upside there. Anyways, I'll be right back. There's the board. I'll leave you at that. You can see the other board there too. I'll be right back. Anybody want anything? Anyone? Orange whip? Orange whip? Okay, three orange whips. Okay, I'm not quite back, but I'm just going to update the trade chart board here. Um, okay, so the Devils and Buffalo have picked. Uh, I'll be right back and we'll update that. Uh, two sentiment have been picked for both teams. I know. Whipped cream on top. Okay. Oh, 
and we're back. This is for you. This is for you. Okay. It's... Here we go. Sante. Fizzy apple juice, by the way. Ah, it's a frothy apple juice. I didn't make it. Okay. Let's do this. All right. Okay, a little behind here. All right, we'll get this going fast. All right, so I pick uh, 130. Uh, we've got Artem Schlein, a sediment from Russia, six foot one, 165 pounds. Connor, stop licking my leg, please. Okay, that's my dog. My dog. S H L I N. Okay, cinnamon. Oh, yeah? Really? Uh, okay, let's pick um, 131. We have Matteo Constantini for Buffalo. Uh, centerman, uh, Canadian. Sounds Italian, obviously. Six foot, 173 pounds. Um, playing in the OJHL right now. Matteo Constantini. Continue. Okay, one thirty-two uh, for the Detroit Red Wings. Um, we've got uh, Alex Cotton, a defenseman. He's Canadian, six foot two. 175 pounds, playing in the WHL uh, for Lethbridge. Let's get him on the board. Fun. Defenseman. All right. Uh, then the Winnipeg Jets at uh, 133rd pick. Pick Anton Johansson, a defenseman from Sweden, five foot nine, hundred fifty-four pounds, on the board. My God, that is a really long last name. Okay, I'm moving on to 134. 134th um, for the New York Rangers. And then uh, Nashville's on deck here. Rangers, Nashville, Rangers, Nashville, Montreal. Yeah. So I got the dogs so six twelve. Yeah, I gotta take you out for a walk soon, huh? Um my god. Uh, New Angels, Nashville, Montreal. Okay, so um, the Rangers, I've got another dead light here. Let's just keep uh, milking that. Um, 
Okay, so the Rangers pick uh, Brett Burrard. Ugh. Uh, left winger from the U.S., five foot nine, hundred fifty-five pounds, uh, playing in the NTDP for the USA, um, under eighteen right now. And let's put him up. Brett Burrard. Okay. One hundred fifty-four pounds. Uh, that was Anton Johansson. Yeah, one hundred fifty-four pounds. Yeah, five foot nine from Sweden. Yeah, he's gonna have to uh, start eating a lot of bread or something. All right, B. Berard. You see, some of these shorter players at least are like thicker and a bit heavier, but um, hey. Look, look at uh, – I know Pedersen's not that short, but, I mean, he was pretty slim. Like, he wasn't even 170 pounds, I think. Um, Brett Bard. All right, so, again, Brett Bard for the New York Rangers, a left winger. Um, five foot nine, 155 pounds. Yeah, from the U.S. Okay. Let's update this sucker. Uh, thank you all for sticking around um, during this marathon. Oh, my God. Uh, but it's fun. It's all good times. The feed is done. But uh, I'm continuing to update the boards just for, you know, shits and giggles, all that kind of deal. Um, all right. So uh, next up, there were, I think it looks like there was a trade because um, instead of Nashville, it's Philly who was picked. Hey, corner, right, right, right. All right, so Philadelphia at uh, pick 135 has picked um, Elliot Desonier, uh, a left winger from Canada, 5'10", 183 pounds. He's playing in the QMJHL right now in Halifax. Uh, so let's get him up on the boards. Uh, Anthony Mazzano. Um, yeah, the Leafs are in the same yeah division as the Bruins and Panthers. It's going to be a hard division soon. Okay, um, on the board. All right. Elliot Desoigne. Denoyer. 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 If that's French, Denoyer. Uh, left winger. Okay. There's your board at the moment. Again, uh, thanks for everyone for sticking around. It's been over five hours. We've been uh, chugging along here, and we're in the fifth round. Um, thanks to all of you for uh, my subscribers. Thanks for joining me. For all those who, um, who subscribe, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh, if you if you're happen to just uh, find this channel, uh, just recently, thanks for joining us. Um, if you like what you see, please don't feel shy about uh, liking, subscribing, hit that notification bell. It would really help the channel. I've been doing this for about two years now, and it's been a lot of fun for me. It's not my job. Not yet, anyway. Um, one day. One day. All right, so let's update the tracker here. Uh, Montreal has just picked. At uh, pick 136. For Montreal, uh, we have player. Oh, I'm running out of space here. Oh, command hook just came off. No way. Damn it. I'm going to take this backboard out of the way here. And this chair is just too much. Okay, just want to. Okay. All right. 
There we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, where was I? 136 overall in the fifth round. To Montreal goes uh, Jacob Dobies, a goaltender, or Dobbs, uh, from the Czech Republic. Six foot four, 200 pounds. Uh, playing in the USHL right now. Um, let's get him on the board. All right. Dobies, Jacob Dobies, Dubs. My writing has gotten progressively worse as the day goes on. Uh, ba ba ba, goaltender. Okay, let's uh, get a little head here. One thirty-six. Can we still see all this? Yeah, still got room. Forty. Okay. We still got a good amount of people watching. All right. For my channel, anyway. Um, and I appreciate all you being here, obviously. So I hope you all have a drink. Let's just enjoy this, shall we? Have apple juice, I mean. Apple juice. All right. All right, let's just set up here. Oh, uh, really? Codeman Dragon 21. Yeah, all the bigger names live streams are an absolute mess. Interesting. Okay. Oh, uh, Elvis says, I think it's pronounced a uh, job, dubbish, because there is an accent over the S in Czech. Thank you for that. Uh, Cody Collins, I have the most organized live stream. It, interesting. Well, thank you. Um, seems a little bit of chaotic to me, but <laughs> whatever. I appreciate it. Um, Oh, thank you, X Menor Menor Men Origins five hundred. I uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Hockey guy, right? Yeah, he's he's pretty good. I gotta tell you, he is really good. Um, yeah, that's if I had an assistant, that would be fantastic. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Codeman Dragon 21. Gracias, senor. Okay. Um, let's uh, continue on here. Uh, Florida, Edmonton, Pittsburgh. Okay, let's change the song here. It's nice, but... Uh, Florida, Edmonton, Pittsburgh. Oh, this is a nice French song. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, 
Uh, Elvis, um, I post, uh, I usually do, um, besides the live streams, I talk about trades once they happen. I don't do rumors too much um, or anything like that, but I do talk a lot about trades. I also do a lot of individual team, team by team um, reviews uh, throughout the year and the off season and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So I try, I try and do all the NHL. Um, I've been watching it since the early '80s, very early '80s, um, and. Uh, um, usually I, I just watched the Toronto Maple Leafs when I was a kid, but I'd always watch every team in the playoffs. Uh, but especially the past few years, um, I've been watching a ton of hockey during the regular season. So not just the Maple Leafs, obviously they are my, um, I know them more intimately more than any other team, obviously, but, uh, I'm getting to know a bunch of other teams, uh, better. Uh, the hardest thing I think in learning is, um, getting to learn, uh, other teams' bottom six forwards, bottom pair defensemen, and prospects. That's probably the most challenging thing to learn. Anyways, um, I, I'm going to – welcome, Rude, Bruins fan. You are welcome. Glad to have you. All right, I'm going to get back here and update the draft board here. Um, looking at pick – hopefully they haven't gone too far ahead. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. We had a, a bit of a trade here because Florida was supposed to pick next. Um, and instead, it's the Toronto Maple Leafs um, have picked the centerman, Dmitry Ovechkinov, if I'm probably butchering that. Um, he's a centerman from Russia, 5'11", 161 pounds. Be interesting to read up on him why the Leafs traded up to grab uh, this guy. So, yeah. Don't want to hear that now. Okay. All right. So, let's get him on the board for everybody. Uh, off goes Florida. There was a trade there. In goes the Leafs. I should, should turn this around while I leave the chair. That'd be handy, I know. Okay, on the board, yeah. Uh, Dmitry Ovechkinov. OVC. I N N I C O V. Um, yeah, Elvis, you can also check my playlist. You'll, you'll see all that kind of stuff there. I have, sort of have content for it, for anyone who, you know, whatever team you enjoy. I usually do a lot of research on teams um, besides watching games as well. It's a lot of reading involved. Uh, my wife um, puts up with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there we have it. So that's the leaf pick. Um, and let's update this sucker. Let's I'll hit the live stream here quickly. Oh, Elvis, I'm sorry to hear that. Toronto took your favorite prospects. Uh, my apologies. Uh, what's my today's subtotal? Um, is being asked by Rude. Um, well, I'm a very small channel. Uh, I very small channel. So uh, I, I, I do. I think I've gotten about 33 or so subscribers today. Uh, hold on, I'll update it right now. Oh, uh, just under 40. I'm at 340. So I went from like about 303 this morning to 340. 
So for my channel, that's pretty good. Um, obviously, I've been getting subscribers a lot faster uh, in the past six months. Um, you know, the time I between, you know, going from, uh, you know, 100 to 200 to 300 is getting smaller and smaller. It usually take, it took me a year to get to my first 100. And it took two months for me to get my last, to go from 200 to 300. Anyways, um, subscribe. Thank you, Elvis. Uh, you're welcome, Super Matthias Carlson. Glad to have you. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I would love, I should add moderators to control the chat room when you do live stream. Um, you mean like having an extra person help me out here? I'm not sure what you, exactly what you mean by that. Like having someone read it out, like an assistant? Is that what you mean? Anthony Mazzano. Kirianov. Um, I'll take a quick look. Uh, see if I find it in, in the... Uh, it's getting hard to find here, Kirianov, Kirianov. I don't see him in the top 100 um, ranked in the hockey news. If anyone wants to chime in there, um, ah, cool, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> what am I listening to? Um, it's a French song. I'll just, yeah, I'll just skip that one. It was good. Well, it's a mood thing. Oh, that's the Bee Gees. No, no. A lot of good French songs on here, though. Okay, how about some Otis Redding? There we go. Um, go to Cat Friendly. Anthony Mazzano. Um, get, you got to give me a little time here, uh, Anthony. Um, I'm going to update the draft. I'll do my best, um, my friend. Okay, so the Oilers have just picked uh, at pick 138 here. So here's the board for everyone. Frank is back. Okay, how about some Billy Joel? All right, so the Edmonton have picked at 138th overall. Um, left winger, Makism Brez Brezkin. A left winger from Russia, six foot two, 201 pounds. Um, let's get him on the board. Hey, Frank, what are you drinking? She can lead you to love, she can take you on She can ask for the truth, but she'll never believe. And she'll take what you give her as long as it's free. Yeah, she steals like a thief, but she's always a woman to me. Oh, port wine. I haven't had port in so long. So, so long. Uh, thanks, Todd. Yeah, woohoo! You gotta send me some pictures from Chicago or something. I haven't heard from you in a bit. Maxim, Maxim. Let's pronounce Maxim. Okay, thanks, Elvis. Um, Kiriano. Can anyone look up Kiriano while I while I get this going here? Let me just update. 
Let's see if, if there's if it hasn't been updated yet, then I will. Oh, we've got an update here. Uh, Colorado. Colorado uh, made a trade with Pittsburgh, so they pick next. Okay, it's, it's, uh, we're in the fifth round, just to remind everyone now. Uh, pick 139, um, went from Pittsburgh to Colorado uh, for Ryder Rolston, uh, right winger from the U.S., six foot one, 175 pounds. Uh, uh, playing in the USHL uh, in Waterloo. I'm drinking apple juice, Frank. Ha, <laughs> cool, Elvis. Um, all right. Okay, let's get uh, Ryder Rolston on the board for the Avalanche. Any Avalanche fans watching? Oh, this is a Spanish guitar solo. From Juan del Frio. It's called Seville. Sevilla. Okay, uh, roll stun. Uh, right winger. Okay, so that was the Avalanche pick, Ryder Rolston, right winger from U.S., six foot 175 pounds. And the board's getting filled there. Uh, I'll just do one of these. <laughs> Thanks, Elvis. <laughs> I try. Uh, Dave and Athor, Florida just gave up a fifth and a seventh for uh, 137 right after. Nashville gave up two sevenths for 135. Interesting. Interesting, yeah? It's a very... Does anybody, anyone get where that movie reference was from? We will attack the enemy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I gave the hint that it was from the Quentin Tarantino movie. Let's see who comes up with that one. And which actor it was. Frank, you should get that one. Or Todd, even Todd. Okay, so we have update. Okay, Carolina's next. Who knows, maybe there's a trade happening because they haven't picked yet at uh, pick 140. That's still, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Carolina, Chicago, Arizona, Calgary. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, what What the hell happened here? Okay. Hunt for Red October. Anthony, no, that is not the movie. Um, that's an oldie. Very good movie. That's not a bad guess either. Uh, but no, it's not, a, it's not that old. It was um, filmed in the 2000s. Um, remember, it's a Quentin Tarantino directed movie. He didn't direct uh, The Hunt for Red October, which I liked. With Alec Baldwin and Sean Connery. She's playing both sides. Okay.
Uh, R- Red Dawn Chong? No. Uh, Frank's asking why I don't have the feed now. Um, it finished in the fourth round. Um, I don't think a lot of... Uh, you can check the live feed, but I don't, I don't think a lot of channels just stopped um, covering it after the, the fourth or somewhere in the fourth round. Um, so I've just been updating it on the NHL um, network here, and I've been doing it on the board. Uh, a lot of other people seem to have uh, given up. So I'm just, you know, I've dedicated my day to doing this anyway. So, yeah, Sean Connery was good in that film. Um, yeah, the draft seems like it is taking way longer. Um uh, we have an update uh, for one team. At pick 140 for Los Angeles, who well, obviously made a trade for someone. So it's uh, not Carolina, it's L.A. Let's get that going. L.A. must have really wanted this guy to trade for him. And his name is Ben Meehan, a defenseman from the U.S., uh, six foot, 178 pounds. Again, that's to L.A. in the 140th spot. Uh, let's get him on the board. Oh, he's playing in UMass Lowell. Do you remember that? Where that is, Frank? I think he took us to see uh, Days of Confuse there. Remember that? Long time ago. It's snowing. Bad blizzard that day. Anyone guess that movie? Kill Bill, no. Good guess. That is a Tarantino movie, but no. Yeah, Kill Bill is a Tarantino movie. Um, it's after Kill Bill. Um, I think it's about three movies ago. There's another hint. It's about three Quentin Tarantino movies ago. That is correct. It is a war film. Uh, uh, well, all Quentin Tarantino movies are really action. They're cross genres, aren't they? They're like action, mystery, suspense, horror. All throw all into one. Ah, we have a winner. Um, well, Rude said Pulp Fiction. No, it's not Pulp Fiction. Um, but we do have a winner. Zax Plays Games says it's Inglorious Bastards. That is the correct answer. Now, um, yeah, that's right, Elvis. Uh, so the second part of that question is, who is the actor who does that quote? He hasn't done many movies at all lately, like in the past 12 to 15 years. But he came out of hiding to do a cameo in that movie. He's a comedian. That's another hint. Mel Gibson. No. <laughs> no, it's not Mel Gibson. Brad Pitt. Nope. No, it's not Brad Pitt. It's a com- like he's not a stand-up comedian, but he is a comedian who hasn't done anything in a long time. Yeah, I don't feel like listening to the song right now. Oh, this is nice. Okay, um, where are we at here with the? Oh, Eli Roth. No, that's not him. That's kind of close. Uh, Zax plays games has won the second part of that question as well. The answer to that is Mike Myers. Well done. Round of applause. Well done. Take a bow, please.
Uh, the guy who played Hitler, I, I don't know. I have to take a second look at that. Uh, but it was Mike Myers who played an English general um, in Inglorious Bastards. Uh, he was only in a couple of scenes. And he was, it's just one part of his dialogue when he points at this map. And he's, he's pretty good. It's a dramatic piece for him. He's like, you will attack the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Maybe it's my crappy English accent. But anyway. Um, oh, we have some picks to update. Uh, two of them. Uh, at 141, we have Chicago, uh, who picks Isaac Phillips, a defenseman from Canada, uh, six foot two. 193 pounds. Chunky. All right. And the OHL is playing in Sudbury right now. Let's get him on the board. And Arizona pick uh, as well. We'll get to Arizona in just a second here. So Arizona picked uh, left winger Carson Bantle uh, from the U.S., 6'4", 194 pounds, uh, playing in the WCHA uh, from Michigan Tech. So that's uh, Isaac Phillips for Chicago, 6'2", uh, uh, defenseman, and um, Carson Bantle for the Coyotes, uh, left winger. Um, from the U.S., 694 pounds. Can we still see everything? I still have a little space going here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Calgary is up next. I've got to switch my light here finally. Do some more movie trivia as well. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, Elvis is saying Phillips is of Jamaican descent. Interesting. Wow. That's pretty, that must be a first, huh? I would think. Yeah, Mike Myers is in it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's in it. Maybe he's, he's not, uh, maybe he's just not listed, but he does play a general in it. Um, I don't have time to look it up right now, but I know for sure that's him. It's weird uh, you couldn't find it. Bizarre. Maybe he didn't want to be listed in the um, on the cast for it. Okay, wow. We've got a lot of updates here. Three of them. Uh, starting with Calgary and uh, right winger Ryan Francis. I don't want to listen to Salt and Pepper right now. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> salt and pepper made it on the the feed. All right, uh, Ryan Francis, right winger. Ryan Francis, uh, five foot nine, hundred seventy pounds. Okay, uh, next we're talking about uh, the Canucks here. I think I still have a little room. Yeah. Uh, 144. I think I'm going to have to switch boards uh, soon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Canucks, Columbus. Okay, so the Canucks, uh, the Canucks have picked up Jacob Truscott, a defenseman uh, from the U.S. 
six foot one, 170 pounds, uh, playing in the um, NTDP uh, in the USA under 18s. Any Canuck fans happy with that pick? All right, and then the Columbus here at 145. Um, That's weird, Anthony. Yeah, that's strange. I don't know why it, it doesn't list him. It's bizarre. Watch the movie again. He's there. Um, that's weird, though, huh? Yeah. Okay, 145 um, for Columbus. This is a hard name to pronounce. Wow, okay. It's like a four-part thing here. Ole Julian Jordvik Holm. From Norway. Wow, I got some family that's Norwegian. One of my brother's um, wives now, ex-wife, but they had kids. So, um, so yeah, wow. All right, so at camping, there's not many Norwegians. I want to say um, I can name a few off the top of my head. I just can't think of his name right now. Anyway. Uh, He's a defenseman from Norway, six foot two, one hundred ninety pound Viking. There you go. In the OHL, uh, playing in Mississauga. Okay, so I'll let you take a last look at that um, as I'm going to trade, switch some boards over. Um, I ran out of boards, so I'm going to have to wipe one clean. It'll just take me uh, a couple of minutes here. That's right, Zuccarello. That's who I was trying to think of. Thank you, Elvis. Yeah, Frank. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you've seen it. Yeah, Mike Myers. Yeah. Okay. I need to use my photo. How fast can I do this? All right. Uh, just give me a second here. I'm just, um, I got to clean the board. Thanks, everyone, for sticking around and watching. Elvis, call you Nate. Okay, I'll try to remember that. Cool. Oh. 
Oh, that's an interesting point, Anthony. I, I didn't think about that at all. I'll turn it down a little bit. I don't know if that'll make a difference. Anyways. Almost done. Almost done. Uh, it's happening soon. Very soon. Okay. Where's my... There it is. there okay soak that in it's coming off uh we finished at 145 all right Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, huh. Okay, uh, b -b -b updating. Let's do this. Oh, okay. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five to update here. All right. Uh, starting with Minnesota, Tampa, Washington. Tampa, Washington, Pittsburgh, St. Louis. Okay. All right. So, 
Uh, starting with the Minnesota Wild, um, we have whoop, at pick 146, we have uh, Pavel Novak, a right winger from the Czech Republic, five foot nine, 170, uh, 170 pounds from the WHL in Kelowna. Um, with uh, the 147th pick uh, for Tampa, um, we've got uh, Jaden Duro, uh, left winger who's Canadian, five foot eleven, 173 pounds, in the WHL playing in Portland right now. Nope, don't hear that. Whatever that is. Uh, okay, so to row. Um, left winger. Okay, that's Tampa. All right, um, the Capitals at pick 148. Um, we have Bear Hughes. That's a cool first name. Bear Hughes, a centerman from the U.S., six foot, hundred seventy-one pounds, uh, playing in the WHL for Spokane right now. Uh, and now Pittsburgh at the 149th pick, um, uh, we've got uh, Ravis Ansons, uh, right winger, um, six foot one, 191 pounds. Uh, is, it, is that is he from Latvia? Uh, playing in the QMJHL right now for Bay Como. Uh, let's get him up. When I when I hear this song, all I think of is that SNL skit with uh, Justin Timberlake and Andy Samberg. Uh, anyway, Anson's. Otherwise, I'm not sure I'll be listening to this song. Uh, Anson's. Uh, all right, he's a right winger again. That's Pittsburgh. Uh, Ravis Anson's right winger, six foot one, hundred ninety one pounds. Um. Uh, playing for the Q for Bay Como. <laughs> you didn't see that, by the way. Okay. Uh, all right, St. Louis at uh, pick 150 uh, picks Matthew Kessel. And no, any relation to the Kessel run? Um, he's a de uh, defenseman playing for the U.S. Six foot two, 205 pounds. Um, playing in the H East for UMass. Could he possibly be a mass hole? Okay, there's your fabulous board. So far, all right. So um, let's get this thing updated. I'm trying to get out of the way. Why do I want to get out of the way? It's on my chair. All right. Um, see how far we have. Oh wow, they're moving fast. Okay, we're almost done the fifth round here. Um, we got Boston, New York Islanders, Florida, and Dallas, uh, who've all gone. So I got to uh, do this. Do this. Mason Langenbrunner for Boston, defenseman from from the U.S. Six foot two, hundred sixty six pounds from USHL from Sioux City. Langenbrunner.
defenseman. Okay. All right. Shit. Trying to catch up here. It's happening. It's happening. It's all happening. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh, Islanders, Florida, Dallas. And Ottawa's the last one here. In your arms so tight, you let me go. Everything's all right. Okay, uh, no more lip singing. All right, uh, pick 152 to the Islanders. We've got William DeFore, a right winger who's Canadian, 6'2", 195 pounds uh, from the Q. Um, QMMJHL, that's what I mean by that. Uh, he's playing in Drummondville. Let's get him on the board. Okay. Uh, next, we got Florida at pick 153. Um, is Casper Butio, a defenseman from Finland, 5'11", 180 pounds, playing in the WHL for Everett. That's, that's two Caspers we have so far. I'm sorry, I haven't been reading the live feed um, the last little bit. Okay. Two. D. Okay. Next, um, for Dallas, we have a centerman, uh, Daniel Lungman. If I'm saying that properly, centerman, Swedish, six foot, hundred and sixty-six pounds. Wow. Needs to add some weight there. Uh, playing in the Swedish Junior League for Linkumping. Anyway. Oh, L is silent. Oh, and Jungman. Do you like Jungman? Okay. All right, so let's just update here and uh see what we have left ottawa is the last pick in the fifth round um hopefully take take it's just at least a short break all right so 155th for ottawa we've got um eric engstrand a left winger from sweden who's 6'4 209 pounds um playing in sweden for malmo Yeah. Yes, he is. Dave Mathur. Dave Mathur. All right. Oh, I remember Rick Ashley. Wow. Um, okay, 155. Eric Engstrand. Uh, left winger. Okay. That is a big boy for Sweden. Okay. 
All right, so let's uh, see if they've started the sixth round yet. See how far behind I am. They have not started the sixth round. <laughs> Sing it, OVTV. I think he's still touring here and there, too. Uh, Anthony, uh, do you know how the NHL decides the order of the rounds after the first round? It is it done by record or something else? Yeah, I believe it's yeah, it's done by record. Yeah, it just continues that way all the way through. This song is beautiful, yeah. All right, so I've got we got a tiny break here. If you want to run away to pee or something or oh wait, okay. It just started. Uh sixth round just started, Detroit. Right, the Def Fethnor straight up points post round one, right? Oh. Okay. Um. Okay, Detroit's just picked. Yes, again. All right. And they picked uh, Kyle O'Quinn, a defenseman uh, from Canada, five foot ten, hundred sixty four pounds, um, from playing in the USHL with Tri City. Okay. All right. Um, I got to go uh, walk the dog really quickly. Um, I should be about five minutes. Um, dog needs to go pee. Uh, and I'm on the fourth floor of a building. So I'll be right back. Be right back. Thanks, guys. Ooh, some Madonna. Okay. Be back. Here, leave the board a little closer there.
Okay, back. All right. Uh, I'll be right there. Right back. Uh, we're talking about 157th overall. Okay, here we go. All right, sorry about that. This dog just had to take a take my dog out for a quick pee. Um, let's update this sucker and let's move along here. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, five teams you got to catch up with. Okay, uh, starting with Tampa. Six. One sixty. What am I doing? Uh. Okay, uh, Tampa, Ottawa, Carolina. Uh, Carolina, Ducks, New Jersey. Ducks, New Jersey, Dallas. Really? That was Tampa's first yeah, Tampa. 150, yeah, 158 is Ottawa. Okay, here we go. Um, Starting with Tampa. Thanks everyone for sticking around. I know it's been a long marathon. Let's keep going here. All right, uh, 157. Uh, we've got uh, Nick Capone, a right winger from the US, six foot two, 215 pounds. Um, let's get him on the board, Nick Capone. Wow, we're six hours and almost 20 minutes in. Isn't that, isn't that weird? Unbelievable here. Okay, uh, 158. We've got Ottawa with uh, Philip Dau, uh, centerman. He's Canadian, six foot, 151 pounds, uh, playing in the queue for Moncton. Thanks everyone for being so patient. Uh, let me take out the pooch. I just raced up and down four flight of stairs so fast. All right. Okay, one fifty nine um, for what this. 
Uh, for Carolina, uh, we've got Lucas Mercury, a centerman from Canada, six foot three, 191 pounds from the U.S. playing in the USHL for Des Moines. Let's get him on the board, Mercury. Okay, um, next at 160, we've got Anaheim Ducks uh, picked Al Albin Sunsvik. Sunsvik, I'm pronouncing that. He's a center from Sweden, six foot two, 187 pounds, playing in Sweden for Skeleftia, I believe. The pronunciation I mean. Uh, thanks, Devin Uther. Thank you. Appreciate it. Six hours. Wow. Yeah. DeFour is solid. Nice. Nice. Um, okay. Where was I? Ducks. Ducks. Uh, Albin Sunsvik. Um, uh, Sunsvik, uh, Cinnamon. Okay, uh, 161 for New Jersey. Uh, we've got Benjamin Baumgartner. I wonder if he's, um, the son of, uh, Baumgartner. What was his first name? He used to be sort of a fighter. Uh, he played with the Leafs at one point. And I want to say a New York team. First Belarusian drafted, really. Okay, uh, Devils. Okay. Uh, I mean, let's update here. Um, we're on Dallas. Let's see how far behind I am. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. They're keeping a good pace here. Okay. Yeah. The Belarusian for Dallas. Yeah. Okay. Yevgeny Oskintuk. I know I just really killed that name, but um, he's a left winger from Belarus. Five foot eight. 163 pounds playing in the OHL for Flint. Send T Y U K. Um, left winger. All right. Uh, 163, we've got St. We've got St. Louis, Winnipeg, New York Rangers. St. Louis, Winnipeg, New York Rangers. Um, Nashville or Colorado. Okay. St. Louis. Here we go. Just updating the board. All right. Okay. So for St. Louis, um, we've got uh, Will Cranley, a goalie, a Canadian, six foot four, 183 pounds in the OHL, playing in Ottawa. All right. Uh, 
Uh, for Winnipeg at um, number 164, uh, we've got Tyrell Bauer, a defenseman who's Canadian, six foot three, two 206 pounds, uh, playing at WHL for Seattle. I believe that's the Thunderbirds. Uh, 165 for the Rangers. Uh, we've got Matt Remp, Rempe, uh, center, who's Canadian, uh, six foot seven. Oh my god, 207 pounds though. I need to put some meat on him. <laughs> Imagine 207 pounds, like you need to put some meat on you. Um, from the WHL from Seattle as well. Okay. Uh, Matt Rim. Uh, okay, Nashville, uh, 166. We've got Luke Reed, a defenseman who's Canadian, um, six foot, 190 pounds, uh, playing in the USHL for Chicago. Nashville picking a defenseman? What? That's sarcasm, by the way. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm going to update the chart here. Uh, we got Avalanche and then Toronto. Oh, stretch time, everybody stretch. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so that crack. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I'm getting closer. All right. Colorado, 167. Um, got some Bowie for you. All right. So, Niels Aman, a center from Sweden, six foot two, 179 pounds, um, playing in Sweden for Lexan. Dance the blows. I have a nephew, um, sort of, he's a cousin. It's like a step. Nephew named Niels, um, Norwegian. Anyway, uh, I'm on. Uh, seven. Okay. Uh, Toronto is up next. All right. Almost caught up here. I'll break my heart into a horrible voice that is mine, but God, David Boys. Okay, uh, Toronto, Edmonton, Pittsburgh. Okay, so Toronto, um, we've got at the pick 168, uh, we've got uh, VT Mietinen, um, right winger from Finland, five foot nine, 161 pounds, um, playing in Finland Junior for KSPU Junior. Again, my pronunciation sucks. Uh, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it sucks. Probably right. M I E T T I E N I N E M. Break my heart in two. I think that's the first winger the Leafs. Oh no, besides the first round pick, it's the first winger the Leafs to pick. Um, I think. Uh, Edmonton, um, at pick 169, picked up, uh, Philip Engaras, a sentiment from Sweden. I said that more like in a Spanish way. Uh, he's six foot, 187 pounds, 
playing in H East for New Hampshire. H Hampshire, yeah. Just move that a little bit over. Yeah, okay. Let's get him on the board. Oh, no, the moon, what? Philip. Um, and got us. Uh, cinnamon. Okay. There it is. We're, we're getting there. Um, all right. So Pittsburgh, let's update it. See how, see how fast I'm coming along here. Uh, ba -ba. All right, we're getting I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Pittsburgh. Um, we've got Chicago. How many do we have here? I have a little bit of space left. Yeah. Uh, okay. Pittsburgh, Montreal, Chicago. Chicago, Arizona, Chicago. Nope. Okay. Um, so for Pittsburgh, we have uh, Chase uh, at pick 170. We have Chase Yoder. Um, a sentiment from the U.S., 5'10", 176 pounds, playing an NTDP uh, in the USA under 18. That was a good song. Um, Chase Yoder. It's 2 a.m. Uh, and then Montreal, a pick 171. In the sixth round, just to remind everyone where we are, um, they grabbed Alexander Gordin. Sounds really familiar for some reason. Uh, right winger, Russian, six foot one, hundred ninety four pounds. Uh, play playing in Russia too. Whatever that means for Neva Saint Petersburg. Go on up, be nice to the cat. Okay. Wow, over six hours and 30 minutes. Congratulations to you all for sticking around. That's This is amazing. All right. Thank you for keeping me company. Any Frank, any Benfica players drafted yet? <laughs> no, but I've seen at least one Portuguese guy. So that's something. Whoa. Thank you. No bling bling hockey. Appreciate that. No, you. No, you. Okay. Uh, Chicago. Hey, if I didn't have this apple juice, boy, <laughs> I wouldn't survive. Okay. Um, Chicago uh, has picked Chad at pick 172, Chad Yetman. Or Yeatman. Uh, he's a centerman who's Canadian, 5'11, 178 pounds from the OHL, playing in Erie right now. See if I can do this. Ah, uh, cinnamon. Uh, I just want to ask for those of you who have just joined me or still new, um, please don't feel shy about subscribing and liking and all that good stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Help the channel grow. Um, for all my subscribers, thank you so much. Uh, for, uh, for being here, for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope it's as fun for you as it is for my back right now. Joking, joking. All right. Uh, next up, we've got – let's update my – Oh, uh, Nate, you're a big fan of that pick for Toronto, huh? Uh, Meeton and the right winger. I need to read into him, so I'll, I'll take your word for it. Um, Okay, here we go.
Okay, three teams behind. Okay. Ooh. All right. Arizona uh, has picked uh, Philip Barkland, a centerman from Sweden, five foot eleven, one hundred fifty nine pounds. He's the uh, 70th, 173rd pick overall. I still have room. I still have some room here. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. 176. That's it. Okay. No more than 170. Okay, so Arizona, Calgary, Vancouver, Columbus. Arizona, Calgary, Vancouver, Columbus, uh, Toronto. Yeah, Calgary, Vancouver, Columbus, Calgary, Vancouver, Columbus, Toronto. Okay, um, so for Calgary, uh, we've got uh, Rory Kerens, a centerman from Canada, five foot ten, one hundred seventy-five pounds, playing in the OHL for Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, yes, apple juice. Let's get up on the board, Rory Kerens. Okay, and uh, for Vancouver, at pick 175, um, we've got Dmitry Zlodevev. I think I was close. Uh, he's a salmon from Russia. Um, no, he's from the, the, <laughs> Costa Rica. No, he's Russian. Uh, 5'11", 185 pounds, uh, playing for Dynamo Moscow. How do you feel about that, Vancouver fans? Do I have any left? Okay. Slow DF. Slow DF. Okay, yeah. Oh, you're oh Nate, you're a Canucks fan. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, so, Columbus. Uh, Columbus right now. Um, right. I hear you, Nate. All right. So, uh, Columbus. Um, we've got Samuel Johansson, a pick 176. He's a, he's a defenseman from Sweden. 5'11", 176 pounds, uh, playing with Rogel right now. Uh, let's get him up. Let's try and flip this. It's kind of hard to do it this way. Okay, moving on to Toronto. I uh, pick 177. Um, you trust ben, uh, Jim Benning. Yeah, he's a pretty good drafter. Um, Toronto uh, ba -ba -ba, have picked uh, defenseman Alex Axel, excuse me, Axel Rindell uh, from Finland, a 5'11, 176 pounds, playing for Jurkarit. I like that name. Axel reminds me of. Axel Foley. Do you know what name, character's name that movie is from? Axel Foley. 
And who is the actor who plays him? Um, without looking it up online. Yeah. <laughs> Glad the Leafs are picking more defensemen here. Thank God they need them. Um, okay, I think. Oh. Yes, Frank is right. Axel Foley is, he didn't put his last name, but that is Eddie Murphy. You've got the actor. What movie is it, though? Um, okay, so. I think I got to switch boards. I'm just going to take uh, a hot minute or two uh, just to wipe one down. Um, I'll, I'm right here. So, yeah, no Elvis right now. No, no Spice Girls. How did that get up there? Get there? Okay, Simple Minds. I'll take that. Picture. I'm going to take a picture of this. Okay, we're getting there. Almost there, almost there. Okay. Okay, all right, last look at this board. Here we go. Uh, Phillies next at 178. Okay, Philly, uh, one seventy eight. Thanks to all you troopers who are sticking around. I really appreciate it. Give me some company here while I 
indulge my OCD and my favorite sport into one. <laughs> 3, 8, 1, 7, 9, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 2. Okay, here we go. Uh, Philly. 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 Uh, Philly, Washington, Toronto, Ottawa. Philly, Washington, Toronto, Toronto, Ottawa. Ottawa, Boston, New York Islanders. Okay. Philly, Toronto, Ottawa. Boston, New York Islanders. Okay, so it's around six. Just to remind everyone, uh, Philly picked up Connor McLennan, a right winger from uh, who's Canadian, five foot eight, one hundred sixty three pounds, playing in the WHL uh, in Winnipeg. So let's get him on the board. All right, Connor McLennan. We're doing this. We're doing it. Okay, MC. You gotta be just a little bit crazy, I think. You know? It's almost seven hours in. Okay. I have no idea how this is gonna show up on YouTube. Uh, right winger. Connor McClendon, right winger. All right, 170. Let's update my my math app here. Oh, you're taking off, Frank. All right, see you later. Thanks for coming back again. <laughs> Take it easy. Talk soon, I hope. Um, it's my brother, Frank. Um, who's in Europe right now? All right. Oh, hi, Benjamin. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining. All right. Oh, oh well, not, I'm not that far behind. Okay, sort of. Uh, all right, so Capitals um, at uh, 179 overall, pick uh, Garen Bjorklund. A goaltender um, who's Canadian, 6'2", 173 pounds, playing in the WHL for Medicine Hat. BJO. Dennis Garyanov. Yes, I am Dennis Garyanov. <laughs> Welcome, Dennis Garyanov. Or is it Geryanov or Geryanov? Anyway, okay. Um, but is it really you? Okay, so Capitals. Yeah, that was a goalie. Okay. Uh, all right, so yes. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining us. All right. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs at pick 180. Pick Joe Miller. Um <laughs> Cole Clark asks if Leafs draft any skaters over six feet. I think there are at least a few, yes. Um, not many, but all right. Joe Miller, uh, a sentiment from the U.S., five foot eight, 147 pounds. Holy, I think that's got to be the lightest player yet. Not the shortest, but the lightest from uh, playing in the USHL for Chicago right now. That's, wow, 147 pounds. First thing the, the commentator is going to say, well, he's got to put on some weight. Got to eat some chicken. Lots of chicken, pasta. Okay, uh, with the 181 overall, uh, we've got the Ottawa Senators picking Cole Reinhardt. He's a left winger, 
um, from Canada. He's six foot one, two hundred two pounds, uh, playing in WHL for Brandon. That's the Brandon Wheat Kings. All right, let's get that up. That's a Star Trek um, soundtrack from the first one, the original. All right, Reinhardt. Uh, R E I N. Uh, H hard. Try and get you to see this better. Left, he's a left winger. I can say that already. This music's too slow. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. All right, the Bruins, uh, pick 182, have picked uh, Riley Duran, a centerman um, from the U.S., six foot one, 174 pounds, um, playing in uh, in the high mass league for Lawrence Academy. Put him on the board. Duran. How many how many Boston fans have we got we got hanging on there? Welcome, Gravite. Thanks for joining us. All right. R. Duran. Um, cinnamon. All right. And the Islanders. Um, uh, Islanders have picked 183 in the sixth round. They pick uh, Matthias Rajaniemi, a defenseman from Finland who's six foot four, 201 pounds. Uh, I'm playing in Finland for the Pelicans. Pelicans. I hate that as a name for a team. I think the, the worst name in sports teams ever are the Pelicans in the NBA. Just, how do you name a team the Pelicans? At least a professional team. Anyway, okay. Matthias. Focus. Red. Yeah, so the Islanders, yeah, um, again. Yeah, Matthias Rajaniemi. You just like the Nuggets, yeah? Yeah, I, I'm not crazy about it. I don't. I don't like. I don't lo like the, the Pelicans. I loathe. That's not the team itself, but it's the team name. I just ew. Raj. Um, Anybody like um, the new name for Seattle, the Kraken? How many how many yays and nays can I get here? <laughs> we got a yay and a meh. I gotta say, I'm a fan of the Kraken. I really liked it. I much rather than the Steelheads, or are... I, I I put out a whole video on it. If you haven't seen it already, um, thank God it's the Seattle Kraken. That's the title of the video. <laughs> so you know where I lie with that. Um, okay, let me just update the board here. Uh, we got Vegas, Dallas, and Tampa to finish out. Um, they are the Crackheads. Yes, I think that's wonderful. I would love to be called the Crackhead. Never. Oh, who do you like? I'm a crackhead. Oh. I do not take drugs, by the way. Not anything technically classified as a drug, in any case. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, and we got, yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. Dead or alive. You spin me round. That's just what I needed right now. Vegas, Dallas, Tampa. Vegas. 
Thanks, everyone, for sticking around. Uh, again, if you happen to be new to the channel, thanks for dropping by. For my subscribers, thank you for um, thanking you. Thank you for being around. <laughs> and um, yeah, for the for the noobs, for the rookies, uh, please uh, uh, please don't uh, hesitate. Uh, if you like the channel, subscribe, like all that fun jazz. So there's that. All right, so let's finish up here. Vegas. I got to update my my board. Woo! Jamie Ben is online. Your friend Gary Anov was here just a second ago. Okay. Um, looks like they've rounded out the sixth round. As I round out my apple juice. Okay. Uh, Vegas is next. Uh, they picked a player called Noah Ellis, a defenseman. Uh, he's from the U.S., six foot two, 191 pounds, playing in the USHL for Des Moines. That's uh, Vegas with Noah Ellis, a defenseman from the U.S., six foot two, 191 pounds. Let's get him on the board. Defensive. All right, Dallas, I pick 185, picked uh, Remy Poirier as another Poirier. Uh, this one's a goaltender from uh, Canada, six foot two, 217 pounds. That's kind of heavy for a goaltender. Uh, playing in the queue um, for Gatineau. P O I P O I R I This is where we see like thirteen goalies go in a row. Okay. Um, now Tampa to round out the sixth round here. Oh, and yes. Yes, I'd like to see more. Can we at least get a full forward line? That would be cool. We got Ben, Garyanov. Who else? Who else we got? All right, Tampa um, has picked, at, uh, in, the, in the final pick of the sixth round at 186, uh, Amir uh, Mif, Mif, Mifikov. Um, another goalie, uh, Russian, six foot, 172 pounds, playing in Russia for Kazan. Ooh, we got Michael has come to join us. Call. Okay, there we have it. That's the sixth round. Um, let's gonna well, we're gonna start the last round here. Last round. Oh, my God. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Oh my. Uh, for all of you who have stuck around since the very beginning, even, i uh, got to give yourself a pat in the back. Here we go. Yes. Whoa, just under seven hours in. We're almost there, like 10 seconds away. Okay. Um, round seven, baby. Let's do this. Okay, it started. I'm only one behind here. That's, that's good news. And it's uh, huh, interesting, interesting. Starting with Detroit, Detroit, Montreal, Toronto. Detroit.
Okay, uh, 187. Uh, Detroit, Montreal, Toronto, Lake. Detroit. Vancouver. Okay, here we go. Detroit. This is an interesting one. Uh, oh, Tyler Sagan. <laughs> we got a full forward line of Dallas Star uh, watchers here. Yeah, Gary out of Ben Sagan. That's fantastic. All right. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Crazy Town. All right. Uh, for Detroit, at pick 187, uh, we've got Keenan Draper, possibly the son of – is it Chris Draper? Um, he's a right winger from the U.S., six foot, 187 pounds, playing the BCHL, actually, for Chilliwack. Uh, not too far from where I, where I am. All right. Let's do this. On, on the board. Oh, i got to use a different marker now. Green. Let's close it out. Keenan Draper. Uh, right in there. Okay. Um, all right, moving on. Let me update, see how far we in. Uh, thanks, everyone, for sticking around. We're over seven hours. Woo! All right. Give yourselves a little one of these. There we go. Remember that wrestler? I don't remember his name. Was it Terry Funk? No. Yeah, it wasn't Terry Funk. Anywho. Um, Kir Kiriranta. Kirivanta. Joel Kirivanta. <laughs> we got another Dallas star. Okay. Um, hilarious. Okay. Uh, Chicago is next. Uh, they must have made a trade with Montreal for that pick. So that goes to Chicago. This would be a good story for later. Who cares if they're trolls, right? All right. I hope you're not, but if you are, whatever. All right, so Chicago at pick 188. We need more stars for a power play unit. Yes, Owen. I couldn't agree more. Okay, um, Chicago picks uh, Louis, Louis Crevier, a defenseman. He's Canadian. Six foot eight. Holy Christ. 29, 229 pounds, 209 pounds. He need again, another player. You're like, you need to put some meat on you. You're only 209 pounds. Uh, he plays in the queue um, for Chikutimi. Chikutimi. I'm saying that wrong, but anyway, let's get him. Let's get him up. Get him up. Uh, what am I? Till brought to life. Six foot eight. You heard it. Wow. Oh. Okay, there we go. Where it's coming, it's humming along here. Toronto is next, folks. Almost as tall. What is Chara? Is he 6'9"? I, I, I would take it, Nate, if that's the deal there. Anyone want to answer that, Chara's? Yeah, 6'9". 
I'm sure it's possible, but I mean, how big can you be not to be on skates and play a game like hunched over? Maybe there's a reason, you know, you're, you're that tall. It may, it may really destroy your back, you know, after a certain number of years or whatever. Anyway, um, Toronto Maple Leafs at pick 189 have picked uh, John Fusco, a defenseman from the U.S., another defenseman, another smallish defenseman. Well, 5'9", 174 pounds, uh, playing in the ECAC uh, for Harvard right now. Anton Hudobin's now in the house. Wow. <laughs> There's a guy hard at work creating Dallas accounts. This is... Yeah, Chower. Yeah, well, he was a wrestler, or his dad was a wrestler, and he wrestled with him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I'm amused with the whole Dallas thing. All right. So... Yeah, John Fusco, defenseman from the U.S., five foot nine, hundred seventy-four pounds. Let's get him up. Don't feel like this song right now. No, I don't feel like that right now. Okay, L.A. at pick 190 um, has picked A2 Jameson, a right winger uh, from Finland, six foot one, 154 pounds. Uh, let's get him up. Okay. Someone please be Batman. <laughs> We've got a PK unit plus a goalie. This is fantastic. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. Okay, uh, the Canucks. I'm almost caught up here. Um, yeah, someone be Batman so we can boo. Touche, Cole Clark. Touche. All right, so the Canucks um, have picked Victor Persson, Persson, a defenseman who's Swedish, six foot two, 192 pounds, pl playing in the WHL for Cam Loops. Vancouver fans, are you still out there? Put your hand up. Anyone? Okay, let's, we're humming along here. Okay, uh, all right, uh, Arizona, Buffalo, St. Louis, Toronto, Arizona, Buffalo, St. Louis, Toronto, Arizona, Buffalo, St. Louis, Toronto. I hope no one heard what, what I just did, but anyway. Okay. Oh, Nate, are you taking off? 
Is that what that? Right. Okay. Um, okay, so let's update this. Arizona's next. It's happening. Seven hours, ten minutes, ten minutes, folks. This is fantastic. Oh, what? That's weird. No. Really? There's a guy who is so unknown. There's three Canuck fans left. Okay, cool. Oh, Nate, I thought you were you were taking off. I couldn't tell by the emoji there. Right, Cole Clark. That's a big. That's a good point. All right. Um, so Arizona, there's a pick on the board that has no. There's his name, but there's no explanation here. What what he plays, where he's from, like nothing. Um, that's we'll see if that updates later on. That's strange. Elliot Ekfiard. This, this Arizona really went off the map here. All right. Oh, Batman is here. There we go. <laughs> Lovely. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh wow this is great okay so we don't uh, arizona's pick at 192 we have no idea who this guy is right now um we'll see let's move on i'll get back to him if i have to later uh buffalo pick 193 has picked albert uh Likasen, a defenseman from sweden he's 5'11 187 pounds plays in sweden too uh, at, in uh, for Vita Haston. Let's get him up. Buffalo. Surprise, his name um, isn't Rasmus. All right. They haven't picked him. No Rasmus in this draft, huh? Something strange about that. L-Y-C. Okay. S-E-N. Okay, I want you. <laughs> I'll make it sure to let Toronto make the cup. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So, still no update on that Arizona player. Who, who you know, what is who is he? Who is what his stats are? Um, okay. So uh, we've got two more picks up here. From St. Louis and from Toronto. Start with St. Louis. Um, we've got uh, Noah Beck, a defenseman who's Canadian, six foot four, 184 pounds, playing in the USHL uh, for Fargo. It's pretty good, eh? Well, oh, that's Canadian. Got to remember my Fargo accent. Um, Noah Beck. Yes, what is love? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Toronto. Um, this is a really interesting name to try and pronounce. Uh, not, not his first name, but it's Wyatt Shingoth. Shingoth, he's a centerman from the U.S., uh, five foot ten, two hundred pounds, 
Um, playing in the USHL for Waterloo. Yes, another player who's under six foot for Toronto. Personally, I think they're jealous of, of uh, the Canadians, but, you know. Like, they can't be the smallest team in the league. J G O E. Oh, wait, the, the live chat just exploded here. What's... Five foot nine players, yeah. Is it Jose DeMello or Jose DeMello? Thanks for joining us, by the way. Thank you. Uh, all right, San Jose, New York, next. All right, 31. We're still holding strong here. 31 people, 17, 7 hours, 17 minutes. We're doing it, folks. You're tough. You are one tough. You know what? Okay. Uh, two more fresh picks to talk about here. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, what about the 5'8", 147-pound player? <laughs> okay, corner. Cool. Okay. The dog wants to say hello. Hello. All right, say hello. Hello. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So for San Jose, um, we've got uh, center Alex Young. Um, he's Canadian, five foot ten, hundred seventy pounds, uh, playing playing in the ECAC for Colgate, the toothpaste. Uh, cinnamon, yes. Uh, if you've happened just to tune in, um, thanks for joining us. Um, we're almost there. We're almost there. Okay, New York Rangers have picked at uh, 197th uh, Hugo Olas, a uh, goaltender from Sweden, six foot seven. Six foot seven, 220 pounds. That's a good weight. That's a good weight. I don't think he needs to put any more weight on. All right. Isn't this right around where they pick Lungfist? Like really late? This could be the next king. Well, uh, Cole Clark, yeah. Well, Columbus has the shortest player in group, group A, right? <laughs> Nathan Nealander for Gerbe, yeah. All right. Let's um, update this board. Uh, Oh my God, I think I'm gonna need another board. Not right now, soon. Okay, 
Florida, Carolina, Edmonton. San Jose. Florida, Carolina, Edmonton, San Jose. Oh, no way. How did this get on there? I was talking about the song. Okay. 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 Oh, back. Oh. All right. Here we go. Florida's next to pick 198, folks. We j dipped just under 30 viewers. The shame. The shame. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. I'm just, I, you know, if there were three viewers here, I'd be happy, really. Thank you all for hanging around. All right. So we have a few teams to catch up with here. I think everyone is trying to speed this up so they go, I need to get drinking. This is nuts. Why am I? Yes, Nate, I've seen that uh, picture of uh, Gerbe next to Chara. I think I have it on my phone somewhere. And it's just to show everybody once in a while. <laughs> it's... It's, it looks like somebody just took Gerbe like in the and just shrunk him down with Photoshop. It looks so hilarious. All right, Florida uh, has picked um, Elliot Ekmark, a centerman from Sweden, five foot nine, hundred sixty-two pounds, uh, playing in the Swedish Junior League for Link Kuping Junior. If that's correct. Um, Next up, uh, pick 199 uh, for the Carolina Hurricanes. We've got uh, Alexander Passion, a right winger from Russia, 5'8", 154 pounds, uh, playing in Russia Junior for UFA2. On the board. Okay, and the Oilers um, at pick 200. Whoa. Uh, Jeremias Lindwall, a right winger from Sweden, six foot two, 183 pounds, playing in Sweden Junior for Modo Junior. Let's get him up. I'm missing some of the uh, action here on the live chat. Oh. Jose de Mello. Is that Jose de Mello? Yeah. Yeah. But that's correct. That's my name. My first name, anyway. Jose. But no one can say it. They just call me Jose. <laughs> I'm sure you have the same problem, though. Louie, Louie. We gotta go. Okay. Next up is uh, San Jose. Let's see if I can catch up with the live chat here. It's going fast here. Fast and furious. Uh, pick 195. Um, the pick was... Uh, Oh, my God. You have to pick a guy whose name is so hard to pronounce. Uh, Shingo. Go, the, Shingo. 
She didn't go to the... That's a hard one. And his, his first initial is a W. And he's a centerman. White is an all-around amazing player. That's cool. Good to know that. Why do I listen to Barbie Girl? I'm listening to the Kingsmen now. Oh, that was, you know, that was, um, it's my wife's thing on Spotify. So, you know, not everything I pick. Huh. Uh, José de Mello, yes, I am Portuguese. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been... You just get... If you live in, in North America, you just get used to people calling you Jose all the time. Because you say, hi, my name is Jose. I say Jose because if I say José, people are going to like, what? They, they won't even, you know... I don't blame them. It's a hard... For the proper pronunciation, it's, it's hard to... Remember, it's, it's not, you know, that common here anyway. But if you say Jose, sometimes they get it. But usually 90% of the time I get back a Jose. What are you going to do? That's right. Logan O'Connor. Uh, 20 years later, Rangers pick another Swedish goalie in the seventh round. Yeah. Uh, Owen. Yeah, Jose de Mello. Yeah, you knew right away. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to type Owen. I'm going to type the Leafs 195 pick in here. Uh, S C H I N. P O E, the. That's uh, the Leafs' 195th pick, Owen. Oh, okay, um, where are we here? 201. Oh, wow, we're a little behind. Okay, um, so the San Jose Sharks pick um, Adam Raska for uh, right winger from the Czech Republic, 5'10", uh, 178 pounds from the Q, playing in Ramuski right now. It's Crosby's old junior team. Like a record, baby. Ooh, Adam Raska from San Jose. Imagine them playing Dallas and having a Faxa and Raska on the ice at the same time. Right wing. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm gonna catch up here. Two or two. Two or three. Yeah, lots of room. Okay, 202. Uh, Nashville, Detroit, Arizona. Okay, here we go. Right, oh uh, really? The Rangers number one pick was also for Rumuski, yeah, left one year. Okay, um, Nashville uh, at pick 202, uh, Gunner Wolf, yeah, that is a cool name. Fontaine, um, a left winger from the US, five foot eight, 172 pounds, playing in H East for Northeastern. 
Gunner Wolf. What a amazing first name. Okay, uh, now Detroit. Um, Detroit to pick 203. We have uh, Chase Bradley, a left winger from the U.S. who's 5'11", 180 pounds, playing in the USHL for Sioux City. This is a dance mix for my wedding. This is what you're listening to now. Everyone's like, too much information. Too much information. Okay. Um, Arizona is up next here at, at pick 204. We've got Ben McCartney, uh, left winger from Canada, six foot, 182 pounds, playing in the WHL for Brandon Weekings. Let's do it. Okay. Um, all right. So, next teams: uh, Calgary, San Jose, Anaheim, Carolina. Calgary, San Jose. Calgary, San Jose, Anaheim, Carolina. Calgary, Anaheim, San Jose, Carolina. Calgary, San Jose, and I'm Caroline. Okay. Okay. Can you, can we, am I still making? Ooh, oh, got to get another board after this. Damn it. Maybe if I did it further back, I can fit more. <laughs> Yeah, it's still scenic, and yeah, try and milk this board as much as I can here. Um, my dog wants to play. All right, 206, Anaheim, Carolina. Nashville. Okay, we're hanging on there. 24. 24. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, Kona. Okay, my, my dog is <laughs> okay. Get get out of here. <laughs> okay, Finny, Finny. Now say so Finny, Finny, Finny. Say so Finny. Va, va. Okay, uh, I'm just talking to the dog. Uh, Owen signing off. All right, thanks, man. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, Okay. Where are we at here? Um, where am I at? 205. 205. Oh, they're running along now. Holy cow. All right. Um, 205 for Calgary. You got Ilya Solev. Solev. Soloyevov. Man. Sorry, uh, defenseman from uh, the Belarus, six foot two, two hundred eight pounds, plays in Russia for Minsk. Let's get him up. They're really picking it up here. All 
Uh, 206 goes to Linus Oberg um, from, to San Jose, a centerman uh, from Sweden. He's six foot, 202 pounds, um, plays for Oribo, Orbro. Let's get that up. At 207 uh, for the Ducks. Um, Spitzerov. Yeah. Um, yeah, where are we? Yeah, 207. Uh, we have got the Ducks. Ethan Bowen, a sediment from Canada, six foot 154 pounds from the B playing the BCHL for Chilliwack. Let's get him up. Uh, at pick 208 for Carolina, we've got Ronan Seeley, a defenseman from Canada, who's six foot, uh, 176 pounds, playing in the WHL for Everett. Okay, 209. Um, we've got Nashville's picked uh, Chase McLean. I wonder if he's John McLean's son. Um, he plays center for the U.S., six foot 175 pounds uh, for the Big Ten in Penn State. Oh, cool. Cool, mate. Nice. All right. All right. Nashville. All right. Uh, Nashville. Chase McClain. Oh. How much can I milk this board? Everyone can still see it, right? I think I, I think you can still see it. Okay, let's milk the board. It's we're almost done. We're like six away. Um Two ten to two seventeen. Just putting the last numbers up here. Almost done. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 210. All right. San Jose, Washington, Florida, Boston. San Jose, Florida, Florida, Washington, uh, Boston. Uh, San Jose. Yeah. San Jose, Washington, Florida. San Jose, Washington, Florida, Boston. Boston, uh, New York, uh, New Islanders, Vegas, Buffalo, Tampa. Islanders, Vegas, Islanders, Vegas, Buffalo, Tampa. We're almost there. Almost there. Hold on. Vegas. Florida, Boston, New York Islanders, Vegas at 216. Now, Vegas is 215. Oh, where did I go wrong here? Uh, 210 is San Jose, 211. Oh, I missed 212. Shit. How did I do that? This will just take a second. 212, 
and 217. Okay, after, after the Capitals, Florida, Boston, Florida, Boston, 214 Islanders, uh, Vegas, Buffalo, Vegas, Buffalo, Tampa. Okay, here we go. It's the last lap here. Um, at pick 210 for San Jose, we have Timothy Spitzerov, a right winger from Russia. Uh, yeah, you love that name. Right winger, uh, 5'11", 174 pounds, playing in the USHL from, with Muskokan. Let's get it up. Um, 210. 210. Spitzerov. I just like saying that name. Right wing. Okay, so wow, if I move way back here. All right, two eleven. Uh, Oscar for Washington. We've got uh, the Capitals. Oscar Magnusson, a left winger from Sweden, 5'10", 166 pounds, uh, playing in Malmo. Let's get him up. Okay, we're on the 212. Be right back. Oh, 30 seconds. No. Oh, here we go. Florida at 212. Almost there. Here we go. Final lap, folks. Woo! Okay. Oh, wow. I've actually caught up. Um, Florida. Just last one here. Uh, Florida's got Devon Levi, a goaltender um, who's Canadian, six foot, 184 pounds, plays in the CCHL for Carlton Place. Owen, take it easy, man. Okay, uh, ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Florida, here we go, um, 212, Devon Levi, Levi, uh, goalie, Oh, okay. So the order changed here. Uh, at two thirteen, we no longer have Boston. We've got Toronto. I guess the two clubs made a deal here. Uh, Toronto made a trade just to get two thirteen. Interesting to see what they are going to do with that. Okay. All right. Let's update this sucker. We're on our way. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for subscribing. I look forward to us hearing from you guys again. All right, Toronto. We're almost there. Uh, we're like five picks away here from the finish. Um, Toronto has picked uh, 213, has picked Ryan Tevberg, a centerman from Canada, at uh, 5'10", 168 pounds. 5'10", uh, for the OJHL playing in Toronto, J.C. So they traded to get this guy. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, let's put him up. That's a big board, this one. I'll push it back further enough. Ryan Tedberg. Get up at five in the morning today. 
and we're still in at my time it's 4 16 p.m uh cinnamon toronto's got mostly cinnamon and defense which makes sense it's just that winger that they picked in the first round. Okay, let's update. The Islanders are next. Um, and they've picked. I'm still up to date here. Uh, a pick. Hero. Oh, you don't want to hear me sing. I don't like to hear me sing. All right, the Islanders at 214 have picked Henrik Tikkanen, a goaltender from Finland, six foot seven, ladies and Gentlemen, uh, 200 pounds playing on Finland 2 for IPK. Okay, let's get him up. Let's get him up. Anyone know where uh, this song um, is from which soundtrack and which movie? It's a hint. It's a Tina Turner song. Ooh, she even gave a clue in her song. Xavier Simono is going to go undrafted again. Yeah. Crazy, huh? All right. Um, 215. 215. Here we go. Um, three, three, three more, folks. Three more. All right. Vegas has um, at 215 has picked Maxim Marushev. Uh, centerman. From Russia, six foot one, 176 pounds. Um, playing for Russia too in bars, Kazan. It's a funky town. All right. Maru Shev. Uh, Cinnamon. Okay. Two more picks. We're almost hanging there. Hanging there. We're almost at the eight hour mark, too. <laughs> like 12 minutes. Less than 12 minutes. Okay. Thunderdome. Very good. Jose. Yes. Uh, obviously, you know the beginning of the name of the movie. But uh, yeah. Well, that's Thunderdome's a song. Do you know the movie it's from? That's with that as part of its name. I, w I would assume you do, but yeah, Funky Town is not. No, oh no. It's blank, blank, something. The Thunderdome is the name of the movie. I, I want to say back in the late 80s. Mel Gibson. Anyone know the name of that one? So Buffalo uh, picks um, Jacob Konecki, um, Konecki, a centerman from the Czech Republic, uh, 5'11", 156 pounds, playing in uh, Czech Republic Junior for Sparta Junior, or JR. Let's get him up. Where's my green mark? There This up here. Well, I really got to squeeze that. Mad Max. Nico Tessitore has it. That's right. Correct. That's Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. Very good. One of my favorite movies, actually. All right. Welcome, Nico Tessitore. I think it's the first time I've seen you on this feed here. Thanks for joining us. 
E C N Y. And uh, that's a center. One more, folks. Here, are you ready? Are you ready? One more pick. It's for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Pick 217. Let's do this. Let's end it. We're at seven hours and over 51 minutes right now. This is nuts. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, 217. The Tampa Bay Lightning have picked Declan McDonald. Thank you, Nico. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so we've got Declan McDonald, a right winger. Um, he's from the U.S. He's five foot ten, 174 pounds, uh, playing in the OHL for the Kitchener Rangers. Nice town. I've been to it. All right. Um, let's get this down here. Declan McDonald and um, D O N N. I'm, what will be the last song of the day? Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Play that funky music. All right. Um, McDonald, right winger. Okay. All right. There we have it. There's the whole goddamn board. Woo! Seven hours, 52 minutes. 53 seconds and counting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, thank you for sticking around. Uh, 21 of you all through this. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be around. Uh, not 100% sure if I'll be around tomorrow on Thursday. Uh, Woohoo! Um, but I'll definitely be around Friday. Probably most of the weekend as well. I'll be talking about, uh, I'll be doing videos about trades um, for the next week and a half, right? Because in signings, because that's all we're going to hear about. Uh, so looking forward to uh, doing those, hoping to uh, hear from you guys and your feedback for that as well. Um, again, if you haven't subscribed, uh, liked, and hit that notification button, I would appreciate it. Um, I'm going to start up my Patreon page in the next couple of weeks. Uh, thanks, Gab Hockey. Woo! Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Bam. Um, I'm just trying to stay in the picture here by hunching over. Uh, really appreciate it all. Um, yeah. Props, props to everybody out there. I really hope to see you all soon. And uh, peace. Adios, muchachos. Oh. Here we go. Almost eight hours. <laughs>